Hey guys, if you're just joining the stream, make sure to hit that upvote button. We're joined by a very special guest. None other than <laughs> John Buckley of the Buckley Dials. Oh boy, here I am. Same. John, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, well, you know, I, I've actually been planning to have you on for a long time because Marco of Grant Caliber. Okay. He's, uh, he, he was on the show here with us a couple of months ago, and I just got caught up with so many things. There's so many things that are happening in the watch world. It's just crazy. It's crazy to, to be able to keep up with anything. Most definitely. It's crazy. And thank you so much for having me. And uh, we're here. We're here. Let's go. Let's get it on. We're, we're here. Let's talk about, uh, I think, you know, there's there's a lot of things that happened recently in the watch world, but I, I want to save it. I want to save it for later. I want to first start to talk about you, okay. uh, talk a little bit about maybe, you know, how uh, you became known for the Buckley Dials, because okay. I actually have a very important comment on that. Okay. Uh, and and, uh, and then we'll talk about current events. How about that? Absolutely. And, and I also want to focus, I want to have this main theme about then versus now because mm -hmm. i i feel like things have changed a lot in the past not even just 10 years but past 20 years the the watch market has changed mm -hmm. fundamentally so much i think a lot of people are getting in trouble because you know they're they're trying to run business uh, today like the way it was even the la last year but yeah. you have proven to be successful over how long how long how long have you let's start with that how long have you been in the industry? I've been in this industry 26 years. I've been doing it full time now, like for, you know, for a living. It started as a side hustle and uh, I've been doing it since 99, 2000, you know, as my primary, you know, income. And uh, like you said, it's definitely, I mean, if you look at how we, you know, we, we started, I mean, guys like me, um, Eric Koo, Gary Haftel, um, a lot of the guys that were, you know, Johnny Brozak, the guys that were the second generation, I call it, of real watch guys. Okay, yeah. the first generation are the guys that started in the 80s, like um, Bob Marin, um, Seth Larriber, uh, Danny Pasternak. Um, this is before internet. This is before the internet when, you know, watch shows were you know the only way to really go and do business and when wow. started you know i was older at the time i'm si i'm going to be 60 in january so i was in 90 you know 94 i was 30 and you know you could do the math it's my I, age it's yeah. my age i'm 33 now god bless you and you got you have the internet see we had the internet also and very early on, I knew that this was going to be something. Um, I started off doing NAWCC shows in 96 and 97. And I was, I was selling catalogs that, you know, I found the garbage, you know, watch catalogs or just general collectible watch, catalogs, watch catalogs. Watch catalogs. And I, I lived in Brooklyn on Clinton street in downtown Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I went downstairs one day. I was going to my job. I worked in Bushwick. And I looked on Recycle Day, and there were these stacked catalogs there. There were these books in a garbage pail. And I yeah. looked at the top one was an Antiquorum catalog. It was like this thick. And I was like, wow, that's cool. It's watches. And I like watches. So I took them, yeah. work, looked at them. And then eBay had been, you know, kind of ramping up. And I put one of them on eBay, and I made 40 bucks. And I was just, that was it. I just started getting catalogs from anywhere I could, putting them on eBay. And that's kind of how, you know, I, I built up a, a good amount of money and I moved to New Jersey. Don't ask me why, but I did. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and, and since. Uh, well, back and forth. But um, it was a different mindset back then because the old timers were not internet savvy. And we, mm -hmm. so we had an outlet to sell and we also had an outlet to learn and we learned by buying and selling from each other you know i remember uh some of the some of the first people that i sold to on ebay one of them was bob Marin, the other one was eric Koo. that's how we all met wow wow yeah. i know those guys 
for a while now. And Eric and I always have this story where um, we were both bidding on something and we both didn't know the other one was bidding. On eBay. On eBay. And I, I never forget this. And he used one of those sniper apps because he, yeah. oh no, and I am. And he beat me out of it. And it was this bag of like all this stuff. And he never lets me. He's like, you know, you know, John, I was going through that bag that I won 20 something years ago. And it was, <laughs> this was in it. There was all kinds. There was a, a, a Submariner card in there. Oh, there was this in there. Oh, yeah. You know, and I was like, oh, mm, you know, but we're, you know, we're all buddies and, uh, you know, we laugh about it. But the internet, yeah change the game in a lot of ways and i would even though i was older i mean i I probably got i don't know 10 years on eric at least 15 years even though i was older i had to adapt because i knew that this was going to be you know the way of the future and back then there weren't there weren't these sites all over the place we had vintage rolex forum we had WatchNet and time zone and we had bj's online forum and Mm -hmm. we wars i look at the reddit guys you know and i always relate back to those guys and it's like we used to have wars like that on on the forums and that's how we learned and that's how we we you know we associated with one another and we were all friends at the end for the most part but most of the time you know we were arguing a point or trying to argue you know we came up with all this mark one mark two and all of these, you know, we can't, the blueberry inserts. I mean, I was the one who brought them to the forefront. In fact, I, I bought them. <laughs> yeah. I, blueberry inserts, you know the story. I bought them from a guy down in Florida and he was working for somebody. I was buying inserts by the bag. And we just so happened to be going through the inserts. And I mean, I'm an insert guy. I got tons of inserts. And I looked in there in these little like coin folders, there were these blue inserts they were gmt inserts and i was like wow and i did the video with my friend viper and um he was you know he he said you know some john these look real and i'm like yeah they do i was like everything else in the package was real i was like shouldn't be that you know they're gonna slip some aftermarket crap in but who knows it was you know it was 1990 it was 2000 actually 2000 2001 it was before 9 11. so we pulled them all to the side i think i paid 15 bucks each for them and subsequently, Arthur still has the original, like five or six of them that he kept. I wound wow. up sending a bunch of them to Eric in 2008 at a show. He needed some for some customers. I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. And uh, Arthur still has the original ones. And they're different from the ones that circulated in like 2012. There was another round of them that someone found somewhere. Who knows? Maybe they made them in the basement. I don't know. But now, the, these are these are the the bezel inserts, blue bezel inserts for the the ubiquitous yeah. blueberry GMT that a lot of people they're trying to discover whether it was whether it's even real or not. They're real. And you guys are like the yeah. the guys who are discovering the dinosaur d- yeah. dinosaur bones and trying to come up with the system to to catalog all of this. And you're yeah. giving it names, Mark One, like, Mark Two. It was like discovering plutonium, you know, like. <laughs> You, you you looked at some of these things. I mean, if I looked back on some of my old hard drives and mm-hmm. I looked at some of the watches that I, that I bought and sold for, you know, 500 bucks at that. I, back then, you could buy a gilt Submariner, okay, a four-line 5512 for $1,000. And that was a lot of money. A double red sea dweller, I remember, I think I sold one in 2004 for maybe four or five grand. Red yeah. subs were two grand. I sold, yeah. I remember, story all the time because people ask i mean i would wear my paul newman's and paul newman's back in the day were nobody wanted them in the 80s if the st- if anybody really knows the the history of it back in the 80s if you look at some of the older catalogs and stuff like that they would say we buy you know day date president this that no cosmograph would be written bold on, on the bottom and nobody wanted them until the guys in Italy started discovering them and bringing them to prominence with guys like Bob Marin and some of the other, I mean, Joe Macy, those guys that were very, very active in the community. And yes. I remember I bought a Paul Newman for $11,000, uh, 6263, I think it was, uh, white 6263. And I had to service it because it was running like shit. And I gave it to the watchmaker. <laughs> Took him like six, eight months to service it. In that time, 9-11 happened. The market crashed. I wound up selling it for 10 grand. I lost like 1,500 bucks on the thing 
I mean, today the watch was was would probably be worth I don't know six seven hundred thousand dollars like that. Jesus. You know? At it in those terms, but I was a deal. I'm a dealer's dealer, so I don't really look back and say, "Wow, I should have kept this or I should have kept that." I don't care. I buy and sell stuff. I do it for money. You know, I, I'm I'm a prize fighter. That's what I do. Look, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, like, do you come from money, or did you no. build this? You built this up yourself yeah. from beginning to the end. You you yeah. you saw that there's going to be potential in this industry, and you saw that there's going to be collector market in in the future. Right. I, you know, I don't know if we had any real foresight like that. Mm -hmm. I came, father worked for UPS. Okay. My mother was a secretary and yeah. you know, they were working people. And I mean, they didn't own a car. We lived in downtown Brooklyn, you know, and, um, you know, I grew up, I, I was not poor by any stretch of the imagination, but I didn't grow up like my son grew up, you know, yeah. but that every generation wants that for their children, you know, and when we speak of the generation gap, it, it's, it's always to do well so that you can provide, you know, my parents always provide, yeah. but I always wanted more. And when I started doing this kind of stuff, you know, working for myself as a side hustle, you know, I was always a hustler, but the side hustle was a real, you know, it was an eye opener for me because I, I found a way to make money legally. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and also now what I really respect about you is throughout all of this, you you knew better uh the, to you know you 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 always you always deal dealt with like real stuff. You you were never yeah, there's was there's a lot of like questionable there's you know, there's always an opportunity to make uh, to make money uh you know by you know, selling questionable. You know, we see we see uh, uh, like a like an auction that was recently on Phillips uh, that Speedmaster that was put together from all kinds. Of, you know, there was almost a conspiracy in a way the way the way they set it up and pulled off like almost this heist. But what I respect about you, I mean, you've been you've been like you said, you're 26 years and you have always done stuff not just legally but you also done stuff for the customers like yeah you charge money for it what is it is it wrong no it's not it's is it wrong to ask money you know we're doing a show here right we're providing entertainment i mean there's nothing wrong with doing things for money at the end of the day everybody has to have you know pay for the kids they have to pay rent pay the utilities pay the government for, for the you know, protecting us here you know i have to i have to do a lot it, it's, that's right we and you've got you know yeah. you've got a lot of stuff there uh uh that you've collected over the years because i think like you say that you know you you know it's about money but i i, I really feel like you're yeah. you're very passionate it's more than just money it's passion for the watches and also, I mean, it's something I, I almost feel like I, I watch Wukum, who's like maybe like your protege in a way, like a younger, a younger John thirsty. Buckley. That boy is thirsty. I yes. love him for it. That boy, is, he wakes up thirsty. <laughs> yes. And, and seeing him, you know, flipping Ooh. these watches, it's like a game. It's a game. And I, you have that same passion in you. Yeah. He and I have a lot in common when it comes to getting up in the morning and, and I say this to him and I don't want to offend anybody, but we get up in the morning with a raging hard on to make money. Okay. <laughs> we wake up in the morning and it's like my feet hit the ground and I don't care if I'm flush or if I'm, you know, if I'm behind for the month, I get up with the same sense of urgency, you know, and I'm doing this a little while. Okay. I, I could stay yeah. in for an extra 45 minutes or 15 minutes if I wanted to. I don't, I can't. I'm up at 5.15, five o'clock in the morning. I'm up checking my social media. I'm running around getting stuff ready for FedEx. I go on TikTok at seven o'clock in the morning. After seven o'clock in the morning, I go to the gym. I'm finished with the gym. My son and I go to breakfast. Uh, you know, I have this rigorous schedule that I created mm -hmm. myself. And when you speak of passion, I'm going to bring it back to the passion. I had a lot of passion for this when I started. That's what drove me. I really believed in it. I really believed in, you know, the uh, in doing things. I I was brought in. I have to say, I was brought in by you know with some really really good people. Like Eric is, you know, Eric is Eric. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Eric, my friend, and he and I, you know, we travel in different circles, 
but at the end of the day, we're like this, you know, he's, yeah. you know, always been one of those guys that he's the master of the universe. As far as I'm concerned, when it comes to vintage watches, I don't care who else you talk about. Eric Wynn. Eric, who, 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 no, who, Eric, who? Oh, uh, don't speak that man's name in the same sense with Eric Koo. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, who are you talking about? Eric oh, Koo? Eric. No, I, I, I didn't know which Eric we're talking about. No, no, Eric Koo. Wait, wait, there's only one Eric. It's Eric Koo. Okay. Everybody else gets next billing. Write it down, guys. Write it down. No, no. Eric Koo. Mark that. Eric Koo. Eric Koo's legendary. <laughs> legendary. See, this guy worked for a fucking auction house. And now he's a watch dealer. It's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I mean, really? Look, you want to get down? We're going to get down right here. Okay, <laughs> is this what you guys want? Because you got it tonight. Okay. Hey, you know, it, it's <laughs> like we get we get our we get our news from different sources, John. You know, it's no offense, no offense. I I want to know more about Eric Koo. You know, I don't know, I don't know anything about him. I just all I know is from bloody Houdinki. Oh fuck me! I oh, know uh, it's terrible. Okay, first of all, okay, I got nothing against Ben Clymer. Don't get me wrong, I like Ben. Houdinki is the fucking Starbucks of the fucking watch world. <laughs> Okay. Boom. It's exactly. The Starbucks of the watch world. And I got nothing against them. No, don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong I, with Starbucks. It, I'm drinking Dunkin' Donuts today. Fucking A. My guy. Okay. But what I'm saying is, you know, when you speak of guys that really know this shit, okay, you don't know who Eric Koo is? You and I, you don't know Eric Koo. You haven't gotten I don't know. I need to know more. Please tell me about Eric Koo. Eric Koo is, <laughs> he's, I can't tell you. I mean, you're gonna have to do your own research. Okay, I will okay. do. I will, uh, John. I no, I mean, I, right I give now. you a promise. I give you my word that today Please. I will sit down. I will research and, everything about him, and, and I will write an. I, will, I can write an essay goat. for you. I mean, that's the goat. Okay, that guy knows his shit. Okay, we came oh. up together. He is at that level where you know. Yeah, Eric Koo. Thank you, Eric Koo. There you go. Okay. David H., thank you so much. Le legendary viewer. I mean, well, I wouldn't be here today. But you could see how, like, I, I, you know, I, I get my uh, my news from, you know, this basic stuff. You know, Hodinki, uh, uh, monochrome. It's oh, stop. It's mass that. media stuff. No, But that's why I'm bringing you. This is why I'm here. This is the intervention, Fox John. Percent kid come on you got you got to dig deeper man this is the intervention do you understand this is why you're on to you kick get, my ass you got no i'm not gonna kick you i wouldn't kick no, your ass. you I, I really i like you because you're honest it's like you're you're you know you're organic you didn't know about eric q all right i gotta help you now now you, help. i need help listen you got to get down into the grimy underbelly of this shit and i'm not talking about the dirty guys i'm talking about the guys yeah. that really you know, move this market. Okay. Yeah. The guys that moved this market in the early days. Okay. Were guys like Eric, guys like me, we were for front and center in the debates over Mark one, Mark two, this four line, this and two line that, and what goes with yeah. which reference and which, which date code goes with which, uh, dial and Bakelite bezel inserts. And the only way that you learn about this stuff is by handling it. You can't yeah. do it looking at Hodinkee, okay? No offense to them. I mean, I know I come off strong sometimes, but I, I do. I like Ben. And he I'm, made I, but Ben I like Climber. Like, you are 100% on the money when you called Hodinkee the Starbucks. Because what Starbucks. Ben Climber did is that he it's kind of- Corporate watch collecting. That's what yeah, it is. Yeah, he made watch collecting but, accessible but for what? everyone. He made a lot of money doing it, and I, I yeah. respect that. I, I think- yeah. For what he did there, he turned it into something huge. More power to him, man. I give him all the props in the world. Okay, but for me, I don't think yeah. I've read an article. The only time I read something is when they did something about the Buckley dial. And I remember they, they did it cool, though. They said, um, supposed to be uh, n um, something about, like, you know, it is uh, probably or some, some someone says that it's named after a New York City watch uh, dealer or what vintage collector. And I like that. That was cool. I mean, I don't okay. I know what I what you know, what it's all about. That's cool. 
But I mean, when you look at, you know, the guys that moved this industry and it moved fast from 1998, 99 until about 2004, 2005 before the big crash. During that time, stuff was berserk. The price increases were astronomical and it was a real. Lot What's that? The, there were price increases. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The price increases on vintage because it came to prominence with the internet. And right. We were we were on these forums, which were the chat groups of their time. That's the foundation. This That's is the, the those forums. This is the foundation that yeah. laid groundwork for Hodinki. Hodinki wouldn't exist if it wasn't for those forums. Most of the current. No, I I, I really think so because most people who who went on to build Hodinki and these other things, they were either readers of the forums yeah. or they were gathering the information from the code because every time somebody's trying to prove something it, it eventually it has to be dug deep down and found somewhere in catalog and you guys were the ones who were taking stuff from the paper world and cataloging and bringing yeah. it into the online world and making it so that a google search can find your guys's answers that you were giving well, if you if you really look back, okay, and I'm kind of like a student of this because back in the yeah. day, it was really, I mean, passion was, you know, it, it, it was in us at that time because it was new, it was fresh. We would go through the old auction catalogs from the early 90s and we would pick out mistakes that they made that, you know, later on, we knew that this dial wasn't right. That dial's not right. Oh, this got sold for this amount of money and it's not correct. This, yes. we would go in there and we would like scour those catalogs. I've got boxes of them still sitting here. And when you, when you really study something, you know, and as you're studying it, you're buying and selling it and you're buying and selling it with your own money. There's a certain yeah. honesty that comes with that. Okay, when yeah. you speak of, you know, looking at dials and looking at inserts and looking at cases, it's because we learned it because we did it. See, today, everybody thinks they can go on to, you know, a, you know, a website, you know, and start looking at pictures and think that they would understand the tiny details, you know, the, <laughs> the color of the steel, the color of the gold, the, the real patina on dials that you know uh, there's so many so many different little things that we look for that go far beyond looking at pictures and you know John I, yes i 100% agree with you and you, you know i actually had uh, an experience like this in my in my life when when i realized how much i don't know and it was what, what happened was a, a friend a friend said oh tim you know watches um, can you tell me how much how much would you sell this Daytona for? And he sent me pictures, and I and that, and that was when I looked at the pictures and when I realized how you can't tell anything from the pictures, you realize how much you don't know anything. You like to confront whether the thing is even real. You would need to have hold it in your hand and maybe even compare it to something else, or you would have to have the memory where you held the real deal in your hand. You know, so the, the real life experience is so important and something that a lot of people don't get enough today. The problem is that a lot of people know just enough to be dangerous. That's the biggest yeah. issue we've got right now. It goes, goes to dealers and, you know, so-called, you know, specialists and experts and all this stuff that claim themselves. They've been in doing this for a few years now and yeah. they, they, they claim this. And I take great offense at that. Okay. You have to have it in your hand. And for the most part, you have to have bought it with your own money. Because when you buy it with your own money, you are looking yes. at a different set of eyes. Okay? Yeah. You're looking at it in terms of, if I fuck up over here, I'm going to be out 50 grand. I know guys <laughs> that with Bakelite inserts for GMTs. My friend Arthur's got five of them. And every time we have a question about Bakelite GMTs, I'll call Arthur. I don't know everything. Okay? But I know who to call when I need mm. help with something. OK, like if I have some some kind of question about a Newman dial or something, I'll call up Eric. If I have to ask about a, you know, something about a Submariner or, you know, 5512 or something that something's not right, I'll call up Andrew Steer. You know, I'll call up guys that I respect, that I do business with, that I know that I trust because they're going to yes. give me an answer based on, hey, let me try to buy it off this guy for a little less. That's what these guys are doing today. You know, 
the new guys that are coming up. They're all worried about, you know, who's going to find the next barn find. And if I told you how many barn finds we had our hands on way before it went into the barn and then popped out online, okay, it's like I can't even count how many times because these guys are just all about the sizzle, not about the steak, okay? They yeah. claim, but when push comes to shove, it's not how they operate. It's not how they roll. And, and that's why we've been doing this for so long and doing it at a high level. I don't claim to be the biggest dealer in the world. I don't want to be. I like doing what I do. I like my little niche. You know, I like doing my parts. Today we're doing, you know, I'm doing the media stuff with the boys, my son and Vukum, who is Tyler is Vukum. My son is his best friend. He's the cameraman. And we created a year ago. Well, they did. I mean, I just jumped on board. They created yeah. Watch Talk, registered trademark. And they, you know, my son started this thing with the camera and, you know, going through when Tyler was buying a watch and you see a million other guys try to do it. They can't do it like him because he understands this business since he was born, you know, you, been in this business, not in the business that long, but he's, yeah. you know, we celebrated holidays together, you know, Christmases. I have Chris, every Christmas, I've got pictures of his family under the, you know, by the tree at Christmas Eve, you know, we're wow. all very, the, 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 the work that you have to put in is not negotiable. You know, yeah. it's, not, you know, you can't sit there and read a book and then turn into an expert. You can't handle a few watches here and there, you know, broker a watch deal or something and become an expert. You have to have made money, lost money. Okay. You never learn when, you, see, when people lose money, like we run this chat group. Okay. And, you know, I always tell people I lose money on, I don't know, 10, 12% of everything that I buy. I am a habitual buyer. I just buy blindly for the most part. And I buy all kinds of stupid shit. You're a hoarder. Oh, there's a hoarder. Forget it. I'm a <laughs> habitual buyer. I buy the most random stuff. I bought a Frederick Constant, the one with the car, the little, I, I, I never even heard of this thing. One of my guys called me up. Hey, I got this watch. How much you want to pay? I'm like, eh, I don't know, a thousand bucks. I'm like, okay, I go buy it. I come home last night. I look on eBay. The thing is sitting there with no bids for 800. I'm like, yeah, that's, oh. that's I'm going to lose money there. But you know what? I'll give it to somebody as a gift. It's fine. But when you lose money on something, these guys, oh, I never lost any money in the watch business. And it's like, you know what? You probably never learned anything in the watch business either because losing money in this business, it's tuition, okay? Yeah. It's tuition. You're, you're investing in yourself when you lose money because you're not going to make that mistake again if you respect the money and the game. And that's the problem with all these guys. They've all got investors. They're all, you know, they own a portion of their company. They have somebody else writing your checks for them. And you know what? It becomes muddied. And that's how things get dirty. Like, you know, that, that stuff that's going on now. You know, I mean, that's you know, I had the Anthony on the show. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, it was uh it was quite an experience. Ah, I I think I Anthony never, I never spoke to him. I never met him. I, I met him one time in Miami for like a couple a couple of minutes. Uh, I think that that was back then when he was very close with uh, with Roman, and they were doing all collabs together. It was post blackout. That mm -hmm. was disaster. See, respect for money. What you said, right? This is something Anthony. I think he never had that because no. he was just blowing money he was justifying it uh but saying Mark oh this is social media it's marketing it's marketing yeah. he fooled himself with that and he fooled i think he fooled himself and the audience because I, in my opinion i think he just he really liked that lifestyle and he who was would, kind of who, who i mean hey yeah who wouldn't go out there spending whatever you want i'm a responsible person okay i have yeah. i have some assets i have an asset or two let's put it that way okay mm. I, I can go out and do all of that stuff, but would I? It's like, I wouldn't do that. What am I, nuts? I wouldn't teach my son. I wouldn't teach Tyler to do those things. That's not what you do. That's not how you accumulate real power in this world and wealth and, and real estate and, and be able to do whatever you want when you want to do it and run your own business and not be beholden to somebody who's writing the check for you. You know, yeah. when... I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess we're going to segue into this at some point. We might as well get it over with. We can talk about it later. Or uh, if you want to talk, we can get it out of the way. We can get, we can get hey, it. I think we can get it out of the way now. And then we can keep having fun. Talk watches. Yeah.
Look at this. Okay. Yeah. You got good hair. I got to yeah. tell you, I had hair like that back in the 70s, man. I swear to God. I swear to God. One time I dyed my hair. I was trying to get that look, and I did the wrong color. It came out like freaking orange. It was all It fun. was pink, and then it turned <laughs> yellow. Yeah, it's so bizarre. It's. It looks good, though. <laughs> it was a fundraiser. You know, I needed to pay rent. You know, just like you... You know, uh, sometimes you have to do stuff that you don't really want to do for money. It, this is one of the things that I do on this show. You know what? You don't have to make any apologies to anybody as long as you're paying your own bills, doing your own thing and running your own show. You know, exactly. there's nobody to answer to. And when we started, we started Vukum back in 2020. I mean, and that was, you know, that's a whole other story. But let me get back to Tyler, not Tyler, yeah. Farrar. You know. I remember when he and Marco and I tell this story and I saw Marco over the weekend. Marco actually came to our show. He called me up and he asked me if he can come and, and yes. shoot. A I said, yeah, you know, I know he's considered toxic by a lot of people and I don't think that's right. You know, no, I really it's, don't it's, it's totally unfair. There's just some people oh, who yeah. are out for vendetta. They swear they have Ferris wheels and eat corn dogs. Fuck fair. Okay. It's, he's yeah. going to have stench of that motherfucker on him for the rest of his career. No matter what he does, he's not going to shake it. So I'm I'm a fair guy, okay? I'm going to use yeah. fair in that light. It's like, I'm fair when it comes to that. Marco, you know, I never heard any of the stuff like I heard when I found out that Anthony was bad and I always gave the kid the benefit of the doubt. I didn't know if he had an investor who was just stupid and just gave him, you know, free reign of his bank account. That happens yeah. in business. But he was just brazen, brazenly just, you know, pissing money away, you know, for the sake of pissing money away. And you have to respect the money in this game, because yeah. if you don't respect the money, bad shit happens. Even if you have an investor, I got guys, they, they want to, you know, we were on last night. I don't know if you saw the bit last night with JJ, who was really, really great. I mean, they were fantastic there. I know I, I, I have personal not, things with, not beef, but there's competition. Let me tell you something. Uh -huh. Okay. They were really good to me and they were really nice guys. And yeah. they, they did a really good interview like you're doing. Okay. So it's like, I, I respect that. They had that guy, Wesley, come on. And Wesley, I spoke yeah. to Wesley early on in this thing. And he and I had a long conversation and I got a weird feeling in my stomach. And last night, you know, I, you know, he wanted to go on with me for, you know, doing some other stuff. I didn't do it. Because I had a weird feeling. Bob, on the other hand, I trusted Bob immediately. Bob sent me the video of Anthony yeah. saying that shit. That was on a Monday right after he oh, he came onto my TikTok. That's how I found out. And the minute I found out, because just before that, it was more like, oh, he's going dark again. I thought he got busted for DUI and he had to go to jail, so he was going to go dark. I was like, you know what? It's probably a scam. He's doing it for cloud and this and that. Fuck it. Bob came yeah. on. He's like, no, there were real he's like, he scammed me. And Bob and I communicated i have the video <laughs> I, I isolated it from my tiktok live and i was like holy shit he's like i'm gonna send you something he sent me the video of anthony saying he faked the robbery he did this he did that that's it shots fired it's on i will do everything i can to stop people from dealing with this guy yeah. now i spoke with wesley very soon after that and you know i, I i'm not gonna say that I didn't believe him, but I didn't. There were things that I think he left out. And last night was kind of interesting because he just happened to pop up on the show, which whether it was planned or not, I really don't care. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't owe anybody money. I'm not owed any money from this. That's so the best, you know that's what? the best position to be in. That's the position I stay in, okay? <laughs> and it's like, that's why I could do this. And my hands are clean. I could say whatever the fuck I want. Exactly. That's him. I was like, you know, the thing that never really you know rung true in my head was you were doing I mean, you know everybody knows the story he was doing all these watches with the guy you never had an operating agreement you never had a separate llc written up you never had a joint bank account you never had any oversight you never you know saw the money coming in and going out and the profit going where it's so you never had a p l you never had all of these basic accounting and legal tools that anybody that's going into the business in in the six and seven figures has to have so that aside OK, that aside, I said to him, I said, the thing that really annoyed me, OK, was when all of this broke and Anthony was kind of on the run and he started posting other people's watches on Instagram. OK, somebody, you know, one of these ninjas out there tried to buy one 
And lo and behold, it was going to a South Carolina LLC. And this was after this whole thing broke, after oh. what it was deemed to be a victim. So it's like, okay, you're sh- somebody sending you money, okay, or something or, or some company in your town money, okay? That never worked for me, okay? And that was the biggest thing that I had wrong with this. That was the mm. thing you know, I said. Now he explained it last night. If you go back into the show, he explained it. I'm not going to go into it because he's got, you know, he's obviously got legal issues that he's going to have to deal with based on yeah. that. And I don't want to look as a human being. I feel for him. I've taken six figure losses. I know what that's like. Yeah. It is the worst fucking feeling. There was yeah. nothing in that. You just wake up in the morning and it's like your, your whole body just doesn't want to operate. You feel like such a fucking jerk. Because yeah. you, the only reason you lose the money is because either you're greedy or you're not doing your due diligence. You know, in his case, I guess yeah. he was greedy and not doing his due diligence. But how in the fucking world do you still let this guy broker a watch for you when you know he's fucking robbing you? You know how you do it? Because you're going to get a piece of the action if he's getting paid for it. You're going to keep the ball rolling. And that's fucked up. Because there are I- people there that are really guys you know it's not just guys like listen i'm not going to say what anthony said some really fucked up shit like oh yeah. he's got supported. you know what bob is you know a regular guy okay but bob yeah. you know worked hard his whole life and saved up money for those watches and bought those watches he doesn't deserve to be robbed any more than the guy who saved up for that one watch and you know and lost it and there are so many of those one watch guys out there. I get texts from them all the time. And those are the guys that just like, it's just, they're never going to see their watch or their money. And yeah. it's terrible. And how is this guy still trying to recoup his money? And I, I, you know, listen, there's a part of me that respects it. And then there's a part yeah. of me that's disgusted by it. It's like, okay, you're trying to get yours. Meanwhile, the guy flew out there to South Carolina to meet with his people. It's like, if that guy f- took a million bucks from me, flew out to see me, he wasn't leaving. <laughs> <laughs> He wasn't okay. Here, I'm gonna say it. he wasn't. He wasn't leaving without limping somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> that shit's not gonna happen. And it's like, come on, man. It's like, give me a fucking break. Don't give me this fucking aw shucks. I lost a bunch of money routine. You know yeah. that's fucked up. And I may be fucked up for saying it, but guess what? You know, I, I'm. You know, I'm real. I'm. I'm honest. I have I, no bug in this fight. But you know what? I'll yeah. fucking come out and I'll speak my mind. But the whole thing is just disgusting. You know, it's a, it's an absolute disgrace to anybody that, you know, that works hard for a living. It's like nobody deserves to be taken advantage of. But the problem with this whole thing is they're going to have to prove intent and oh. prove intent is tough. But you know, one thing, it's like the one thing that, that really is going to cripple this guy, I hope in this whole thing was him sending Bob, that guy's sea dweller as payola. Bob said, mm. Bob he's trying to send me a sea dweller. I'm like, what? I was like, don't accept it. I was like, you call your lawyer. He's like, it's here already. I was like, don't open it. Called his lawyer. The lawyer said, okay, open it. And he was supposed to be sending that to him as like a partial, like peace offering. Bob opened it. We found Shush money, the original owner that gave it to Anthony on consignment. So there is where they're going to have some, something to sink their teeth into the rest of these guys, man. I mean, they signed a consignment agreement. It's a civil case unless they can prove intent. And that's why you've got to be really careful in this world. I don't do consignment. I'm not, a, I don't like that shit. I've been telling my audience, do not do, con- consignment is actually, John, I, I, in my opinion, consignment is bad for dealers too. It's like, it, it, it's like a, too, it's too good to be true. It sounds fantastic on paper when you explain it to someone, but the responsibility that's involved and all the risk, there's no way, the, the risk is not worth for any reputable dealer. Well, hold on. But there are dealers that do consignment and they do it right. Okay? When, they, when they have very small percentage, like sure. if, they, if it's a percent. The problem with consignment is greed. Yes. Okay. The problem is greed. And it's not really greed. It's just there's operating expenses that have to be met. If you're going to give me a watch, okay, that's worth $14,000, okay, and I'm going to take it on consignment with you for twelve. dollars there's $2,000 worth of room in that watch. I have to find that person. But meanwhile, the watch is only worth ten. dollars okay? That's the problem, okay, dealer to dealer. So these guys are going to try to find a sucker, not a sucker, but a retail guy who really wants the watch. And they're not suckers. They just want what they want when they want it. And that's fine. Okay. Yeah. I, 
guys like that all the time. You see me buying, whenever I'm buying these bigger watches in New York, that's the kind of, these are guys that I've been doing business with for 20 years. They're, you know, overseas guys, people in my inner circle, they need a watch and they don't, they're like, Buffy, find the watch. And I was like, okay, I'm going to find the watch. Whatever it's going to cost, it's going to cost. If I have to pay up for it, I'm going to pay up for it because I know they want it. You know, if they don't want it, you know, they're not going to tell me to buy it. And it's very, you know, uncommon that they would tell me to buy something. I buy it. And then, you know, they don't they take pull it. out. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it happens very infrequently. Okay. Yeah. But dealing with people you trust. Okay. Yes. You're, you're, you're comfortable doing that. I write the checks. They're not writing the checks. Sometimes they'll send me a deposit. Or other time they'll send me a deposit. I'll have to ship the watch. And then three weeks later, they're going to send me the balance. Okay. They're my guys. I trust them. Okay. Yes. But you're dealing with a guy who's number one had no clue what he was doing in terms of what watches what what the watches were all about he was you know he was just faking it it's like fake it till you make it and the problem is people in social media okay the generation that's you know looking to to social media for the first time the older guys and the younger guys who look to social media for the flex they're looking at this guy and they believe that shit I'm sitting there going, okay, he's got three supercars. There's no way he owns them. He's got to be leasing them. So that's going to, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 grand a month, 30 grand a month. Who knows whatever kind of deal he got. Okay. Then you've got this, this place that they leased by his own admission was a hundred grand a month or something like that. It's like, okay, I'm looking at the numbers and I'm looking at the margins, the real deal margins. Okay. And it's 5%. like, there's, if you're lucky on this dollar watch, if you're lucky. Okay. Yeah. Sitting there and I'm saying to myself, hmm, you know, something doesn't ring true. But you know what? Again, if you have an investor that's pumping money into this shit, okay, it's like maybe the guy's stupid. What, maybe he's what, a billionaire. Who knows? I know guys that have sugar. I don't want to call them sugar daddies that have investors like that. Okay. And I have some people like that. And But, you know, these guys that are working with them are straight to the point. They sit there with a pencil and a ledger sheet and they make sure everything is straight because they don't want to get sued by this guy. Yes. Because <laughs> these guys have assets. This guy had nothing, okay? He had nothing, okay? Had a uh, rep sheet. Listen, I'm going to tell the story. You like Marco? I like Marco too, okay? Four and a half, four, three, four years ago, something like that. I remember that he was, they were together. It was the beginning of TPG down there. They were in Dallas. And I think I sold him a bracelet or something. It took me two weeks to get paid, like $1,000. <sighs> And I got the text. I'm like, where the fuck is my money? <laughs> I hate, listen, if it was $100,000, I probably wouldn't even fucking care. But like <laughs> all money, $200, I'm like, where's the fucking money? Because you know what happens? I wind up forgetting about it. And I have this whiteboard in my office with like, you know. <laughs> oh, with all the transactions <laughs> that you the, have to remember. All, yeah. Anybody owes me money. And it's never big money like that. You know, it's like 10 grand, five grand, two grand like this. But when it's yeah. small, small money, sometimes you just forget about it. And yeah. it's like, you know, that was it. It was like, oh, my PayPal doesn't work. I'm like, your fucking PayPal doesn't work. You're in fucking business. What are you talking about? Send me a check. Do what you, uh, Make a deposit. Do something. Pay me this fucking thing so I can move on with my life. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's those kind of little things and a lot of the drama that transpired during that time down there and a lot of the attitude that yeah. both of them, for the most part, Marco's been humbled, it seems. Okay? He's been uh, humbled. I, I think... I think Not his true thing. nature, he, you know, in all those flex videos, uh, John, it, it never, Marco never looked comfortable doing any of it. Like he was at these dinners and they're trying to spoon feed him. He, and he's like, hey. you know, he's always, but he was sucked in. I mean, he had to, he had to toe the line. He certainly wasn't saying, Hey, wait a minute. You know, that's a little bit of, that's a lot of money that I'm going to be partnering up on you for, you know, if you're mm. going your partner and he's dropping 20 grand on a dinner you better know i'm gonna have something to say about it before you do it okay they were doing it yeah. together okay they split up fine you split up that's cool this guy went one way this guy went the other way he started grand caliber i had marco down here you yeah. know I, I i showed him every consideration because i'm not gonna let the stench of this guy and i never met the other one i never met ferrari I never spoke to him i never i think he texted me once in all, in like when I first broke out on TikTok oh. saying, hey, let's do a video. I don't think I answered him. I don't remember. I have to take a look. But yeah, it, it's the type of thing where it's easy to get sucked up in it. Okay. And money is a really, really bad mistress. It's like you can, you, money, it, it changes people. You know, I know people yeah. that I grew up with 
and some of them have done really well. Some of them have fucked up. Okay. Yeah. Some of the ones that have done really well, are fucking assholes. Some of the ones that are living very humbly are, are cool in the game. Yeah. But you, you, you know, you don't know how money is going to, you know, has going to affect you. I remember when I was, you know, young in the business, I was making a lot of fucking money. Okay. For the yeah. first time. And I remember I had to have the biggest house. I had to have the, the nicest car. I had to walk around with a hundred thousand dollar watch when a hundred thousand dollar watch was like a million dollar watch today. And it's like, I remember that time when I was in my early forties and then I got humbled. I got my ass fucking kicked in a business what happened? watch deal. I, I fucking bought a construction company. I lost a half a million dollars. That was a lot of money. Oh. to me. And I, I wound up winning a judgment. And I said this last night, I won a judgment against this cocksucker. Okay. <laughs> scumbag all right this piece of shit him and his fucking ugly wife okay <laughs> his fat ugly wife how about that? <laughs> this scumbag okay goes into the courtroom and i had my 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 goomba attorney he's a big irish guy okay uh -huh. boy and this guy's this guy gets up in front of the judge speaks to the judge because his attorney was a piece of shit this guy's like well you know uh, Mr. Buckley came to me, he pulled up in his brand new Mercedes and this, my attorney went fucking ape shit. Okay. This ape shit in the courtroom, just fucking lambasted them. The judge is like, Mr. Hughes, you're, you're I think you should switch to brew decaf. I think, yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> down, go in the mediation. We went in there, we hammered out a deal. I wound up clearing after legal fees, $165,000, $170,000 that I got paid over four years. And at that moment I said to myself, I'd rather yeah. see a motherfucker walking with a limp. Because it didn't matter to me. Three, four yeah. grand a month. It fucking matter at that point. And I know how these guys feel that lost that money. They felt, I felt like that for like, for years. I felt like that. For years. Okay. Yeah. And as I got older and I remembered, I'm in recovery a long time. Okay. And that put me into a real bad tailspin back then. And I learned about humility. Okay. And I learned about, you know, really understanding what's important. And when I came out of my stupor, okay, in 2008, I had a heart attack. I mean, you know, I, I went yeah. through it, okay? Wow. And I came out of it and I said, you know something? I'm not gonna do that shit again. I'm not gonna be that guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna think, you know, and not, you know, not be such a fucking asshole to myself and others. And lo and behold, you know, I mean, the fallout from that caught up with me after a while. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you get humbled and you have two choices. You can either fuck people or you take it on the chin. You suck it up. You squeeze everything, you know, you downsize everything in your life and you downsize your expectations, which is yeah. the hard thing in the world to do. And your ego gets so fucking beat up. And I'm a, you know, I'm the most humble guy, you know, I'm a massive egomaniac. Okay. <laughs> most that's what they say. They try to say. And that's what they say. And you know what? They're right. And it's okay. You know what? I, I don't owe them money. Don't worry about it. They can say what the <laughs> fuck they want. They don't owe me money either. So it's okay. But you know what? You learn lessons. And then as, you know, I have one child, my son. And as he was getting older, I said to myself, it's like, you know something? I have to really, you know, show him the right way things are done. And mm. I did. We were in, you know, we did sneakers together. We did a lot of things, you know, and that's the generation gap that was starting to come together. Okay. Fast forward to 2000, 1999, 2000, my son hates the business. Always hated it. Really good at it. Knows what he's yes. doing. Hates it. Okay. Can't fucking stand it. All right. Tyler always wanted to be in the business. Tyler is Vukum. Mm -hmm. There you go. And he was going away to college and he was like, he spent the summer with me on 47th Street because my son was doing another gig. He was working at some music studio or something, doing um, production or something like that. Yeah. And he came with me. Tyler came to 47th Street with me. And I could see that, you know, he, was, he wasn't confident, you know. One day, out of the blue, he would go get lunch. He would he'd be the kid that goes, runs to get lunch, do this. We abuse the shit out of him. <laughs> like, nice. he was like, Go for boy in the office. We were just, yeah. fucking. and it was great because he could take it. That's one good. That's what I liked about him. That kid could take it. We it's gave a it sense of humor. Oh my! It, it's a sense of humor, and it's also it's a certain amount of humility. As much yeah. as he comes off as an egomaniac and this fucking yeah. asshole, okay, that kid listens, okay, and he's not the fucking asshole that people think he is. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm 
saying that what he does is like an act because that's really how he is. But <laughs> when you're sitting down with him, you understand the kid is fucking brilliant. OK, he's got a lot of, you know, he's a brilliant kid. And he went to school. He lasted 13 days in college. Oh. Left college, paid his tuition, came back, called me up. He said, John, I want to I want to be a watch dealer. I want to do what you do. I said, OK, if you want to do what I do, you know, if you want what I have, you got to do what I do. OK, mm. you got to operate a different way. He learned about, you know, hustling in the flea markets. It's a different mindset. You know, it's not that it's not the way that I operate. So I had to sit down with him and explain certain things to him. You got to be truthful. Yeah. You got to be honest. You can't always worry about money. If you fuck up, you got to own it. You got to give a refund. I said to him, "Why don't you go online?" I said to him, "Go take a look and see how many people have done bad deals with Buckley in the last 20, 20 years or so." It was 20, 22 years at the time. Goes online. Yeah. He's wow. Oh, nobody's ever said anything bad about you. I said, "You want to know why?" He's like, "Why?" I said, "Because I know how to give a fucking refund when I fuck up. If somebody doesn't right. like." Even if it's, my, if, if it's, if they're just, you know, oh, my wife doesn't want me to have it, send it back. Here's the label, send yeah. it back, money back. I don't want any hassles with people at this stage of my life. And I was always like that because you have to give refunds if you fuck up. It's not the yeah. way it is with a lot of people. They sell something, especially a consignment deal. Okay. What are you going to do with one of these guys that, you know, one of these fucking watch dealers out there, big watch dealers, you know, many of them that sell these fucking, you know, big time watches and they don't own them. They're, brokering them for somebody. Let's just say you sell me a Paul Newman. And yeah. at some point I take it somewhere and I find out that somebody redid the, the, the tritium. Oh Maybe I did due diligence right then. And I want to return it. And the consigner is gone. He's gone. You're holding the bag and you don't have the money to write a check. So that's a problem in this business. Okay. It's a real problem. So what we <laughs> teach here is be accountable. Okay. Be the kind yeah. of person and that, you know, no matter what, you can walk in the sun. And he really learned that very quickly. And during COVID, we were, you know, we started the chat group, the dealer chat group that we have. And he was always saying to me, you know, we've got to do something else. We've got to start a money chat group. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to get involved in that. It's a pain in the ass. Just sell your fucking watches. <laughs> you got to do. Last year, probably May or June, he and my son are in the city with me because now they were both coming to me, coming to the city with me because my son's gig mm -hmm. dried up. He wasn't making any money. He's like, all right, dad, I'm coming back. I'm like, okay, great. I'll come on back. You know, it's, it's going to be your business anyway one day. He's like, okay, fuck it. I'll come back. So they were filming. He was filming him doing a negotiation with somebody. Yes. And they put it on TikTok. It got, I don't know, 30,000 views, 300,000 views. I don't know. And this light bulb went off in their head. Boom. From that point on, he just carried a camera. And in the beginning, nobody wanted to film. You know, nobody wanted to be on camera doing this. Yeah. So there were only a couple of people that did. Okay. And those were the people, like, after a while that he did more business with, that he constantly put on camera. They got a lot of play out of it because he blew up yeah. quickly. I came on probably around September. I had a video doing a, a bracelet right here. A a comparison of an aftermarket bracelet and a real bracelet that blew up. I don't know, blew up and was 300,000 views. And we were neck and neck for the longest time. And yeah, and what wound up happening was we, we went viral and he became, I mean, he's got almost, he's got a million seven followers. I've got like 850 or something like that. But the bottom line is when we started it, everybody kind of saw what we were doing and how everybody wanted to be in the videos, you know, like, yeah. hey, tell you something. It's like, they weren't giving us any real deals. So we weren't going to give them any real play, but then everybody else started doing the shit, you know? And when everybody else starts doing something, it's kind of like, eh, we're going to start backing off a little bit now. I'm not going to be filming so much of this stuff down there. And that's where we're at right now. You know, we're doing the trade shows now. Um, we just started, like you said, when was it last week? And yeah. I, Hold it off. I mean, it wasn't anything so crazy, but we had the best security that you could ever have at a trade show. That was the goal. And wow. everybody felt safe. Everybody got in and got out. Everybody shipped and didn't have to worry about leaving with their goods. And it, it's, you know, it's a crazy business out there right now. The market is about to do strange things. It's already doing strange things. 
I this is like what you guys are doing, you know, uh, the, with the videos, with the TikTok. I feel like yeah. you you push. This is a new kind of genre that you that you guys created, and I I really really love what you've done. And then now going into trade shows, mm -hmm. uh, while the market because like. This business, the watch flipping business, people think there's people in the chat, there's, a, there's haters. They think it's so easy to to make money, you know, buying and selling watches, but it's really hard work. You need you need, you need to have so much experience. You well, need to it know was all these last two yeah. and a half years up until about six eight months ago, it was real yeah. easy. That's why you got a lot of these people that jumped in. Everybody wants to be on the up market. Everyone was making money. You could be, you could have, you could be a dumbass, okay, who never finished even basic education. You, you could like literally know nothing. You could make money flipping watches. Yeah. And a lot of people did. But you know what the problem is? Right now, all the people that they sold watches to, uh -oh. okay. See, one of the things that I always usually try to do with somebody, if I'm going to sell them, if I don't know them, it's like, yeah. I'm them up on something i'll give them a buyback price on something i'll say okay if i'm selling you this watch for 10 grand i will buy it back i don't know as long as you don't beat the crap out of it i'll buy it back for 8509 grand wow that's very okay it's it's uh, listen you'd be surprised okay how many people all of a sudden start taking you up on that and the reason i know that is because a lot of other people that bought these watches for a lot more money from other dealers who will remain nameless okay they're not doing it. They're not buying it back for that. They're going to lose 30, 40%. And that's tough. But yeah. this is the business you chose. That's life. You suck it up. You take the money, you cash out, you lose some money, you start again. These yeah. guys hold on to it like grim death. Like they're, like they're going to hatch an egg or something like that. Like all of a sudden, oh, well, you know, I'm going to hold on to it until the market comes back. I'm like, you're going to be holding it for 10 fucking years. <laughs> you're going to hold on to this thing. In the year... Switzerland is going to pump out 25 more million of watches and people yeah. will move on to the yeah. new stuff. Yeah. People are moving on already. People are moving on to different things. But the, the thing that we noticed about the trade show that was really interesting, I had, I don't know if you got, you know, Faber, Ed Faber is the guy in the office building that has the view. He's the older guy that I do business with. I've known Ed for God knows how many years since I started in the business. And Ed came to me. He had, he was set up right near us. And he did a lot of business and he met a lot of people. He said to me, John, I can't believe what you did here. He said, what you did was you joined the new generation and the old generation. You have the new energy coming into the room. These are all the kids that we did sneaker shows with. Now they see Tyler. Okay. And they want to, you yeah. know, get into the watch game, but you know, we have the group for them. Some of them are in the group. Some of them aren't. When we have people in the group, we tell them, they're like, okay, I've got $5,000 I saved up. I want to start selling watches. Like, okay, here's what you do. Take $4,900, give it to your mother and tell her to hide it for you. Take a hundred bucks. Go out there and buy a watch and flip it. What are you talking about? How am I going to flip a watch for a hundred bucks? Flip yeah. a watch for a hundred bucks. That's the challenge. And if you can do that and understand the process before worrying about profit, you're going to be successful because it's the same process selling a hundred dollar watch or a hundred thousand dollar watch. You got to look at it the yeah. same. You've got to you've got to know where you're going with it the same way. You got to factor in whether or not you could afford it the same way. Am I going to lose a hundred bucks? Am I going to lose a hundred thousand? It's the same thing. And when you learn how to do it from the ground up, we've got guys that just started that are doing it as a side hustle in the group. And I don't do classes. I don't do that kind of shit. It's like, look, join the fucking group, ask questions from your peers. Okay, we've got major dealers in the group. And we've got new dealers in the group. And you know something? The new dealers are driving the group right now because they've got the energy and they've got, you know, that spark in them. They can get out there. They can, yeah. they can, they got the feet. They can go out and yeah. get the, get the new stock and bring it in to people who are a little bit more established, who have these locations. Yeah. And we, we all make money in there. And yeah. the beauty of it is we have really solid moderation. It's not so big that it's it's hard to manage and it's not so small that it's boring it's like 2500 yeah. people give or take on any given day 2400 it's 2300 because it's the summer we were up to almost 3000 a couple of months ago but during the summer people come people go but all of that is from the tiktok videos okay wow. Tyler brings them in they see me and you know i give them val give it validation 
And we work together with Carl Cohen as a moderator. I mean, we've got, you know, a guy named Tyler Love, a new guy. Guy is salt of the earth, solid kid, learning how to be a dealer, you know, working really hard. We've got guys and, that, you know. And John, John, I, I think I, I, I want to I wanna like actually add something to it because a lot of people might think, oh, you te you're teaching kids like how to, you know, flip watches. But these are actual life skills. That yeah. like people should know for themselves. This is something that you know you could you could learn how to make money even if you have you know you don't have a job. It's, you somebody could have a nice job, lose it in the meantime. You know they can find ways to make money and survive and be able to pay for you know for family and uh, and for kids and for for their own living. I mean this is important life skill that you guys are teaching. You know what the most important skill. That, that we found the most important aspect of what we do, we don't mm. flash. We don't flash. Okay. Yeah. It's like, hey, listen, you know, number one, it's really not safe to do that. I tell the boys, like, if you're going out or you're doing something, don't wear a watch. Don't go out there and do that. Be really careful. Okay. When you teach people to start small and appreciate mm. the business and the money and not worry about, oh, I'm going to buy a Lambo. Okay. You can get that. Yeah. Go out and buy a Lambo. Anybody can if I wanted to. I would too. I'm not, I'm, that's not my thing, you know? Yeah. But you have to teach people, and we do it by example. I'm not wearing watches. We're not over there wearing Gucci and this. <laughs> not yeah, that you're people that do. You not, got style. Hey, you know what, John? But, you got your own style. You're but, I don't give a fuck about style. Style. My mother gave gives me cardigans for every Christmas. That's where I get these cardigans from. And there you go. Like, I tell people, it's like, hey, listen, you know what? I remember the days when I was in my early 40s. Okay, I would buy $400 socks. I would go out and do, you know, I say that. When it, you had to prove something to you someone. Had to prove, okay? I don't have anything to prove. And I tell the boys the same. I was like, you guys have nothing to prove. You guys are making serious money right now, more money than grown men, okay, that will never make in their lives. You have to respect that. Tyler bought a house recently for himself. Wow. Okay, my son is saving up. You know, they have girlfriends, you know. Yes. They're, they're living their lives like decent human beings, not like trollops running around yes. out there looking to, you know, to party and this and that, going out during bottle Drinking. You want to laugh? Drug, I'm gonna you know, Vegas. I'm going to make you laugh, though, okay? Because it's not all, it's not all you know, they, they do have their hiccups, these two. Hey, so everybody talk, has once in a while. Uh, we me talk too. About, I'm not an angel. Listen, we talk about marketing, okay, and how yeah. Ferrar called all of his cars and you know a motorcycle for every day of the week marketing okay mm. one i look on instagram and i see the boys are down in ac with their girlfriends and i see yeah. a, you know you know when the bottle service girl goes around with the sign it said join vukum verify 20 bucks per month oh and yeah I'm like, what the fuck is that next day i look on the company credit card it's like three or four thousand dollar bill oh. they come, i'm like okay I was like, what the fuck is this? They're like, oh, that's marketing. I was like, you better, you better think again. It was a free way to do that marketing. You don't have to spend money for marketing. My money? I was like, how many people did we get from it? Oh, I think we talked to two people. I'm like, good going. So they lead us to say, okay, they had to go into their pockets to make good on that. Okay. And yeah. understand the lesson it, 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 that was that was to be learned. It's that you don't take company money and piss it away. Company money yeah. is the most precious aspect of a company, okay? You have to learn to, to be very, very efficient. I don't want to say frugal because that sounds like, you know, like Simon Legree. You have to get, you have to get for more for your money right. than you spend on the market. If you're spending 20000 on marketing and getting 10000 in return, yeah. what the hell? Did you, what are you doing? Listen, one of, the, one of my dear friend, an accountant, said to me early on, he's like, John, it's not how much money you make. It's how much money you keep. Okay. It's how much money. It's not how much you make. It's how much you spend. Okay. Mm. We make a lot of money. Okay. Guys in our business, we're, we, we yeah. turn a lot of money. Okay. To the average guy, they look at this and they're like, oh my God. You know, if you really look at it, okay. We, you know, we're, we're very careful. Other people aren't. It's the guys that have something to prove out there. You know, I mean, you look at Ferrar. Okay. And I'm going to use this as an example because I can, because Roman is a friend of mine for 20 years. Okay. 
I know Roman since he started in this business. He and I started together. Okay, he mm -hmm. built Luxury Bazaar from fucking nothing, him and Arthur. They built it from the ground up, okay? Say what you will about him, okay? He likes the attention. He likes the spotlight. More power to him. Everybody. Of course. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Let me tell you something about Roman. You would never see Roman doing some stupid shit like that kid did. Roman could flex, but you know yeah. something? Afford to flex, okay? That kid, you just, in the back of your mind, you're like, yeah. how the fuck is he doing that shit? If Roman was doing makes sense. Fucking Roman, that's him. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think Roman was flexing less than the TPG. You know, you know, really, like, like, like with the, all the Roman flexing, think, bro, the less, and he's a bigger business. It makes no sense. Bazaar is a real business, okay? Right. A real business. I don't know what they're, what they're, you know, it's got to be a high eight figure, maybe nine figure business, okay? That's a serious fucking okay. business, okay? Yeah. You want that man. And his and Arthur built that shit from the ground up, and there's nothing but respect there. Okay, yeah, this fucker going out there acting the fool like that, pissing away. And it's not even that you're. It's one thing if you're going out there and you go bankrupt. Okay, mm. it's you go bankrupt on consigned pieces. It's like that is just the most ridiculously just so Anthony. An John Anthony is in a way unique. He has found uh, he has found a, a very unique way to pull on people's heartstrings, and that's how he was able to get good with Roman. How he was able to good get good with a lot of other people. He was doing so much wrong, but because he was able to, like you know, like he he has a crazy rap sheet. You know, DUIs. He's been in jail many times. <laughs> But but because he was able to come out and say like yes I did these things, right like that that's such a powerful thing to say like yes I I did these things, but now I'm trying to change myself. You know, no okay. one wants to say no to that guy. They lay, you're gonna look like a monster if you try to get in the way of this guy. You know, it's he's very Wait, smart. Something real quick, a gentleman here, America fifty nine eighty. Nine dollars and ninety nine cents to have me answer this question. I'm going to answer it for him. Okay, if you had to make a rough estimate, what percent of watches on Forty Seventh Street are either fake or have fake parts? It's a lot less than you would think. To be perfectly honest with you, I got no dog in this fight. Okay, I say I run my own business, but you know what? Most of the watches on Forty Seventh Street, I would say ninety eight percent are correct. Now, when you say fake or fake parts, do you mean aftermarket dials, aftermarket bezels, aftermarket diamonds on a real watch? Okay. Or mismatched. Kind mismatched. Of you gotta you see, you guys gotta understand something. The term Franken watch, okay, is really it, it's it, it's been so misrepresented by a lot of people. Okay. And I'm gonna speak yeah. my piece on it because I know this is kind of yes. important. A folk very it. important subject here. It's an important subject, a Franken watch. Let me ask a question, okay? If you send your 1980s GMT with a matte dial, a 50, uh, 16750, to Rolex, okay? And they swap out the matte dial for a new Luminova dial and a new insert when they pull the, the older insert off and a new set of hands, okay? And they send it back to you. Is that considered a Franken watch? Okay, it's really not. Okay. There's some people, although in the chat, there will there are these purists to the highest degree where they I say, wanna... no, it's not the way it was when it was originally yes. released. Yes. But here's what you got to remember. Okay. And we've done extensive research. We were doing research mm -hmm. on this shit back in 1999, 2000. So I'm going to give it to you the way we learned it. Back in the day when they were building red subs and when they were building, you know, GMT 1675s with uh, Mark 1, Mark 2, long E, fat E, this, this, that, uh, la, 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 okay? Which we all, we are the ones who <laughs> put the names on them, okay? When they were doing that, do you think the watchmaker gave a fuck which dial he pulled out of the box? Do you think if the person in, in parts put the wrong batch of dials in, do you think that watchmaker gave a fuck? He was waiting to get his Swiss francs so he can go home and eat his fucking croissant or whatever the fuck he had to eat when he got home in Switzerland. Okay? They didn't care back then. These were $200 watches. Nobody gave a fuck. That's why I've seen original watches 
from people that bought them in the army in Switzerland and stuff like that, that have Mark one case, a 68 case with a Mark three dial. And people are like, how does that happen? No, it's a Franco watch. No, it's not. The watchmaker just pulled the wrong fucking dial or vice versa, a later case with an earlier dial. Rolex didn't give a shit. Okay. And also, like, if you if you service a watch after 20, 30 years, they, they're no longer making dials for those old ones. They have new, updated, upgraded yep. versions of those yep. dials they'll put, you, put in. Like, if if there's people out there, you know, they bought a Datejust, it, the dial got a water damage. It's yep. just damaged dial. Uh, when they yep. send it in, they don't, like, most normal people, they don't care. I think, you know, John, I, I think the the it, this thinking this type of this line of thinking came from a lot of like came from us deal yeah, yeah well yeah yeah like dealers <laughs> trying to categorize the price like from what's the what's the most expensive version of a watch versus right. what's the cheapest right yeah. at the top you got unworn untouched yeah. vacuum sealed and never breathed upon examples of a watch and then at the yeah. bottom you got like oh there's some swaps that happen you know it's and there's I, just this crazy price breakdown I have said really? some of the I buy stuff that's mismatched a lot of times mm -hmm. because I'll match I'll put it all back together again right. Guys will buy shit and then they'll call me up Buckley. Do you have an insert? Do you have a dial? Do you have yeah. this? Do you have that? The thing about the Franken watch, so to speak, it's yeah. that everybody wants to use that terminology to kind of put a put a jacket or put a bow around everything that goes on you know, on 47th street or in Hong Kong or in the watch market in general, because yeah. they seem to think that they're going to find this, you know, the, the barn find. Okay. You know how rare it is that you find something that nobody's touched. I had guys, I have guys calling me up all day long and saying, mm -hmm. John, this is my grandfather's watch. And I want to send it to you. I know you're the only one who can take care of it and do the service. He's never had it serviced. He's never does. The watch comes to me. The dial's refinished. The hands are fucking green. The <laughs> third is, is from something else. I call the guy up. I was like, did anybody ever service this watch? You know, I look, I open the back up. The fucking screws have fucking tool marks on them. Uh, from, tool marks are, that's how you service a watch. Okay. Right. Go like this and with your mind unscrew the screw okay if the watch has been serviced you're gonna have tool marks on it i don't care what watchmaker you are okay and yeah. just those people okay you out there i know one of you guys yeah i want you to look at this guy at rolex <laughs> it's impossible there's fucking, fucking fingers there's no fucking finger cots on there oh no, no there isn't watchmaker who knows what the fuck he's doing does this is a model it's a model Th this is staged okay John. But if they were staging it, don't you think they would put something on his but, finger so that all? But, yeah, no, 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 no. They they want to stage it because this guy took like the crazy shower. They had him scrub his fingers. They didn't want it to look because when the, when the watchmaker has those those fingertip gloves at the top, it doesn't look aesthetically yeah. good. You know, this is all for show. You know what dry, grinds my gears also? No when people problem. watch this. They think this is how watchmaking is. Believe it or not, it's fantasy. This is not so off. Okay, the oh, way okay. do it is fucking a nightmare. Okay, yeah, gotta know. I use real tools. That guy over in Asia that you see, the guy over there, he's like, and you hear the thing going. He's using fucking Bergeon openers. This, this, and that. It's like use some fucking Rolex tools if you're working on a Rolex. Be a fucking man. Come on, use the real fucking shit. Okay, I like to have real tools. I, I've got enough of them over here. I don't use half of them, but I don't know how to use most of them anyway. But I, I, I need to, I need to come to your place and tour. Yeah. Oh, the, you want the okay? Shit. Yeah, I want I want to go down there. We can we can have some coffee. We'll you know okay. we'll we'll do a stream from within. We'll show okay. people all the different stuff. We're setting up a streaming service. I don't know if we're going to do it here or at the other office, but um, we're, Tyler already set his up. We're going to set ours up. We're going into like some other kind of. We're you know, the watch business is wonderful. Okay, and just to to piggyback on something you said about when you're dealing with younger people who mm. are in a position right now, a lot of them have spent money on college and it didn't work out for them, or they spent money on college, their parents, and they have a degree and their degree is not making them any money. And they want to figure out how to make money on their own. And yes. it's, it's one of those things where a lot of people wanted to be watch dealers over the last couple of years. And there are some people, I mean, Tyler is the exception to the rule. 
mostly because he had me in his corner. Okay. Yes. He had to do it on his own. I'm sure he could have done it, but he would, it would have taken the learning curve would have been a little longer. And you know something, he benefits me as much as I benefit him. Okay. And my son benefits both of us because he's there to document it all in a way that's unique to. He's doing what he likes. He's doing yeah. the social media. Yeah. That's his thing. I remember we used to, we used to sit up like, you know, every once in a while we'd be talking about how are we going to do, how are we going to turn this thing? Like when I was first on Instagram and when I was, you know, I would do my Facebook stuff and I always had a, a pretty loyal following. Okay. I always had guys that knew who I was. And I always would say it like this. It's like when I had 3000 followers on Instagram, okay. I had the best 3000 followers on the planet because they were the top guys anywhere. And if I posted something up there, if I, you know, if I went out there and I posted a, you know, uh, I don't know, what do I have here? Oh, here we go. If I posted a Buckley dial, okay. If I posted a blue yeah. Buckley dial for a 1601 and I put it up there within five minutes, somebody would say, Hey, how much is that dial? I'll take it. You know, now I've got all of these followers. I've got a lot of randoms comment contacting me and ask to buy this, to buy that. And that's why we started the chat group, the public chat group, the telegram group, 20 yes. bucks cancel anytime. That's why we started that because that's where we put all of our dealers and we stay out of the middle, deal with our guys, deal with other people in the group, learn how to do it for yourself. You know, you teach a man to fish, you feed him for life. You know, it's exactly. like, and that's a real, real concept that, that we, you know, I know it's the watch business and, and it's a little, you know, it's a, a lot of people don't understand it. I understand it because I've been living it for a long time, but this is the only, I mean, I always say it, I can't sing or dance. What the fuck am I going to do to make this kind of money? You know, I mean, there's really not a hell of a lot I could do. I mean, I own real estate, but a lot of it is thanks to the watch business. Yeah. And we, you know, we, we try our best to be genuine and honest with everything that we do. And a lot of people, you know, guys, don't really appreciate it sometimes they don't like the way i i know i'm not reverent when it comes to handling a watch reverent. oh you know? okay I'm like not, you're not handling not, it with, with utmost with care gloves, hand, i used to see ferrar holding a watch with with a glove and i'd be like what the fuck is this doing holy shit who's this <laughs> come say hello who is it? this is tom white who's right who's tim right wait tim right Okay, you got Eric. You didn't, he didn't know who Eric Koo was. How many people? Eric are Koo. Shout out to Eric Koo. <laughs> Come on, get down. Uh, Here he is. Hello. Oh, the creator of Watch Talk, the co-creator of Watch Talk. What's up? What's up? Where are you going? Jiu Jitsu. Jiu -jitsu? Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, very, very nice. Very nice. Is this this is the man behind the camera? The man behind the camera. That's, me. That's him. That's so James. Buckley. You guys created something really, really special there for for Mr. John Buckley. Yeah. Uh, the you know really took the watch game to the next level i i mean i'm really really um like proud of you guys no, thank thanks, you bro thank you man yeah we just opened it up to a completely new audience it's really the best way to explain it yeah. open up mm. to all new all yeah. walks of life. The new generation it's the new generation yeah you know, and you're, you're kind of teaching them how to you know, a life skill that, that can, you know, it looks silly. A lot of people will criticize, yeah. oh, it's just flipping watches. But it's a life skill yeah. that, you know, can can pay for, you know, to survive in this world. So you guys are doing really fantastic job. More to come. More to come. See you Be careful. It's more than if you can, how can I say it? You can eliminate the watches from the lessons. Okay, yes. that, that, you know, the life lesson. You can substitute anything. You can substitute anything in there. You've got to have something that you actually like. Okay, yeah. if I didn't, like, he's not a big watch guy. He doesn't like watches like that. But he understands that you've got to have, you've got to do it at a certain level in order to be really successful. So he's yeah. grown up around it. It's a, very easy for him. Tyler is a lot newer at this. Okay, so he doesn't claim to be this, no this, this bastion of knowledge, you know? Yeah. He claims that, you know what? I know how to buy and sell watches. I know how to, you know, I know how to do my thing. People like me. I like them. I'm going out there and I'm going to make fucking money. Okay. And in the process, you know, he asks the right questions. He'll send me pictures. He'll be like, John, what is this? Is this good? Is this bad? Is this right? Should I pay this? Should I pay that? Mm. He's way more aggressive. He, he takes after me. He's like, let's go gung ho. All right, fuck it. I'm buying it. I don't care. And I'm like, why are you buying this? What is wrong with you? And then I look back and it's like, I do the same fucking thing. 
You know, it's like he sees me doing the same thing all the time. And it's like, all right, you know, it's not the worst thing. He's not going to go broke, yeah. you know, doing that. He's going to learn lessons. And it, it, it's such a privilege to be, you know, working with them because number one, we're making money. Yep. Number two, I mean, well, maybe number two is making money. Number one is we get to hang out all of it. I get to yeah. hang out. My twenty three. So, it's a, it's a, it's like you guys doing a, a kind of a sport together. It's an activity. It, it's an act and you're including millions of people who yeah. have been following your guys's, yeah. uh, you know, escapades. Yeah, it's such a, it, it's such a blessing. You know, you look at it and you take it for granted sometimes. You know, yeah. it's. I get up in the morning and you know I do my routine like I said I'm like this I'm like clockwork no pun intended I just go like that all day long and it's like then we got it we you know we have to go you know go to the city to do business or do this do business down here or if I'm going to look, examine a watch or something like that mm -hmm. I've got my son with me or I've got Tyler with me you know it's like I sit there and I say to myself God man I'm so fucking lucky you know I'm such a yeah. fucking guy. You know, it's like, it's not about all of these, you know, I mean, the trappings, you know, the nice trappings are wonderful. I have all of them. Okay. It's great. It's terrific. Okay. But the real important shit is like having people you trust with you in business, you know, yeah. and we have two or three different businesses that we're running based on all of this stuff. And it's a challenge, you know, it's a challenge yeah. to stay on top of it because my son's going to jujitsu. Tyler's off with his girlfriend. Who's left <laughs> talking to the attorneys today? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but that's my role. You know, I'm, I'm I'm driving the bus right now. At some point, I'm going to step off and let, you know, and let them go for it on their own. You know, I don't know when that's going to be, but mm. I still feel that, you know, I have stuff to contribute and, you know, I'm still needed. You know, we still have our, you know, our business meetings couple of times a week you know we kick out new ideas we had one yesterday sure. we were driving into manhattan and we were deciding on you know what's the next step here you know we're doing these trade shows now and those trade shows have you have to be able to scale them you know and if yes. you can't scale them you're just going to be you know spinning your wheels i mean it's good for the brand we're building a brand okay yes. the brand is the most important thing and like i said to tyler the other day I said to him, you know, we ran with a lot of the 47th Street stuff for the better part of a year, okay? And it's done really well for us. Now we've got to start, you know, getting into some different things. You know, we've got to really expand the brand. You built and up a following. Now it's time to take this following on, on the journey. Yeah, and we've got, we've got some really good ideas. We're, we're going to be launching some new things in the next two months, and 2024, hopefully, is going to be, you know, it's going to be a really good year. 2023 was a good year. You know, 2022 was a good year for us. We started off. And it's, you know, it's a wonderful thing. You know, do you have children? I don't. Not yet. Not yet. You're young. You know, I didn't have I didn't have my son until I was 34. So, huh. you know, it, it's like you have to be ready for it. You yeah. know, they both have girlfriends. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you're not ready for it yet. Tyler, I'm Mark. married. She, the, my, my wife, she keeps interrupting me. You know, I'm trying my, to do a, the <laughs> text me, John, I'm eating. I'm like, all right, what do you want me to do? I'm not going to get off the, the thing right now. We're just getting warmed yeah. up. Over. You know, it's like we, we do, you know, we, we try to get as much in every day as we possibly can when we have children. But yeah. when you don't have children yet, you have to wait until that right time. The boys have girlfriends. Yeah. They're young. They're 23. James is 23. Tyler is 23. They're a couple of months apart. And what I say to them is don't do anything that's going to hold you back for the next five or six years. You've got to see a lot of they're people. They're still younger. They're still on the younger side. They're still, they still got plenty of time. They have, they have a, a workings of a foundation here that yeah. can secure them for life. This is what they've got. They got an opportunity here. They, they have to understand, and my son gets it a little more than Tyler. Tyler is starting to get it a little more now, okay? Mm -hmm. It's like your 20s are not the time to go out and go wild. I went wild right. in my That's why I'm still working in my 60s, okay? Well, in my 50s. You've got to build that foundation early on and take no chances, 
Okay. You've got to build it up so that by the time you're 28, 29, 30, you want to settle down. You already have, you know, real estate. You already have a business that's, that's doing well. You already have yeah. all of those, you know, material trappings that everybody else aspires to as they're going through life. You have the benefit right now of being at, you know, at, uh, riding this wave. And I'm very, I'm old. OK, they're young, so they don't really see it the way I do. And I always say it to them. It's like, listen, man, this thing could end any time. OK, this thing could stop in a minute. OK, and what are you guys going to do? Tyler, you're going to sling watches. James, you're going to be doing authentication and stuff like that. I mean, you have a business that you're running right now that everybody wants a piece of you. And we're selling yeah. it off, you know, very slowly. Yeah. No, not the business, but, you know, we do sponsorships very, very subtly. We do certain things. You'd never know we were doing it. Okay, yeah. not compromise the brand because when we sell the brand, the brand is going to, you know, secure yeah. our children, you know, my grandchildren, hopefully. And, you know, uh, that takes a lot of pressure off me. You know, it's, and like, it's really I, dangerous I, because you, you, you have to do it the right way because you only get literally with the brand online. You only get one chance at this. One chance. We can see and Anthony that he's done. His social media has been tarnished for life. He will never be able to do anything what? involving this stuff. And and I was saying this, I was talking to Carl Cohen today and we were talking and it was like, I said, I was like, you know, for as much as that guy acted the fool, okay? Yeah. He had something that people gravitated towards. It was a lot, I mean, he was spending someone else's money, okay? Yeah. But there was something, I know a lot of guys that spend a lot of money. OK, that people don't gravitate towards in that way. OK, mm. it's yes. like and I don't know what it was. OK, it didn't work for me, but I saw it work for a lot of people. And a lot of people sent yes. watches based on that. And that was their big mistake. You know, you 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 have to go with the steak and not the sizzle and yeah. keep the sizzle going. But the sizzle was all fake. You know, it was yeah. some sizzle. So you can't really give him that credit, but you can't really take it away from him. In so far as the man, you know, the scumbag was, you know, he was able to, you know, it, he was cunning in, in such a way, in a, in a devious way to, to steal money from people. And, you know, the whole thing with this whole case that's going to come up against him and it's going to come sooner or later is going sure, yeah. to be intent. And when you talk about intent, the only thing that they're going to, re I don't know what the investigation is going to look like. Cause I know there are more people that are, that are participating in it. I know there's a lot of people participating right now. The number yes. one thing is going to be that sea dweller that he gave to Bob as, you know, sort of a token just to shut him up and Bob didn't take the bait. And that's going to, I hope that that's going to be the one thing that puts him away because that's going to show intent to defraud. Yeah. And if you have intent to defraud, it's another ball game. It's a whole other ball game. All the rest of the stuff, who knows? I don't know if anybody's ever going to get their money back because I, I was somebody was on Reddit today. Mm -hmm. And I said in one of my videos, oh, he's judgment proof. And the guy's like, well, you know, I'm an attorney. And, you know, you can't say that the guy's going to be judgment proof. It's like, okay, well, nine times out of 10, this guy's going away for a couple of years. He's going to be on the state. There's going to be some kind of IRS penalty that comes along with that. OK, if he goes federal or if he, you know, even if he goes state, there's going to be restitution. So yes. once you're done with the restitution, OK, uh, you know, what about the judgment? You know, how many people are going to be lined up for this judgment? You know, I, I had a guy, you know, screw me out of, I think, 30 grand for uh, this is like 10 years ago. Yeah. And he went back and forth through the courts and the guy was in jail. The guy got out of jail. I was getting 30 bucks every three months. Oh, uh. Two years and then it stopped and i don't know what happened either he died he went back to jail so that's what a judgment a judgment is not worth the paper is printed on okay so yes. when somebody says someone's judgment proof okay i'm not saying that he's never going to make a living i mean people are talking about well he's going to sell his story to american greed it's like well you know not for anything five million bucks that's not really american greed worthy it's more of like you know a lifetime movie type shit you know, and they're not going to pay this this motherfucker that kind of money. Five million for it. Yeah, they're not paying him five million dollars. Okay, I know. I, I understand. I I've been going back and forth with people with regard to TV shows and streaming and stuff like that. It's like they're not paying that kind of money for that kind of show. Trust me. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. 
I don't know. It's 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 just a it's a very it's a sad sad you know turn of events for the people. Not him. Fuck him. But the yeah. people that were you know hurt by him. And there are yeah. You know uh, there was a gentleman that I spoke to. And Bob posted the video. He walked out of the house with a duffel bag. Okay, with 17 watches. I have a list of the serial numbers. And the guy was like, John, I, I know you said you were going to post the serial numbers. And I was like, well, you know, do you really want me to post them? Because if I start posting these serial numbers, the uh -oh. dealers that bought them on the, you know, on the down low are going to be made aware of it. Do you really want that to happen? And these watches are around. I, pr I promise you they are. Okay, guys have it. They're going to be but marked as stolen. It's going to yeah. be whole. Oh. Oh, here we go. Here we go. America 5980. This is my biggest fan. I love it. Do I get the 999 act? Do I get that money? Uh, we can work it out. We can work it out huh? when I come to the studio. <laughs> okay, we'll have a negotiation. The okay. cash deal. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What's the number one pitfall for retail buyers when they try to go buy a piece on 47th Street? Price? Buy the dealer? Any common tricks to look out for that a savvy buyer can avoid? Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's That's a good question. That's a really good question. Legitimate. Or on 47th Street. Okay. It depends on what kind of watch you're looking for. If you're looking for a modern Rolex, I mean, if you look at the guys that we do business with, okay, guys like Yasha, guys like little Eddie, guys like Tony, guys like B, they've been on the street for 20 years. Okay. Yeah. In various capacities, various locations. Okay. Danny and Seth. Danny's been on the street 40 years. Okay. Seth's been, been around 40 years. Okay. You go to somebody that popped up on social media in the last year, okay? No offense to their hustle, okay? No offense, no hate, okay? But these cats don't know what the fuck they're looking at. How could they sell you something that you want to buy? And maybe their price is better. Maybe it's usually it's not because they're trying to get the most money out of the flex that they can. So when you buy something, you always buy the seller. You buy somebody that you know has been there, that has a rock solid reputation, and that's going to be there in a couple of years if something, you know, if you want to buy something else, or they were going to be there in six months if something goes wrong. Yes. Okay. That's what you want when you go to 47th Street. And I always say, buy the dealer and don't be afraid to overpay. In your mind, you know what's funny about people? It's like guys will jump through hoops to save 50 bucks. Okay. <laughs> but when something fucks up, it's like, they do anything to get their money back or reverse the deal. It's like yeah. it's the attorneys. I, uh, my same accountant told me this about attorneys. He was good. He was like, always, no, you know who told me this? Ike, one of the guys that I started. Ike is in his 90s. He runs a store called Blue Stove Antique. When I moved to New Jersey, he's in Little Silver, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Ike is still there. Ike's in his 90s. He's a Holocaust survivor. And Ike taught me shit early on in the business because he was the only guy I knew early on in New Jersey. I would go buy and sell with him. And yeah. I thought me, he's like, always make sure that you pay for the best attorney, the best accountant, okay, the best possible product up front. Because if you don't and shit goes wrong, you'll do anything to make it right. And you'll wind up spending more. And those words always rang true to me. You know, it's like, a lot of guys, they're, they're trying to, I, I've seen guys going, I saw guys at the show, people I know, okay, mm. trying to buy a watch, worrying about a hundred bucks. And it's like, okay, it's not the hundred bucks. It's just like, you want to, you want to feel like you're winning sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes when you feel like you're winning, you're really losing. You know, I you, more money at this stage of my life to buy you know, if I'm going to go buy a paddock, a big paddock or a big Rolex from Yasha or Little Eddie, and I do it all the time, it's like, there's guys that call me up, hey, John, I could save you five grand on that watch. Yeah, okay, but if God forbid something's not right, it goes back to paddock and the archive says, you know, the movement is this number and the movement's really this number and my customer wants to give it back to me. Are you going to be there to <laughs> return the money to me when I come back with an invoice? Oh, well, yeah. you're right, I promise you it's going to be okay. It's like, you know what? I'll deal with my guys. I'll pay the extra money. Okay. Because I know, and I feel safe with them. And if you're buying a watch always, that's why guys go to ADs. Yeah. I love if you could buy, if, if everybody can get what they wanted to get from an AD and eliminate me and I just do my vintage parts, go yeah. for it. That'd be great. That would save me a lot of trouble <laughs> running around oh. trying to like connect people with people. Also, but John, 
think like fought, like squabbling over a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars here and oh. there. You 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 when something goes wrong, you don't want to be the guy that fucked the dealer for a hundred or two hundred dollars yeah. when you go back to him. If some if you need help, well, like there's just you see some of these guys that are squabbling over a hundred dollars. If if I go in and I'm buying something off Yasha, and a lot of guys kind of don't understand like the way we operate. It's like mm-hmm. we've been with each other for f- over 15 years, okay? And they'll be like, John, you gave in too soon. Oh, you could have gotten it for less. It's like, you know what? Yeah. Sometimes he's got to win. Just like sometimes I've got to win. And we understand, yeah. like little Eddie, sometimes I've got to win. Sometimes he's got to win. And in doing that, you establish a bond that you have trust in the person you're doing business with. And I say this to people. I do business with 12 people. You know, I really, that's what I do. And it, it's such a, you know, it's such a blessing. Oh, wait a minute. Somebody, hold on. Speak uh, it's old watch lady. She's a mega collector of vintage, vintage watches. Incredible Instagram. I'm actually, I'm going to drop the link for the old watch lady Instagram. Oh, I know who she is. I know you. Oh my God. Holy cow. All right. Hey. I'm going to read the question. Good evening. Well, evening, evening. I missed the beginning, and as a non-American, can you give me a bit of background about the Diamond District and your guest, or am I just being an ignorant Brit? No ignorant people anywhere over here. We love questions. Hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, well, the Diamond District, right? That's the oh, New no. York Tell City. They want to hear about you. She wants to hear. Oh, about, about me? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, you, you know about me. I'm just, uh, I'm just, I've just been doing uh, a podcast here on no she knows me but you know I, what would i say I, i'm a watch enthusiast I thought, wait, I thought it was my show i'm sorry oh oh i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> by the way john you know that i've been doing this podcast for the past like two and a half years i'm almost at a thousandth episode that's how long i've been at it how come well. you knew it was one thousand to get me on i it was an emergency. I was. I, I just needed you. It's oh. you know. I had to strike metal when it was hot. Oh, actually, I was trying to get you way, way earlier. It's just all right. All right. Sometimes life gets in the way. You know how, how you you told us. You know it's, it's it's hard. It's really hard out there. And you know I do this show for six hours every single day. Oh, um, you- just been hustling at it you know just like you guys slinging watches i've been you know slinging watch news watch related news for super chats ten dollars here five dollars there you know uh diego five ten dollars super chat buckley what's your most memorable watch deal wow what a great question wow or a few or it doesn't have to be even good good deal it could be a terrible deal just as long as it's memorable i'm trying to think about memorable deals They've all gotten so muddied over the years. You know, I'm trying to think. But oh. for old watch lady, so John, just think yeah, for like, a second. I'm just going to tell old watch lady, the Diamond District, it's the, there is a version of Diamond District somewhere in London, but it's where. Haddon, or Haddon something or other, right? Or Bond Street, something like that out there? Yeah. So, uh, huh. Yeah. <laughs> like, they keep asking me to go. It, and I'm gonna it's go something ahead. arcade. When I go. Yeah, I actually I went through it uh, and, and toured some of the some of those dealerships over there. Very yeah. very interesting stuff. But uh, Price, Hutton right. Garden maybe. Ah, oh, prices are high. I know that Hutton Garden. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. There that's you correct. go. Thank you. Yeah, it's like a Hutton Garden, and Mister Buckley here is the the man after whom the famous Rolex Buckley dials have been made, have been named. Registered trademark. You're the only person who's like a non-crazy celebrity that got something in the watch industry named after you. Not a celebrity? What am I doing? Well, I mean, you're a ce- like celebrity's on here. Come on. You're man. a celebrity. You're a celebrity in your you're a celebrity in the wristwatch world. Oh, right? But you're that? so humble. You're like, you're you're one of us. You're not fucking, you know, you're not like one what of those man? people who are unreachable. You know something? I put my pants on, my sweatpants on one at a time, my legs. Okay, so we we have some stuff in common. Don't you worry. The, Buc- <laughs> the story of the Buckley dial, it's all over Google. All you have to do is Google it. And I- you, you actually, you, uh, you explained it in your interview with Marco where, uh, I mean, I think some people wanted it to be uh, called John Mayer. 
And I think you said, yeah. like, well, what the fuck? I mean, come on. Like, you're just, you guys are doing all the groundwork, fucking yeah. chiseling away. And these guys who are just doing music here and there come in and there's just the shit's going to be named after them. What the fuck? Movie stars and stuff. We're over here slinging dials. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you need a dial from. Listen, I always say this whenever I mention him, okay? Out of all of these celebrity, uh, I hate to even put him in that category mm. as like a celebrity watch guy, okay? He does know what he's talking about when it comes to watches. True. He yeah. really, he is not, he's not one of these guys who fakes the funk. Like Kevin mm. O'Leary, I think is full of shit. Oh, yeah. I don't think he is credible as a watch aficionado. I was offended when they gave him that AP. They should have given him Eric Koo who's a real AP collector and a real aficionado. Okay. But you know, I don't know. Marketing. I think I have more followers than him, but then again, who knows? But I mean, nothing against the guy. Okay. But he, I got he, a lot against the guy. Eh, he's always kind of, you know, trying to like proclaim his expertise in an area. And then the area goes bust. It's like, yeah. NFTs. It went bust. Then he was doing FTA bust. Now Bitcoin. he wants to go. Oh boy, here we go. The market's about to crash. And then he'll be on to something else. It's like one thing about John, John really got into this stuff and really studied it. I mean, he, he was he was smart and he hung out. He was very friendly with Eric and those guys. You know, they were all, you know, out <laughs> traveling in the same circles, Bob. And, and, you know, he learned about all of this stuff. And you know what? I mean, you, you got to give him respect for that. You got to put respect on his name. I still won't call the Green Daytona a Mayor Daytona. OK, I will not do that because it's a Green Daytona. Right. Because there's only a certain amount of tribute dials available. I've got one of them. Me, Paul Newman, Osvaldo Patrizzi, and Steve McQueen. That's it. When one of when I drop dead, they can call it the mayor dial. And I'm a lot older than him, so it'll happen to me before that. He'll get his time. It's like when the king dies, then the prince comes in. Yeah. I actually, I think... Uh... I don't know where I come up with this shit. <laughs> no, this is good. I mean, no, no, this is good stuff. I mean, this happens in history all the time. You know, uh, 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 mountains will be named after someone, right? Someone who's just like just took the name because he was he was the celebrity, and then they actually rename it back to you know the people who were, you know were there and cared for it. So, you know I, I, really I like I, I really I believe like people who put put in the work, they should have stuff named after them okay you know what really bothers the shit out of me mm. okay you're a brooklyn guy okay yes. from okay they changed the name of the battery tunnel to like some the you carry tunnel that's fucked yeah. up that's just fucked well, up why did they do that i, I don't know because they're all fucked up okay i gotta answer this question here easy e yo easy all right easy the brother name easy all right john do you know Andres Newman, Andy's Jewelers on 47th Street? No, I do not. Good source of luxury watches. Thanks for coming, tipster. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. Maybe Tyler yeah. knows him. He's Andy more right on the street than I am. But, you know, there's um, a lot There's a lot of guys, you know, that, that are on the higher floors. It's Upstairs. A lot of guys upstairs that, that do a lot of business. Oh, man. Yeah. We're crazy. We're almost on two hours. Look at this. Yeah. Hey, by the way, you wanna you wanna go to two hours and because I wanna go, I wanna give you like an out. Like right now we're at one hour forty three minutes. Go ahead. Two yeah, hours. Let's go. We'll go to two hours. We'll go to two hours. Then I'm gonna let you go, and then we'll let a few people, you know, like kind of the regulars on. Yeah, and we'll, yeah. oh, actually, you know what? Let's let's get some people from you know uh, who are fa who are helping me run the show on the normal days. Let's get let's get some people on. Maybe they'll ask you questions in person. Absolutely. Let's get OC. He's been quiet in the back room. OC, do you have What's a up, burning John? question that you you need an answer to right I do. now? I, right now. I do. I do. I have, I have rapid fire rapid fire questions for John, and I'm going to ask you to keep them brief because the audience really wants to know. You you were talking a little bit about Franken watches and how there's a very strict definition of Franken watches. If you replace the crystal, is it really Franken? Or do you, if you swap out the dial, is it Franken? I think Rolex has done a good job convincing people that there's a very strict definition of authentic. 10% of the watches that Bucherer sends in for service for CPO and that WatchFinder sent in, 10% have been rejected by Rolex as not authentic. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this question. How long has this been going on? Or it's just that we know about it more now because of social media. I mean, Bob Barron is famously known for being sued by John Mayer. Mm -hmm. um, we have the situation with... Uh, What's the guy from Adam Adam Levine? 
who you know had a they're calling it a fake bezel insert in his Daytona. So there's so many cases now. Philip the Phillips auction with the fake Omegas and the fake watches coming out. What is, is it just more transparent now? What's happening with all of these uh, swapped parts and Franken parts, or has it, or has this been going on for decades? It's been going on for decades. Okay, parts are parts. Okay. And the trick to putting together a, to doing, if you understand the classic car business, which I really don't, I'm not a car guy, but you have to have period correct parts that go onto a watch to make it this vintage masterpiece. Okay. And I've bought, you know, lots of watches that would need a specific insert, that would need a specific second hand, that would need, you know, a, a very specific dial. And, you know, if I have the part and I put it into the watch and it's all period correct, I just up the value of that watch. Do you tell people, do you tell people that has swapped parts though? Because I think it's one, that's the biggest issue for people I mean, going to 47th Street or any secondary dealers well, that there's a lack of transparency. They don't know, they don't know that the dealer with whom they're working is going to tell them, oh, by the way, this isn't, not only is this not, uh, a, not only is this a swapped dial, this could be a fake Hulk dial in this well, watch and no one's telling them. Here's what you have to ask yourself, okay? What kind of watch are you going there to buy? If you're going there to buy a vintage watch that's going to be one of these quote-unquote barn find-like watches, okay, that all of these vintage guys, you know, gravitate towards because it sounds real pretty, okay? Most of the time, those watches have gone through, you know, many different hands and have been put together with very, very specific authentic parts, Okay, and then the person that gets it puts it online. He's like, hey, look at this. I got this barn find from Yahoo, blah, blah, blah. Okay, who's to know? Okay, but if somebody comes to me and they bring me a GMT, okay, that's a 1960s GMT, and it has a 1970s dial in it, but everything else is correct, okay, and I have a 1960s dial, and I put that dial in there, and it's all perfectly, you know, the way it's supposed to be, okay, what does it mean? You know, do you tell the person, well, you know, this came to me with a, you know, crappy dial. I have no problem doing that because my job is to restore and make as it was when it was sold or as close to it as possible. Or would you rather buy the dial with the wrong dial and go search for the fucking dial yourself? You know, <laughs> I mean, you're going to buy it from me one way or another. OK, yeah. or someone like me. OK, exactly. I, think, I, I just think the, the issue is that once you start, there's a slippery slope. But and once I, it passes, once it passes from dealer to dealer to dealer to dealer, it gets lost in translation and, and the transparency gets basically I, I eroded. Think, I think what, what, what often I, happens is that the, like uh, is, like John, you you would have like two watches that have mismatched stuff and then you'll mm -hmm. match, you know, because like it didn't came from factory all mismatched. No, but. <laughs> But you, because, you know, it came as mismatched because maybe, you know, it was sent to service or, or like some local guy was servicing. And then when he was putting stuff together, he mixed it up. I mean, stuff gets mixed up over the years. You know how many watches we get, okay, that we'll get a red sub, okay? We'll get a 1972, 1680 that has aluminum over service style in hands and aluminum over insert. And the guy calls me up. He's like, John, I sent my red sub into Rolex. This is what they gave me back. I need the right dial. Okay, I need the right insert. Wow. I need the right hands. And I'm like, okay, here you go. And I put that in there. Is that considered a Franken watch? I don't think so. I think that's considered doing restoration. Now, what you're talking about, OC, is when somebody gets, you know, uh, a regular ceramic GMT and puts, you know, an aftermarket or a Batman bezel on it and the reference number doesn't match up. That's exactly. a Franken. Right. Okay? Absolutely, 100%. And I have no zero tolerance for that kind of stuff. But zero you, tolerant, zero tolerance for aftermarket bezels. Oh, definitely. 100%. Aftermarket bracelets. Aftermarket anything. Aftermarket yeah. dial. Okay, aftermarket anything. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I I think like John is like is one of those guys that you know he has reputation and he's what he's been doing is trying to make stuff more correct, not less correct That's in the in the gray market. I but get it. But the problem he, is guys don't know the difference. Okay, you yes. get all these specialists experts that have been doing it for a few years they don't know the fucking difference between some of the aftermarket yeah. shit that's coming out of hong kong okay yes. real deal shit okay i mean that's there's the there's people out there who who would bu who are buying stuff like this let's say a black uh black submariner now if you just put uh, a green dial in there and the green bezel it 
maybe in, maybe it, not even an authentic one. You just up the value of this watch, but that becomes like a Franken watch. It's to not an, a real to thing. an purchaser, yes. That would know. yeah, exactly. That would never fly. Part in there, okay. You put one of those aftermarket green bezels, which oh, listen, I'm funny. OK, I will not allow any of that shit in my groups. I will not allow colored bezels that are not authentic. I will not allow, you know, refinished dials. It happens. OK, if right. they're refinished. OK, but I do not allow any of that stuff so that people can start doing mod modifications on their watch. A lot of forums do. OK, and that's yeah. their business. I will not allow that. This okay. is one of the things I've been discuss that I've been going back and forth with Moda on, right? You know, v Vadim is like, listen, as long as you label it as AM, which nobody knows what AM is, right? Because you've got 70,000 people in that group. There's not 70,000 legitimate dealers in Moda, right? Yeah. These are backpack flippers, amateur collectors, et cetera. You know, they're, they're labeling, it as, labeling it as custom, as AM, and it's yeah. bullshit. This is, this is counterfeit garbage. Totally agree with you. But you know what? Yeah. That's the group that he runs. And that's how he earns his living. Let's and, say, it, and also, like, but John, and, like, if he didn't allow those things, then there's somebody would create a group where they yeah. would only do that's that. Not, that's not an excuse. That's not an excuse, well, though, yeah, right? To just, say, I mean, to say that somebody else will do it. We heard, we heard, we heard that. You know, we hear that time and time yeah. again. For example, uh, with with consignment, the dealers are now listen. Well, if I don't take the guy's watch and, and consign it for twenty thousand dollars, when I know it, it won't even sell for seventeen five. He's just going to go to another dealer, and that dealer will accept it. So I have to take it. That's right. fucking bullshit, right? Right. I agree with you. But the problem with consignment is if somebody takes that watch at 17.5 and they give the guy a consignment deal, which is a 90-day consignment, they take that $17,500 watch, and they'll sell it for fifteen grand. take that fifteen grand, and turn it over a few more times. That's exactly. bullshit. That's some real dirty shit. And no, but that's, 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 cash flow, that's cash flow management. That's, that's how that, – that's how that's – how, uh, uh, cash flow velocity is all of, is about how is how you run your business. Slippery I mean, slope. This is how people get into a lot of trouble because you you do that once, you start relying on that, and then start utilizing it more and more. Then the next thing you know, you don't even know if you're even making money or you're losing money all the time. It's, let me you ask you a question because uh, go ahead, uh, John. Sorry. No, what what people don't understand is they're buying, they're basing you know the watch that they buy today on the market conditions that occurred over the last six months. So they look at the last six months, and I'm going back six months. They say, wow, everything's jumped up 5%. I'm going to buy this watch today. I'm going to bank on making another 5 to 10% in another year. And then when it doesn't happen, they're buried in the watch. So what do they do? You know, that's the problem, especially if they take a consignment piece and they agree to a certain consignment price. Okay, a lot of guys will say, hey, I'm going to give you that money one way or another. And that's a real scary business to be in. And a lot of guys do it. You'd be surprised how many people actually do that. They'll take a $10,000 watch that, you know, maybe on Chrono 24. I'm not a Chrono 24 guy, but, you know, maybe it's selling for 13 grand. They'll tell the guy, listen, I'll give you 13 grand in 90 days, guaranteed. And they'll take that watch, sell it for nine grand and just use it to turn money. And sometimes they win. It's like gambling. Sometimes. Yeah. sometimes gambling. Yeah. Go ahead. It, it becomes it, it becomes a gamble. By the way, no, there just, uh, uh, Dear Artifact has a question. Was there ever a watch you sold that you wish you kept for yourself? That's for you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know That's a tough question. It is. A t I've sold so many like crazy watches over the years. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, I've bought and sold some of the craziest watches, vintage watches, you know, 10 years ago. Now that you look at them, it's like, oh my God. Blah, blah. I mean, I bought one time, I bought a Tudor Big Crown that needed a dial. Here's a story. Here's a Franken, uh, Franken Here we watch. go. Okay. It was a Tudor Big Crown. It had the right insert, had the right bezel. The dial was no good. I spent two and a half years searching for the dial. Finally found the dial. And I popped the dial in there. Somebody made me a ridiculous offer on it, and I sold it. I always, because you never see them in the condition that I bought it in. Um, yeah. I had a bunch of, I had a Tudor Monte Carlo that was new old stock, a two register gray with a blue um, bezel, a blue, the Bakelite one, not the rotating bezel. Wow. That, oh, my God. It was new old stock in the box. I never bought, I never touched it. I bought it mm. for like nine grand. I think I flipped it for 12. I thought I was hitting a home run, which I was. 
but it's like you know if you're a deal i'm a dealer's dealer i don't get caught up in that i keep certain watches for myself that i like now i never collected watches now i probably got like five or six that i really like gotcha. that i'll never, not never sell but i bought that hans wilsdorf watch did you see that shit yeah did do you consider yourself an, a watch enthusiast that that became a dealer or a watch dealer first that's also an enthusiast Hmm. That's a good question. Hmm. I think beginning, I was really an enthusiast. I really enjoyed it. I really, you know, I, I lived it. And as time went on and I started making, you know, the money started coming into play, the real money and yeah. learning about it and being an expert. It's like you, you kind of put that aside and you focus on other stuff. You know, you focus on finding the next deal. It's always the chase. You know, you find something and now it's not even a chase. It's like, I just sit back and people bring me stuff. You know, I'll get a phone yeah. call, uh, an old watchmaker two months ago, guy calls me up. He's like, come on up. You know, I had to go up in freaking the mountains into this guy's basement. And I, I, here, this table over here, I bought this table off and I still haven't gone through it. You know, it's like, I, I, I buy stuff like that. And that's the kind of stuff that, you know, it's like, I, I live for that shit. I just love it because mm. I still haven't even really looked at everything. I mean, there's some cool stuff in yeah. there that I looked at when I saw it, when I made him the offer. But you know what? Yeah. I, I, I enjoy that stuff. You know, I enjoy that kind of chase. I like when stuff finds me, you know? It's like, yeah. I, I don't know. It, it's, it's fun. You know, I still so think I... I I do These deals, John, I think, you know, losing a, a lot of people like think, oh, well, you know, you probably, you know, you, you, you may, you sold so many watches that you could probably have made so much money on right now. But, you know, I you can't just four years ago, I made money on them. Not this. I mean, yeah. relative, you know? Yeah. You make, but you it, can't keep all of those wins for yourself. Oh. You have to let other people, this is how you become a great great person you know by that? by sharing the joy you, you know you get you, if you're just a winner if you if think about it how that would look that would be so suspicious right imagine all the deals somehow work out for you and then other people don't get anything why would anybody go to you i know, <laughs> you know? people don't want to go to me sometimes anyway because they think a lot of people don't want to sell for sell to me because they think that you know a lot no it's the opposite people don't want mm. to buy from me like if I go to a show and dealers are coming around, it's usually a dealer to dealer show. And they'd be like, okay, if Buckley's selling it. What the hell is he selling it for? Why is he selling it? You know, he must know that the market's down. He must know that this watch is not that, that popular right now. Mm. Like, uh, you know, what do I know? I don't know anything. What, what the hell do I know? <laughs> and then selling to you, it's, it's also dangerous because they don't want you to make like some crazy money on it. You know, they're going to regret, it's going to be a regret of their life. You know what? I, I say it like this. If it's dealer to dealer. Okay. Yeah. All bets are off. Okay. If you're a dealer and you come to me as a dealer and you show me something and I spot it and my mm. 20 years of experience tells me that there's something really valuable in it, you tell me a price, I'll say yes or no. Okay. When it's a private, it's different. Okay. Like, it's different. Yeah, John, you I, brought up, you, you, sorry to go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Like if it's a private, if somebody, like I get calls all the yeah. time. There's a person that sent me a picture. They're, they're in Australia. They've got an absolutely drop dead 5508 that was it, like their family's watch and it has the red triangle insert and a four line dial and i mean just a, a, a an immaculate a, just a wonderful example and i said to the woman i said look if you come to this country it's an expensive watch okay i'm gonna have to see it in person but i'm telling you it's a really it's gonna be you know I don't know, 50 grand, something like that. I'm just going to throw a number out. She was like, oh my God, I, I had no idea that it was this. I was like, listen, if you don't have to sell it, I, I tell more people to keep shit than I yeah. tell the private person to sell it to me. Sometimes they sell it, I try to give them a fair price, but I also have to stock it. So I have to think about it. If it's parts, you know, it, it, if it's a modern watch, I have to stock it. I don't care. It's, you know, it's liquid. But parts and stuff like that, you got to be very careful because things go in and out of vogue. So mm. it's, you know, you try to be fair with people, you know, you bring up a good point. And I think the, the issue of de dealer to dealer versus dealer to private communications is so in topic these days because of what happened with Stefano Della Costa and with uh, Anthony Ferrer. These guys, because what the dealers did is they covered for each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I know, you know, Roman very well, but people like Roman, when he was asked about 
certain dealers that were crooked, he would tell the other dealers, hey, don't work with them. That guy owes me a lot of money or that guy's bad. But no one would ever tell the end user customers. The end users were kept in the dark. And that's what do you think about this, this dealer code that you always cover for the dealers and the privates get fucked in the end? You know something? I deal with very, the dealers have different territory and it's not geographic territory. It's just, there are a lot of dealers that deal with each other. I deal with very, very few guys that are very public like that. And when you're dealing with dealers who primarily deal with other dealers, you don't have that kind of problem with, you know, getting involved like that person that you spoke of i learned about that like two months ago i had never heard of the guy's name that's just in time or something like that yeah, yeah that's yeah, the yeah, wizard the time. wizard yeah the wizard he tried to he, he scammed a bunch of people a half a yeah. million dollars uh, yeah I didn't know that and i never when somebody told me about that i was like i don't know who this guy is and i run it through my guys and we're like okay i never heard about that we got to do a little digging and then we did a little digging and we found out you know how you know what it is. You, you have to realize that the dealer code, while it may be you know for some, okay, it may be the way they do business. It, it's it's not right when bad shit happens. You yeah. know, most of the time bad shit. You know, it, it's it's. Well, Fe Fe Federico said last week in an interview that this happens all the time. Roman did a video that he actually deleted where he said, not only does this happen every week, but a friend of his jumped off of a roof. Uh, because of these uh, de deals Happy. going bad. Listen, this is happening way too often and, and it's kept in the dark and good, I mean, enthusiasts like Tim's audience and uh, and everybody else's audience in the space, the watch community, these people are getting hosed out of millions and millions of dollars yeah. and these guys are just disappearing. And it's not right. Again, yeah, no, not right. But again, okay, you've got to look at some of these people and how long they've been in business, okay? Mm -hmm. Who it is that they're dealing with and who it is that's vouching for them. Okay, you got to do your due, due diligence. Okay, I, I preach this. Okay, because like I said, I run a group with new guys primarily, and they run things based on reference checks. And I tell them we do something called a layered reference check. Okay, mm -hmm. you've got somebody in the group, it's like, okay, you tag them over here and let's see if anybody's going to vouch for them. And it's a small group, uh -huh. 2,000, 2,500 people. Okay, somebody will vouch for that person. Okay. Then I tell them, you know what? You go online and you check in Moda, you check in some of those other forums and you start asking around and starting to see who it is that's ever done business with this person. Now, will that work all the time? No, but okay, when you're doing business with somebody, there are no guarantees, okay? You wanna be able to guarantee somebody. If you're doing business with me, I promise you, I'm gonna give you a fair shake, okay? How do you know that I'm gonna do that? You actually don't, okay? Nobody does, you know? and I'm going to answer your question like this because I'm not I'm not going to beat around the bush. It's fucked up. It's fucked okay. up. But he says, you know, oh, no, I I did business with them and I never had a problem. That's pretty fucked up. Okay. And, and so, isn't, it, is, isn't that isn't that vouching isn't that vouching process flawed when you have the 800 pound gorilla in the in the space? Hold on a second. 800 pound gorilla in the space who's who you check with because he's the the most important guy in the space, and mm -hmm. he says, I've done plenty of deals with him. I've never had a problem. Meanwhile, he knows the guy's crooked. He it's knows that he knows that Stefano owed Federico money, and he paid Federico's debt off for him to buy him off to keep him to keep him quiet. Meanwhile, end user customers are getting fucked left and right, and other dealers who aren't in his inner circle are also getting fucked. But you go to you go to the top guy because he's the one who's supposed to give you a good vouch, but he always gets paid back first well, the because he's giving the problem, vouches. The fundamental <laughs> problem with what you said is going to the top guy. He's not the top guy. Yeah. That's the problem. Okay. And if you're going to go based on social media presence again, okay. And you know, hype again, it's like, you got to be really careful. Okay. And I have no beef with these guys. I know, you know, here, John, I think, I think what the problem, what, where the problem became here is that f for some reason, you know, a lot of people, it, it, the, the social media skews, trust like uh, it, it's it's very difficult trust excuse judgment 
Yeah, excuse judgment. You don't know. I mean, uh, Anthony seemed to be like the most uh, trustworthy guy to a lot of people, and uh, and Roman seems to be like the, the way his his presence is on online is you know he makes himself out to look like the boss of the gray market, and a lot of people just kind of. He doesn't say that. I know Roman doesn't say that, but it's no. just there's people. Well, he called it. He called his show "Gray Market." Yeah, because well, he wanted yeah. to position himself as the most important. Celebrity but I don't think. In the gray I, I think we're giving too too much trust to Roman. Like nobody should be relying on Roman for any of this shit. What the? Well, he's not a fucking uh, the but, judge but, of the gray but, market. I mean, you're talking about people making decisions based on optics. Yes. Okay. And when you make decisions based on optics, it's hit or miss, guys. Okay, here, you want to make a decision based on optics? Here's my, you know, my $20 sweater. You know, maybe <laughs> look at Buckley and say, oh, man, you know, Buckley's, you know, Buckley's over there wearing Primark sweater or something like that. You know, Why is, he, in, why is he inside a TV dinner? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, fine. But, you know, there's an old, there's an old, there's this old, like, little story. You know, there were two barbers in the town, okay? One of the barbers had you know a beautiful fancy shop and everything was spit and polished and his hair was neat and clean and he was clean shaven and the other barber in town there was hair on the floor the guy was running around trying to do things like which one do you go to you know me personally i like the guy that's doing business okay i like the guy that's got hair on the ground because it tells me that if there are only two barbers in town the guy that looks really good went to that guy so it's like you've got to you've got to use your critical thinking skills and the social yeah. media aspect of selling watches it was around years ago we've had guys go bad for years you know this happens in this business okay this isn't this isn't a playground okay this is big money dealing with fucking sharks okay okay i swim with sharks every day and you know what i'm used to it you get some poor soul that goes in there and wants to buy a rainbow daytona and they find out that one of the baguettes was changed out at some point okay by somebody other than rolex you got a problem, okay? Serious problem, yeah. Up front about it to your customer, okay? And you're not going to be out up front about it with the dealer that you're selling it to. That's where the problem lies. It all lies in, in people's ability to be honest, okay? Yeah. And able to be accountable. Now, I, I can't speak for Roman, okay? I really can't. I've known him for 20 years. If I told you that I did $2,000 worth of business in the last 20 years with him, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely pushing the, pushing it. Okay, never really did business, but I know him very well, and I know him to be a very good businessman. Roman's biggest issue is that he wants the spotlight. You know, he wants to be the Gumel of A's. He wants to be the guy. And yeah. you know what? It works, and sometimes it doesn't work. When you're it, in the middle of all of these dealers, okay, yeah. who, you know, can go bad at any time. Any dealer can go bad, okay? I yeah. can go bad tomorrow. Yasha, Little Eddie, Roman, any of us can go bad. We're one, you know— one bad quarter away, okay, in in real terms, okay, from really having problems, okay? Most people are, all right? Maybe we're not as bad off as that, but when you get a lot of dealers that pop up out of nowhere like Farrar and like this guy, uh, Stefano, okay, where was he 10 years ago? I never heard of the guy. If I never heard of the guy, it's like, where the fuck was he? And who, who in their right mind is yeah. giving millions of dollars? Oh, he, 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 paid, he, he paid $250 to Mondani to become a trusted dealer. And then he kept dropping Roman's name wherever he went. He's and very, he, uh, very clever. Very clever guy. Very manipulative. He asked me to help him with his social. I set up a YouTube account for, for him. I created graphics. He gave me a PlayStation uh, for, for the work. I've got more Mondani books with my ads. <laughs> OK, out in my garage. OK, I, I know Georgia. I was at her wedding. OK, I know these people. Okay? To be honest, his books Georgia. aren't very good, are they? Okay. They're not very <laughs> fucking terrible. But visual, visually impressive, though, the, like something great. to look at. It's beautiful. I did it. I did it with her for years. I bought books off them. And then they asked me to pay for a chat group. And I was like, I'm not paying for a fucking chat group. I have my own chat groups. You know, I pay for I pay for Bob's chat group. I pay for watch flippers, you know, and people pay me for chat groups. That's how the business works. But what you're saying right now, OK, is really, you know, to pay a fee to become a trusted dealer. It's not cool, but it sounds like Georgia. OK, I mean, she is a publisher. Her father, Guido, is the main guy. 
and Guido is a watch watch guy, an old school watch guy, a very, very knowledgeable guy and a good guy. Okay. And Georgia and, and her husband, Daniel, Daniel's a dentist. Okay. And wow. George, yeah. I mean, listen, I know these people. I was at yeah. their wedding. Okay. I'm not capping over here. I'm telling the truth. George's mission in life before all of this was to sell books. And I bought a lot of books off her and I did it more or less for politics as a favor. Know? Right. But, but you know, I, this is before internet. I think what, what she's done with these Mondani books, I mean, they created a lot of groundwork for other watch books that came out afterwards. And they gave a lot of basic knowledge to a lot of people who otherwise wouldn't be interested in it. You know, not everybody likes to nerd out on like numbers. You know how many of these books I bought? I bought hundreds of them. You know how many I've actually opened other than the page where I <laughs> This with a Buckley dial, like two. two. I got one. I got one. I've never yeah. opened, by the way. Hey, from the I, wizard. I have one on my coffee table because it looks cool. It's a coffee table, actually. And I have a bunch of them in my garage, and I give them out to people that I like because they're watch guys. They want to look at pictures when they're sitting on the bowl taking a shit in the morning. Okay, yeah. and that's what they're good for. But to run a chat group based on really no knowledge in this business, okay, is a dangerous thing. Let me and ask I, you about the chat. Let me ask you about the chat group uh, sure. because that that has revolutionized the way dealers oh. sell watches. Because you don't have to actually buy watches and have them in inventory when you have access to a chat group with fifty, a hundred dealers in it. And you can say, "Oh, I have a customer looking for a uh, yacht master white gold forty two on Oyster Flex with this color dial mm -hmm. or whatever." And you go into the you source it from the dealer chat at X price. You mark it up with a grand or two grand or whatever, and you sell it to the person that contacted you, you don't have to actually, I'm not saying you don't have to do anything, but how, how has that introduced more risk and more well, reliance on social media in being a well, secondary dealer? Well, filling dealer. and being a broker, that's not being a dealer. Okay. Being yeah. a dealer is you have inventory, you stock inventory and you sell inventory. Why, now, why bother with inventory? Why bother with inventory when you can just create vir virtual consignment? Where oh, you no, just no. take pictures I'm, of people's watches. I'm agreeing with you, okay? Believe me, I am agreeing with you. I think it is an absolutely, it's a dangerous game. It's basically a consignment game. That's I, 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 if you don't have the money as a deal. See, these chat groups provide certain ability to dealers to fill orders, okay? Filling orders is a big deal for a lot of guys. For me, I don't have the patience to fucking do that. Okay, I'll just send somebody yeah. to Yasha. I'll send them to Little Eddie. I'll send them to my my guys in New York. Shout out to Little Eddie, by the way. Little Eddie, yeah, he's my guy since <laughs> a kid. And you you don't get involved in the middle manning of watches. A lot of people do that. And when you're doing that kind of stuff in a chat group, it becomes very dangerous. A lot of guys do it. Okay. We try to, you know, enforce no brokering in groups, you know, we try to tell people in my group, no consignment, yeah. but you can't always be sure. Okay. You can't. I, the I think uh, the best practice would to have a healthy mix of both primarily, you know, stocking, stocking watches is important. I mean, holding inventory is important. If you're a dealer, you, you have to have physical well, things to be able to compare and check and, but think about it. Okay. I'm not going to stock a rainbow Daytona. Okay. If I get a call for a rainbow Daytona, yeah. I'm going to go to Yasha. I'm going to say, uh, you know, I'm going to say, okay, James film this. Okay. Yasha, how much is this rain? Fucking $550,000 rainbow Daytona. He's like, ah, 600,000. We're going to go back and forth for a minute. I'm going to write him a check out of my account with my money. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm going to call my guy. I'm going to say, okay, I have it. He's going to say, okay, fine. He may have already sent me the money. Maybe he didn't. Okay, but that's the difference between guys that have been doing this for 20 years and guys that are just starting out. Some guys have to make sure that the guy sent the money first. Okay, yeah. some guys have to be sure that Yasha is going to say, okay, uh, I'll give you a three day memo on this. Okay, and you can take it for three days and show it. I don't like memos, memos are not the move. Okay, Ooh, especially on no. brand new watches. You know, brand new watches get scratched up real easily. Guys take it out of the thing. You know, who knows what's hairlines. Would you say, would you say there's, there's way too much memoing going on? Uh, there's way too much. There's way too many half-baked dealers in this, in this business right now. There's not a lot of real guys. Like, look, you know, you say what you will about Roman. Okay. Roman can write his own check. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to condone 
you know, anything that you're saying, because that is the case. I know that, you know, he was doing business with people, business to business. Those were his words. And, you know, I respect that. And as a dealer, it's like, okay, I get it. But it's like, you know, if you hear that somebody's going bad and you don't say it to a private that's about to do business with them, I mean, that's kind of dirty. And I don't, I don't, I mean, if you know that for sure. We don't know. We don't know if he told anyone. He that's just funny. said like he was big, giving a hypothetical. I, we don't know I, I, if anyone actually called Roman and asked him about the wizard. But Roman was, did mention that, well, if, if people ask me, this is what I would kind of answer. Yeah. Well, Roman's covering his ass. Okay. Yeah. With all right, that's his ass to cover and that's fine. All right. But if you're dealing with these guys and you're playing the big, you know, it's called playing big watch dealer. Roman's a big watch dealer. Other guys that are in his orbit are not. He, he's the he's the big dealer. He's the big boss. Okay. He's and the, he he acts like it. And you know, when that's that's what happens. That's what happens. That the, the social media giveth and social media taketh away, where it rewards him with all these additional clients. It takes away because it attracts responsibility for like, oh, you, but back then you said that and, and social media doesn't forget. And if you uh, is it say so one thing and you, you didn't it's necessarily fun. mean it, it'll, it will remember. It will come back and it will bite you. Ah! You know, what's one of the things in chat groups that's and online in the Facebook groups and stuff like that, that you got to really, really take a good look at. It's called vouching. You were saying yeah. it earlier. OK, if I see I have maybe three or four people that I will vouch for. And when I vouch for somebody, I say I personally vouch for this person. That means John Buck, this person is bad. John Buck is going to write the check. OK, right. then there are other times when I'll say, well, I did a deal with this guy and it went OK. You know, nine times out of 10, I'm not even going to post that because I don't right. even want to have my name associated with something like right. that. I will vouch for best call. action to do I'll yeah. vouch little eddie i will vouch for yasha i will vouch for tony i will vouch i will count maybe 10 people that i will personally vouch for on any of these chat groups not my own okay in my own you know if i know that somebody's good i'll say and it's a couple of thousand dollar deal i'll say yeah i'll vouch for them because if the guy makes bad on the deal i'll throw him out i'll write the guy a check and we move on okay yeah. i make good on it if i if that's my word i make good okay but if the guy's doing 20 30 50 thousand dollars i'll be like okay well if you want somebody to get in the middle of it to make sure that it's right, we'll call somebody in your state and we'll facilitate the deal. Or I'll send you a label, ship it, send it to me, no charge on the label. I'll mediate the deal if that's the case. I don't like doing that, but I do it. If it's going to be one of those deals where you don't know whether or not either party is 100%. If they're 99%, you're still not going to do it, okay? Because you don't want to get on the hook for that kind of money. That's the problem. You know, it, it, it's, it, it's, listen, it's, it's enough, it's, enough, it's, enough, of, the, enough, of, the, enough of the serious questions. I want to ask you, I'm oh. going to throw out a few names hey, we, we have, and oh. I, just, I just want your gut reaction, short little answers, just either one or two words about each person. Oh uh, boy. Let's go. Everybody. J J get, Jacob, uh, Jacob Arabco. Who? Jacob Arabo. Jacob Arabo. Never heard of him. J Jacob and co. Jacob and co. Do you know Jacob okay. and co? You have to be so confusing. OC. Huh. Jacob um, went to jail a while ago, came back, makes these very, very cool looking watches that sell for stupid money until you go to sell them to a real dealer. All right. Avi of Avi and Co. Avi and Co. I like Avi. I actually like Avi. I've never done business with him. I've never done business with Jacob. But I mean, Avi, I kind of like. I wish him happy birthday. You know what I'm saying? I don't really Carlos. know him personally like that. No. Car Carlos of CRM Jewelers. Do you know I Carlos? Do. What about Jules? What do you what, what do you make of Jules? Jules. I think Jules is a very sweet girl. Her ego is very much in play. <laughs> Already? Oh yeah. Well, she's sky skyrocketed to stardom. It, he, she she gained fame. Very quickly, you know, she was Thanks in God. the magazines, in her, you know, social media is exploding. No, no, so no. It, you know what? Look, people have to understand. They have to take a good look at who they're looking to buy a watch from. She works for someone who works for someone. Okay? It's like uh, when you're dealing with someone who works for someone or who works for someone who works for someone, you got to know if they're not writing the check, they're not going to be as 
knowledgeable as they see. I, but I've seen I've seen her on video negotiating deals for five hundred and seventy five thousand dollar Patek Philippe's, and sure. and and with with terms. Hey, I'll pay you in nine in thirty, in 30 days. Would you do that deal? Fuck no. But I mean, but but that's and that's what's. I, yo, fuck no. I'm not. Doing so, but, that. but Buckley, but you're you're an old school guy. What is it like for you to be in? an environment with these 20 and 30 year old guys that it's all social media and TikTok, And I mean, you're pioneering it in a way, but you're like the grandfather who's, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm oh, super old myself, but you know, uh, you look better than me <laughs> in, in this, in this young person's game of social marketing. I mean, what is it? What is it like? I mean, how, how does it affect how you do business at all? It hasn't affected the way that I do business. Except having to, you have a cameraman following you around 24 you know hours a day me, filming deals. Let me, let me, let me, let me blow your mind. We had cameras when we, I was set up at 66 West. We moved there in 2015. I had cameras there. I had a cameraman there from 2015 till we moved out in 2020. Why? Okay. How, why is How's that possible? Your documentary. Oh, really? And this person, if you go to Brian dot Berman on TikTok. You will see like little excerpts. He's got years of footage of me that we were going to use. It's like Buckley, the basement tapes. Wow. And hanging out at 66 West, talking shit, doing what we do. And it's basically the same thing that we do now, only it's not really negotiating. It's just me sitting there being an asshole, you know, <laughs> or answering questions and just being Buckley. But, do you think that do you think the negotiating videos do the do the the concept of watch the, the whole hobby of watch collecting and watch buying a disservice to see these things as just quick transactions where I'm walking across the street and I make five five hundred bucks? I mean, is that it's is, real. is that doing the right thing? Is it's, that portraying the right image of the industry? You wanna, it's not an image; it's a business. You know, it, it, it's it's how we make money. You know, that's the thing. It's like we could sit here and, and all sit around and like you know, sit there with a magnifying glass and start looking over the fucking, you know, the luminous dots on a, on a 5512 and start criticizing, well, you know, this one looks like it's this, like some of these other fucking morons do, okay? We tend to go out there and buy and sell them for money and then we go out to dinner, you know? And let's be honest, we will never see the other side, what the other side will is talking about, right? Like what... <laughs> What the authorized side, with the watch companies, at, with their board meetings, what they're talking about. You want to sit on it, sit on, on if, if you sat in on one of our staff, it's not a staff meeting, it's a partner's meeting that we have a couple of times a week, me, my son, and Tyler, okay, usually happens in the car. My son's in the back seat, he's got his headphones on, he's sitting there watching YouTube video. <laughs> I was in the front seat like this, passed out. Okay, and I'm over there trying to wake the two of them, get their attention. I'm in the back going like this as I'm driving on the Jersey Turnpike, telling them, like, okay, what are we going to do over here? How are we going to fill this show? When are we going to put out the things? That's the staff meetings. If you want to see that, I mean, I've been telling them to get cameras in the car, but then we'd have to really edit it because sometimes I go the fuck off and it's <laughs> really good. But, I mean, if you really wanted to know how that works, okay, you really mm. – use your imagination. You could see how it works. It's like guys are sitting over there, and it's like, okay, this guy's – doing this, this guy's doing that, you're selling watches. These big watch companies have heavy overhead, okay? Oh, yeah. Really lean, okay? Yeah. We're not overhead guys. We don't even have a booth on 47 anymore. You know, I had one there for 15 years in various locations. We don't need it anymore. We just go post up wherever we want to post up, you know? Yeah, speaking, speaking of overhead, is there any way you could turn the camera towards your, just show us the environment that you're in right now? You want to see the environment? Uh, we've yeah. Been we here. I don't know how I can. I can't flip the camera. Oh, careful! Yeah, we don't want to do that. Oh, oh, hello, hello. Oh, we're vertical now. Okay. What do you want to say? Yeah, see your table. You want to see? By this the way, wow. that I have yeah. not yeah. been here for about two months. This wow. shit. I have not gone through it here. You want to see some inserts? It's time. It takes time. But they, I, I, I'm, I'm working on some videos. They, they're, they're blaming me. Oh my god. These inserts. These are all factory inserts. There you go. These are all uh, factory dials. Here, uh, these are all factory bracelets. Wow. You know, this is this is my pride and joy. Ah, uh, I love my clock. Wh I mean, where is that clock from? It hung somewhere. I don't know where it hung. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it hung. You'd be surprised. I, there's a funny story attached to that clock. I mean, a really funny story. I had. Um, do you know Adam from Menta? Mental, mental watches. watches. Yeah. Okay. Adam and I know each other. Adam's a little shit. 
okay? And you can tell him I said so. Okay. And um, one day I'm going to send him a new T-shirt. But <laughs> Adam and I know each other. And Adam calls me up one day and he's like, Buckley, could you take a look at this? I see this thing on eBay. It's a clock. He's like, is it real? So I look at it. I'm like, yeah, it's fucking real. He's like, how much is it? He's like, ah, the guy wants three grand for it. I'm like, all right, what's the problem? He's like, eh, you know, I want to give him 2600 I'm like, all right, I don't care. I mean, I'll buy the fucking thing if you don't want it. So we go back and forth. He's like, ah, fuck it. You take it. I don't even know if it's real or not. I was like, okay, I know it's real. So I contact the guy on eBay. I shoot him a text. I'm like, this is, you know, John Buckley, Tuscany Rose, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh my God, it's John Buckley. Holy shit. You're the Buckley dial guy. Wow. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Here's my PayPal information. Long story short, I send the guy to PayPal. Okay. And I do, um, I didn't, I, I never do that friends and family shit. I just pay the fees. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. So I paid my PayPal. I don't hear from the guy for like two weeks. Okay. Whoa, okay. <laughs> I'll call up Adam and Adam's like, he was like, Oh my God, you got scared. Hold on. I'm, my volume is down. There you go. Now you're better. So I call up Adam. I'm like, Oh my God, did you ever talk to this fucking monkey? He's like, no, this fucking guy. I don't know. Oh my God, Buckley. I'm sorry. I'm like, yeah, all right, fuck it. All right. What am I going to do? About 10, 15 days later, I get a FedEx notification in my FedEx account that a ground package was just um, somebody ordered the label for a ground package, a big package. And then like two or three days later, it showed up in my house. Whoa. And the guy was like, oh man, I'm sorry. I was really busy and this, this and that. I was like, Phew. and Adam is so pissed that he didn't buy it. And you know why he didn't buy it? Because he's a fucking noob. That's why he didn't buy it. He didn't know. He, he, he didn't he, know. He, you know what? Guys like him, they should really He didn't want to take the risk. He didn't. But you know what? It, That's. You know, in a way, ah, you know, that guy, you, you can't have it all. You know, you can't have all the wins for yourself. You got to let Buckley win once in a while, right? All the time. Shit, once in a while. I like winning. <laughs> Damn, I'm going to win every time. Now, I love Adam. Adam knows I love him. And he could take the clock anytime he wants. Yeah, mm. right. <laughs> I'll give it to him, maybe, if he's nice to me. Hey, let's uh, let's ask this question. Uh, do, uh, but, uh, John, John, do you have a favorite Rol Rolex in the current catalog, or are you not a modern oh, modern pieces? I fan? love the modern watches. I yeah. love some of the new. I love the new um, the Le Mans Daytona. I think that's a fantastic. I think it just came off. One of them just popped up for like three hundred grand. I thought it was going to be a hundred. I, I yeah, it was like three hundred. Somebody selling one for. I love yeah. those new the puzzle ones that John Mayer bought. He bought it oh. over uh, our, our, my guy over at Fortane, you know, Josh. And John got that watch. I'm glad he got it because John would appreciate it. You know, I wish I got yeah. it, but, you know, Josh isn't going to sell it to me. He'll sell it to John. <laughs> John Mayer watches the show. Shout out to John Mayer, everybody. I like Shout out to John Mayer. Like I said, John's not a fake guy. John knows his shit. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. And he's done a lot for kind of watch enthusiasts, I think, because, you know, eh, give him, you know, he, he helped Ben Clymer <laughs> kickstart the whole Hodinky yeah. in a way. Like, and even though it's kind of want to get watches a, for newbies. Uh, Starbucks, but. Yeah. I mean, there's worse. There's worse than Starbucks, right? Like oh, the, really this is. whole brick watch company, you know, the Dave Portner. Did you hear about that? All right. Here we here, Here's my take. Uh -oh. You got me going long over here, too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We, we, we have, have to. Three uh, hours. Yeah. Let me tell you something, okay? Yeah. If, okay, Dave Portnoy had someone advising him who had a clue, okay, they would have made this watch about 300, 400 bucks. If they watched three to 400 bucks, they would have sold a boatload of them because yeah. his name alone would, would push this thing over the top. It's a fucking, I mean, if there's $10 worth of parts in that watch, it's a lot. They would have had <laughs> tremendous margin. Oh, no, I'm serious. Yeah. Tremendous margin. Okay. And they would have sold a boatload. Instead, they tried to get into like the Tag Heuer arena. Mm -hmm. And you can't. You can't take a cheap watch and put it in that arena because Tag Heuer and Omega, which I, I'm not an Omega guy, but Omega, Tag, Breitling, they will kick your ass because people have brand recognition. And Portnoy, he missed the ball. He dropped it, but he doesn't care. He's He's loaded. Yeah. Yeah, he's got he's got a lot of play money. So he 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 tried it. He went for the big money. He thought he can double up well, on this on this business. I think, but it it didn't work. Okay, so he lost three million. Who cares? He's got five hundred. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He he lost more than three million. Trust me, he lost some good money on that. But you know what? It is what it is. You know, he gave it a shot. I give some cost. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. man. Uh, hey, and also, hey, we also got uh, Diego finally home. Diego, oh. hey, we don't want to hey, keep man. John for too long. Are you, I, I already made you stay half hour extra because we said that you're going to leave at two hours. I know. I, I'm over here overstaying. Welcome, Diego. These shows are addicting. These <laughs> I've shows one, are. I've got addicting. one question for John. Go ahead. Why do you hate Omega? Why do I hate Omega? You want to really know why? Because I think. I think the chat maybe is unaware and they would love to know. Sure. I always dog Omega out because as a Rolex guy, I have everything I need to do a restoration on a watch. I have the best Rolex service guys in the city. And if I have to take a modern watch into Rolex to service it, I have no problem doing that. I'll pay the couple of thousand. I spent 10,000 on one of my Daytonas just recently. So what? Okay. Omega is such a fucking pain in the ass to service. When you got to service a Speedmaster, you're talking about a $2,500 to $3,000 watch that's going to take a $1,000 service, okay, no matter what you do with it. And if you don't have the parts, it's just, it never runs right. Then you got to send it into Omega, and that's even worse. It's a pain in the ass. It, what is it, Swatch Group or something like that? It's like, oh, yeah. my God. I don't know. I just <laughs> never like them. I do think that the Speedmaster, if you go into an AD and buy a Speedmaster, it is the best value you're going to get for your money. And I say that begrudgingly for a chronograph. It is the best value you can get. And, and it's the truth. I, I think they're really, you know, they're good watches. They're just not my cup of tea. Like those automatic ones, they cost you seven, eight hundred dollars to service. The watch is worth twelve. You know, I, and that's how that's how I know, because I bought a lot of them and I always sell them. And then the customer comes back to me a couple of months later. It's like, John, it's not running. Right. I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, service it for you no problem <laughs> and then i'm eating you know a 700 yeah. service bill but as long as the guy's happy that's why i don't really deal in them that much is is richard meal a fad yes richard meal i looked at a three hundred thousand dollar. i sold one once and i every time i look at them I, i'm like who in their right mind is gonna invest that kind of money in this kind of watch it's just I don't know. It, I, I, I don't like them. I know guys that love them and they wear them all the time, but it's like, I don't know. They don't feel right. They're too, I don't like watches that sit high on the wrist. I like very, very low watches on the wrist. I don't like the Sky Dweller. I mean, certain watches I could deal with. I don't like the new 40 millimeter President. I like the older model, the Big Day Day 2. I like specific things. I like certain things and I just don't like the way they feel. You know, John, I think where it's all going to start breaking down for, for Richard Mille is when these watches are going to start going to service and they might not start having parts and start. Them. Nobody can service them. That's a problem. <laughs> it's going to be an issue. And then when when few people start going public saying, hey, look at this. I bought this $300 Richard Mille. It's impossible to service it now. It's broken. A lot of people who own Richard Mille, they're going to start panicking, start selling their watches, and the whole brand can implode. You know what the problem is with that? Most of these guys, okay, they don't even give a shit if the thing runs. They just want to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> he never sets the time on his watches. On that note, I am going to leave you fine gentlemen. Two hours and 30 minutes. People told me that you guys weren't very nice. It's like, you guys what? are not. No. Yeah. People are like, oh, that. that show, he's going to. Fake news. Fake like, news and fake narrative. You know, there, there's people making up so much so much lies about me. But that's, you know what? I It's okay. You know, I, I can't believe you go to Reddit. You go to Reddit, John. I mean, that's 99% lies and fake memes. Oh, my God. You know that. I've never been on Reddit until this timepiece thing. Oh, my God. Those boys over there are crazy. Those lunatics. Fucking mine. Psychos. Oh, I've been, I've been, oh, actually, I've been one of the early Reddit users, and yeah. now I, I, well, that I avoid it. A lot. Like, well, no, no, no. In the early <laughs> days, it used to be really good. I'm talking about like 2000. Fun. It used to be fun. Yeah, it used to be fun. Yeah. Now it's just terrible. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But, John, by the way, John, you're always welcome to Thank jump you. on the show if we're live and you feel like shooting the shit. I appreciate yeah. that. I really by the way, I'm, I'm, right, I'm right around the corner. I usually do my Tuesday afternoon walks right through the diamond district on both sides when you're um, so usually there on tuesdays I'll pop, I'll pop in i'll pop in next there. tuesday so let me know you know right. let me yeah know. maybe we'll go to lunch i'll come uh, i might even come up uh we'll all go to lunch or something most definitely and i want to thank all of you man and diego thank you so much yeah and man. Rosie, thank you tim 
do your research on the real Eric, Eric Koo. Eric Koo, oh. everybody. Research, Koo, everybody. okay, when you, when you say I'll get him on the show. Put, put good blessings on that name, because that's, that's the real OG. Um, yeah. Thank you, guys. And uh, I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Peace out. 100%. Thank you very much. See you, man. Bye, John. All right. What a, what a great, great show uh, with John Buckley. Yeah. I'm going to drop the link if anybody yeah. else wants to join us. He's a character. Amazing job you did. I'm an amazing guy. Don't worry about it, man. You did a really good job. I know what I'm doing. Of course. <laughs> By the way, we didn't get this question from Harry. I, I I didn't think it was just it would be too complex, too long to answer. But I appreciate the super chat, man. I'm gonna screenshot it. Maybe I'll I'll use it later. Uh, but let's just transfer. Let's just transfer that to Diego. Diego, it's an honor to have you on. Oh. Thank you. Any Thank vintage you so reference much. that you've considered overlooked that's still a good value doesn't have to be Rolex. Mm. Absolutely, I'll actually show you. I uh, let me see. Hold on, just a sec. And by the way, the, the chat is busted. Like we can't pull up chats just to let the audience know. Um, yeah, the chat's up, the chat's chat for you, Tim. Yeah. So. This is actually a watch that I'm having. Uh, hey, cut it up. I'm having someone help me find. Hold on a sec. Banner, stop, stop. It's a, well, I guess I'll pull it up. Tim's doing it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up a website. One second. Make sure I'm not doxing. I'm putting up a website for we go. us to take a look at. So I don't uh, know if you're a fan of date justs. I'm wearing my grandpa's um, right now. Ooh, that's Let's beautiful. It's close. The problem, though, with this watch is this. Oh, the oh yeah, jingly yeah, jingly yeah. bracelet. And we've shown the bracelet stretch on this one. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh, okay, it's like a it's That's like nasty. a corkscrew roller coaster. So my grandpa loved and wore this watch, and I appreciate that, but it's not very wearable. So I've been looking for a replacement, something I can wear, and this is it. It's a one six two three three um, date just which. Is kind of the equivalent of the pre ceramic submariners with the aluminum bezels, pre ceramic GMTs. It still has brushing on the lugs, as you can see. It's got a tritium dial. And well, this looks brand new. I mean, yeah, so I'm looking for one in this condition, which has proven to be very difficult and with this dial configuration. Um, but yeah, I think something like this, you can get it box papers, not in this condition for $6,000. And you've got a really solid date just. I mean, you know, the newer bracelet. It's it'll, Diego. It'll be amazing. This was also the hottest watch of that era. They, you know, yeah. they cool down right now. Nobody's paying attention to them. But like, if we're talking about history, you, if you go and start pulling up photographs from this time, a lot of I, I bet a lot of cool guys were wearing this thing. This watch yeah. today Nobody's is talking fifteen. About it. Fifteen thousand dollars for Rolex today. If you want to buy this brand new, yeah, a two-tone they just it's ridiculous. And in my in my opinion, this is a better version. My humble opinion, this is a better version. The bracelet might not be as strong. It doesn't have the milled clasp, right? It's got tritium. It doesn't have luminova. But I think if you're going for that quintessential Rolex look, and you don't want to spend a lot of money. You know, you don't want to buy a vintage sub or a Daytona. You can get this for six, seven thousand dollars. Now, there's nothing wrong with that bracelet, even though when it's all kind of jingly jangly, it's still freaking cool. Yeah. You know, so, it, there's uh, a feeling to it. So hey, I'm excited. I'm excited to eventually find the right one. Hey, who's Terry? Terry is trying to join the stream. You guys know Terry? No, he's got clothes on. So, got clothes on. can happen. <laughs> he's not. He's not naked. <laughs> Hello, Terry. Is, this Terry. is this Terry Beach? This is Terry. I can't Terry. believe I can't believe I've took up I've plucked up the courage to actually um, join because I've oh. never been I've never been on Streamyards before. Funny. Is enough. this Fat Windy no, Ben? Yeah. So I'm from the UK, as you may have guessed. Yes, we can kind of I've been, tell. I've been a long. T you can call me Tell if you want. T E L. I don't. How mind. do you go? What's what? What name do you use in the chat? Or do you uh, not in the chat? You don't participate I'm in the not, chat. I don't normally post participate in the chat because oh. um yeah I, are, you I, paul, I paul, are you paul paul thorpe's uncle sorry are you paul thorpe's uncle um no 
<laughs> Are yeah. you a fan of Paul Thorpe? He's a nice enough guy. He's a cool so chap. Yeah, he's a, I'll he's, take people a, as I find them, to be honest with you. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I, me too. Me too. Hey, I had Anthony Ferrer on, on the stream. You know, I don't yeah. I, well, I don't want to judge, but we, we want to know, you know, t tell us about uh, how you found the show and, you know, what, you know, I found the show, through. actually, mm -hmm. the London Watch show, the first one, I think it was mm -hmm. um, the one you attended, Tim. <laughs> yes, that was uh, the first one when it was still fun or the second yes. one when it all turned to shit. The first one when it was still fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was yeah. good days. Uh, so I like to call it the good old days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've been a long term watch enthusiast. Um, I think I started with Casio's actually back in the day. Yeah. I, and which, go, which, which, which version of Tim do you like the best? The brown haired, the, the blonde haired um, or the pink haired? Which grifter do you, do you think is the best version? Oh, dear. Um, but, well, Tim is his own unique personality. And who am I to judge what hairstyle he's got? Exactly. Who I have cares? a question for Terry. What was it like? when you saw the introduction of the reverso in 1931 did it shock you <laughs> <laughs> the clever very yeah he goes very clever yeah you go you, we, um, we we joke on the ones we love and i think so far we all love you so um yeah well anyway um the 1930s um i was a twinkle in in well no my father wasn't even born funny enough in the 90, early 1930s so that shows you i'm not that old i don't believe that i'm just teasing you yeah but anyway um mm. no you are very charming diego and uh i, I oh, appreciate you. humor you've got ever oh, sense of humor to get through this life especially in the last yeah, Diego's, years. diego's recently married by the way terry Still a yeah time. well nobody's perfect <laughs> Um, what can I say? Um, I just want to say that um, uh, I appreciate luxury watches, and I do own a Longines, uh, mm -hmm. a um, 1945 um, Heritage. And uh, I got it at a good price um, about a year ago, funny enough. And, um, yeah, I, I appreciate watch brands that offer not only quality but value for money. So I'm a big fan of um, Longines. I'm a big fan of Tissot. And I just want to show you while I'm on. Oh, wow. My, um, <clears throat> hang on, where we go? Nice. It only came out early this year, funny enough. And I, That's and, the Tissot uh, Gentleman? No, it's not. It's the, um, it's the, um, what is it? It's the Shem, Le... oh, God. I forgot, I forgot what, what it's called. The Shem, oh, mm -hmm. I know it's a little strange, but is there any way you could turn the phone 90 degrees Sideways. so it's landscape? Yeah, just leave it. Okay, there oh, you go. Oh, Perfect. Well, there we go. Yeah. There there you go. Go. yeah aiming it is very tough. And yeah. I'm just using a Samsung phone. I don't have any professional equipment, just so you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, this what we're, we're, we're trying to tell more people to join. You don't need any type of professional equipment. You don't no. need fa fancy cameras. You don't need fancy microphones or headphones. You yeah. can join. Uh, by just clicking on the StreamYard link. It's a Shem, Shem. The anyway, it's it, a it, Shem. Oh, I, 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 Tissot. No, it's okay. It's okay. You don't remember? I mean, we could see it. It's a. It's a decent enough watch. It tells the time. It looks like it's twelve forty-five over there. It is. Yeah. You've been watching. Is... You've been watching the interview with John Barkley. Uh, what do you think about all the latest events in the watch community? Um. Well, yeah. See, I, I try not to get sucked into the drama of it. Yeah, I mean, you're just giving opinion. There's nobody. I mean, what? No, it's very entertaining. I will say yes. that. Um, but look, to be honest with you, um, people like to make money, don't they? Um, they do. I believe a true watch enthusiast is not a flipper. I know my lingo. Um, <laughs> it's not a flipper. Um, I used to watch Flipper back in the day. Who remembers Flipper, the dolphin? Oh, great. Anyway, um, never seen it. Yeah, no, I've, I, I own thirty-five watches or or above actually. And um, uh, what can I say? You haven't uh, sold men. You haven't sold. You haven't sold men. You haven't. Went I have. up no, into I've, this I've, crazy I've sold price. a lot of my watches over the years to uh -huh. work colleagues. Funny enough, um, wow. yeah. And I've sold You're a, like a curator for, to to at a profit or at a loss. 
Um, sometimes I have profit, but but normally I've either broke even or took a small loss. But the yeah. watches I've sold have, have only been like a few hundred pounds value, and yeah. so if if I've worn a watch for a year and I got you you know en enjoyment and good value out of it, and mm -hmm. then I want to purchase another watch, I'll, I'll I'll move one on that I don't wear wear anymore. You know, it's, that's it's the beauty of watch. Is yeah. that you? You know, you can own it and it lasts. It's not something that you immediately becomes garbage that yeah. you throw in the garb in the disposal bin and you know yeah. contribute I, to. I have, no, I, I'll tell you, some of my old watches, um, I, I can't be bothered to sell them. I've thrown them in the bin, to be honest with you, or gave yeah, them away I mean, to relatives and things. It's yeah. a lot of crap out there. Yeah, you got to be very selective. It is. There is. But um, I, I now a lot of people don't like dress watches, Tim. I yeah. love dress watches. It's Why probably do my don't favorite. Like dress watches? Yeah, I don't know. I, and so, so I, I think a few of your speakers in the past hmm. have said that dress watches are going to have their day. And um, Teddy Baldus there yeah. is a big fan of dress watches. You know, yes, because people don't dress anymore. They just. Well, uh, the, but, the, but, but, but you don't need to dress up to wear a dress watch. That's the thing. Right. You can wear, you can them wear jeans and a, and a white t shirt and it looks great. Yeah. Well, I've got a yeah. lilac. A lilac T-shirt on at the moment, actually. But, you know, but uh, it's it's. I, I think okay. So I think this this is why people d don't dress, don't don't wear dress watches because a lot mm -hmm. of people out there have become very lazy. They don't they don't dress. They don't like to dress up. They don't want to. Also, maybe they don't have time. To, you know, smart because, casual. Yeah, smart casual has always been my style. Smart casual is a great great Sometimes style, but it's I not cheap. You know, you you need to have. Uh, Good clean clothing to go with the nice yeah. watch. Wearing a sports Rolex is easy. You could be like me, t-shirt, yeah. t-shirt, shorts. You put it on and it kind of elevates whatever whatever you're wearing. Look at OC. Yeah. I yeah. mean, without the watch, he just looks like a nobody. With Same. the watch, you know that this is a secret. Uh, he's hiding his there. power level. OC. Mr. Four three two. Yeah. yeah. Tim, you used to be a Rolex fanboy. I understand you're changing your tune these days. He can't afford it anymore. I can't afford that lifestyle. <laughs> that's oh, my... there's the long jeans. That's this the long wow. jeans that changed the the long jeans brand forever. Wow, beautiful. That's Ben like, Climber. Ben Climber. I like the one that you were pulling up earlier, Tim. That one was pretty interesting. Oh. This was um, this was when it first came out, uh, 2018. I mm -hmm. think it was about 1,750 pounds. Mm-hmm. I picked this up a year ago for one thousand pounds. Well, actual fact, the seller was asking one thousand fifty. I was watching it on eBay, and then he made me an offer, fifty pound off. So I thought it was too good a deal to 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 miss. So nice. that's I my, think that, That's going to be my, important. Watch, I think. In, yeah, I, I remember actually. I remember seeing that watch being announced uh on like some youtubers made video about it and then i you know i went to longjin's website and i've seen and i i remember seeing that watch and thinking oh damn that's yeah. nice this and it, it punches above its weight tim you it see? does it, it looks like a calatrava when i saw i was like oh oh no way this is it's a serious it's finally when long jeans changed from from just making random stuff to making stuff that collectors would desire. Now, what is this ugly thing? Uh -huh. This is a Zeno. It's, it's a Swiss watch. It's I bought this new old stock only about three months ago, and I paid three hundred and forty pounds for it. And it, uh, they was asking four hundred, and it's never been worn. It was new old stock. It, I bought it. I did buy it on eBay, and yeah. they um, they serviced them, and then they sell them as new old stock. And they they supply watches where I bought it from to to film yeah. companies because they use them in old movies. They sell new old stock from the seventies and things like that. Oh. So it's um, it's a Cino um, Deluxe. Oh, uh, yeah, it's it's a military style sort of tank. That's a military. That doesn't look very military to me. Well, it's the um, it's it's the numerals and the uh, not military per se, but it's they specialize in that sort. Not of gonna thing. lie, not gonna lie, lie to you, Terry. I really hate how this one looks. Okay, there's something yeah, there's just something very ugly about it. Well, never mind. <laughs>
<laughs> no, I'm just and Zeno. I've never heard of this brand. Sounds like some kind of a villain. No, Terry, um, Terry inspired me. Oh, me. oh, there you go. Dress There's the reverso with a T-shirt and shorts. So yeah, That's a nice you, watch. Can wear. you can't be a tank watch actually, and uh, I do like tank watches. Um, what, what's your dream watch, Terry? My dream watch. Like if I said, Terry, I just want a billion dollars. I just met you. Fuck it. Whatever you want, I'm buying it for you. Right. What are you asking for? I would probably go for. Um, let me think. Uh, think ooh. about it. You put me on the spot. Huh? I don't. Yeah. I, like, I don't. No, no. It's a tough question. Don't. Don't be afraid to like think about it for a second. I'm gonna. I I'm do gonna like. To I do like um, the German uh -huh. uh, watches. Um, the Lange. A Lange is good, but I, I like um, the one that isn't as expensive. It's about seven thousand. Um, Glass shooter. Uh, mm -hmm. What's it called? Um, Glass uh, Glass shooter. Glass shooter original. original. Yes, they do some beautiful watches, and they're the very good. Pano, Pano the, green. the one you had, the, the one, one with the moon one phase. One. I saw it about a year ago on your show. Uh, uh, you were trying it on at an ex, uh, one of the uh, the watch shows you went to. I did. Oh like yeah. One. Oh, yeah. I've I've tried. I've looked at many glass shooters in my time. Um, that's a Seiko um, perpetual calendar. That's a nice Seiko. Oh, did it have? Did you have to get the perpetual calendar though? Oh, it's very complicated. I'll tell you. I'm gonna laugh when Terry just like casually pulls over like a fifty nine eighty in, in gold. That's <laughs> <laughs> his like next watch. <laughs> We're all just like, oh. Um, See, oh, one of that? these is uh, yeah. I like, like the green dial. I like the green oh. dial. That's what I was. That's the one I was actually saying. The green dial. I like the yeah. That's beautiful. Video. I yeah, do love amazing. a green dial if it's done well. Oh, this is oh. in rose gold. Look at that. Oh, I would love that watch. Yeah. All right, Terry. If I if I win, you got to win now. You you got my word. Thank you. Gotta, you you got to do it. Terry uh, is relying on you. By the way, uh, Terry, you're not the only Terry that I know in UK. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, Terry. Uh, there's a there's a civil servant, the Terry Civil Austin. I think his his oh, name. Oh, yeah. I know the guy. Yeah, I've seen him on your show. I think. Yeah, he's the fam He's the guy who was responsible for Pizzagate. Oh, fantastic. I, I do like fragrances as well, Tim. Funny enough. Oh, uh, do, do you know Andy? No, Andy Benz. I don't. You don't know Andy Benz? Oh, I've yeah. heard of Andy Cap. Um, uh, wh which part of uh, UK are you from? I'm from London, the east side. Oh, the east, east, the east side, side baby. Um, it's a bit That's of a walk cool. on the wild side these days, though. I will oh, say. Oh yeah, what happened? Is is crime as bad there as Paul Thorpe making it out to be? Uh, well, if you got the West End wearing a Rolex and flashing it, I suppose it is. But um, um, you, th you think it was stupid for for Paul to to do that uh, video where he? Put on like a fake or, or imitation Richard Meal, and wanted to see if somebody was going to rob him. Well, um, knowing Paul, I, I think Paul can handle himself, but I'd imagine yeah. he's got he's got a few a few heavies in the background. So I don't think he was in any any real danger. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's hope so. He knows a few people, Paul. I remember oh. that. I remember that shotgun story. So. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know he he show. I don't know if he has any real weapons uh, at home, but he he did show that I've he was selling quite a few Peloton. Yeah, yeah. But um, well, look, put it this way: um, crime is always going to be around, but some people do not take precautions, like be, being aware of your surroundings. Now, mm. I I'm a little bit of a martial artist on the quiet, or I used to be. Oh. And, you um, don't look like what? What kind of martial arts do you specialize in, Terry? Well, I've always been a fan of um, kung fu, ah, um, kung do. I'm a big fan of Bruce Lee. But um, no, it's um, always be aware. You know, if 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 see a lot of people these days, Tim, that, that they they've got, they've got victim written on their forehead. Yeah, yeah. They, they walk along, they're hunched over, they're, they're looking at their phone, and yes. um, yeah, it's and it's the sign saying. Mug me, mug me. I'm not paying attention. I'm a victim, right? And we all know that most crooks or muggers are book cowards, and they always go for the softest target. Yeah. Yes. 
So if you walk along confident, Tim, and aware of your surroundings, and I learned a technique many years ago, right? If you're walking down the street, Tim, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Always be aware of who's approaching you. Now, I'll try and be aware of who's behind you as well. But if you see somebody and and um, listen to your spidey sense, if somebody's walking towards you, okay? Yes. And um, you don't look directly at them, Tim. You, you just observe them at your peripheral vision, yeah? There's some yeah. kind of um, sixth sense um, communication between all human beings, right? And for some reason, that person, you've heard of these scientific exp experiments where if something's observed, they get a different result. It's the same thing with human beings. If you're observing somebody but not looking directly at them, something subconsciously is telling them mm. that person is aware of me. And yes, yeah. And you know, I, actually, I, I uh, you know, I grew up here in Brooklyn and I was actually, yeah, I, pe people actually, I think they'll, they'll be a little bit surprised. Like I, I am very aware of my surroundings, even exactly. though sometimes I don't look like I'm aware because I learned the lesson the hard way. I was popped in my, yeah. in, in the mouth, you know, by running into a guy. Yeah. And, um. Girl. If all else, else fails, school. if you're ever yeah. um, ch challenged or attacked by anybody, right, mm. most people expect you to act scared, run away, or start crying, right? If you mm. just stand there and stare at them and almost have a grin on your face, yeah. they think, uh-oh, you know? It's not going to pass, yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever. You know, Bruce Lee said this again, right? Mm -hmm. It was the, It's called The Art of Fighting Without Fighting. If you just intensely stare at somebody, right, and you're not, you know, a lot of people think, oh, if I wave my arms around and shout at somebody, they're going to be intimidated. No. The person, you don't fear, Tim, the person who's waving their arms and shouting at you. You fear the person who's staring at you intently like, like a maniac, not saying nothing. That's the person to be aware of you. So there you go. A little bit of advice. <laughs> mm, yeah it's because oh. yeah because you, you know they they might not when if you're just there quiet they might it's very tough to read people if they're trying yeah. to you know do something to you and they can't get a read on you i don't know if you saw that i've got a hermalay walk uh mantle clock but it's i haven't wound it up recently oh is that a fabrice egg you have over there uh yeah not a real one that um diego unfortunately okay. um thoughts on tea and tickers terry unfortunately it is um what's the word um uh, what's the word for a fake rolex it's one of them fugazi F eh? fake a rolex clone. who had no, fake no, rolex? no it's a fake fabrice but it's, it's made of um eventually oh. okay. i bought it from a shopping channel funny enough <laughs> nice. there are fake fabrice eggs i didn't even know there was a thing well they're, well they're a homage reproduction Sh shall we be polite and call them homage fabrice eggs? Oh. Well, because the real Fabergé eggs go back to like the medieval times, right? Yeah. To, like, well, the, um, the the Russian czars and all that. But um, yeah, yeah Fabergé. Um, but yeah, a real Fabergé egg is like thousands upon thousands. Isn't it? Yeah, I was never a fan. I'm I can't not... believe you, you've allowed me on this long, Tim. But I suppose I might be better better value. Look, we'll, we'll take a we'll take like a fifty super fifty dollars super chat to drop you. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, I, I've, I, might, I think I, might, I think I've got as much into, uh, entertainment out of you as I possibly could have. Thank you, Tim. I love you part, too. You know? But I, I, um, maybe I'll I might try my be, best. Um... Look, yeah. all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I will um, take my leave. You can. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. Stay, stay a while. Listen, just, just hang in, hang in there. No, I've, I've been, I've been a fan of your shows, and yeah. I must admit, um, you can be controversial, and I think, um. I, th I think um, you should listen more to OC, Diego, mm -hmm. and O'Sheen sometimes because you you do have a touch of the Mar Marcellos about you sometimes. Yes, I mean, but that's what makes me me, right? <laughs> Not too much yeah. Marcello, but just a touch. I do, I, I do love the way Mar Marcello la laughs at his own jokes. I always find that quite amusing. A good yeah. comedian should be deadpan when they're delivering a gag, you know. Yeah, I, he's he's definitely a unique character. I'll 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 just say that. Yeah, Man, I don't. But but but, but he, he you say I admire people who are themselves, and you you got to give it. My, he doesn't put on an act. He's he's himself. Love him. Yes. Or, or he's too old to pretend to be someone who's not. 
and I yeah. kind of, who, who he, he, he that he's someone who he's not and tried to put a knack. That's the cool thing about Marcel, right? Like you can hate him all you want, okay? Yeah. And a lot of people do, and but you and you know what? It actually it pains him when people hate him. He's he's human. At the end of the day, it does pain him that people hate him. Half human, uh, but half also. Third. Yeah, it's also painful to listen to him, okay? And he's actually yeah. inflicting actual pain onto people. It's a bo it's both ways. You know, it goes both yeah. ways. He's inflicting pain, he gets he gets pain. And but one the th one thing I respect is that he is unapologetically authentic, and that's something I yeah. want to bring out out of more yeah. people. Now some people they go on YouTube and they pretend to be something they're not him. You know, yeah. they, they, they um they, they think um it's celebrity culture, you know, 50 minutes of yeah. fame, and they think, oh, if, if, if I act like I'm a big shot, people are going to like me more. Well, no, people prefer you to be yourself. You know, there's plenty of people pretending to be something they're not, and that's something yeah. I never do, but there you go. Anyway, this is a Zelos. I don't know if you've heard of Zelos. A micro no, put brand. it away. It's not, just, okay. Nobody wants to see these watches. I mean, By the way, Tim, if you, if you refresh yeah. your stream yard, it fixes the chat. Oh, okay. I'll I'll so, be right back. Terry, my right my, back. my chat is not working. I'll be right back. Just give me a second. Why am I? It, I, I, so, I would never believe in um, tea and tickers. What do you think? Tea and good tickers. or bad? Have you ever heard of him? Back. Boom. I've heard of tea and tickers. Yeah, it's he, he is show. from England. Yeah. Uh, um, Mark, thank you so much for the two dollars super chat. Marcelo is on the list. Have I been taking drugs or is Tim uh, freezing out? Oh, no, 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 no. I think I was freezing out. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no you was fla flashing. Well, not oh. flashing. You was... Um, yeah. I thought I was hallucinating. Damn. StreamYard is, is acting weird today. Oh, uh, it kind of Actually, no, it was working fine until until you hopped on, Terry. Now um, it only updates I do have psychic powers, so maybe I, I do affect electronics. Yeah, it's okay. It's all cool. It's all cool. Um, Terry, Terry. Okay, uh, tell us, uh, tell us uh, something. How you found you found the show? D you found this show during the, the the London Watch Show. How did you know about the London Watch Show? Uh, um, when was the London Watch Show that that one oh. you attended and you went to dinner with with um, oh um, you know all the all the watch people in London. Yeah, um, the, was that 2019? Was that before? that was? I think it was 2021. 2021. Was it really? Yeah. You, oh, oh, it was during COVID. Two years I, ago, yeah. In the middle of COVID, been... everyone got COVID. Ashin yeah. got really bad COVID. Everyone else also got COVID. I was the only one who didn't get it. Well, that's amazing, yeah, because um, Ashin's a big guy, but a, a, a COVID affected him badly. I had COVID in 2021, and I'm 63 now, and I felt oh, like God. I had a bad cold, basically. But there you go. I haven't had a day off sick in 12 years, Tim. Funny wow. enough. Yeah, I feel like I'm sick every day. Well, apart from know. COVID, apart from COVID days, but they didn't account that against their sickness record. Huh? Yeah, I work in local government in London, and um, yeah, they didn't account it against your sickness re record if you was off, you know, for the ten days. Because I, I, I would have run it off otherwise, Tim. I would have gone to work and run it off, but I was told, like, yeah. "No, you got to stay at home for ten days." There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta. You can't. Yeah. I can't. I do it. recommend apple cider vinegar and vitamin D. <laughs> yeah. Apple cider vinegar. Hey, by the way, I totally forgot to uh, remind people to upvote. Uh, we're so far behind on the upvotes, guys. Can we get these upvotes to, you know, some decent numbers, uh, like 150? Let's get to 150 upvotes right now. I, and at 150 upvotes, we're gonna drop Terry. How's that? How's that? I sound? am on Instagram as um. Well, no, I, I don't want to give my. Just my name's Terry. I don't want to give. It might give away my my. Don't identity. dox yourself. Don't dox yourself. No, I Unless, don't dox myself. I mean, listen. There's nothing wrong with being doxed. Some people want to get doxed. You know, it's kind of adventurous. Suicide I have, well, I do have um, an Excalibur sword on my wall with some nunchuckers lying around, and also a big survival knife. So and yeah. Oh, and a, and an air pistol. There but you anyway, go. I don't. I don't take them outside. So you're allowed to collect things as long as you don't go waving around in the street in, in England. Look, look, <clears throat> let's be honest. Let's be honest. No one's breaking in to steal was it Zelos? What was the last watch? Let's show it again. Show it again. Was it Zelos? It's a Zelos Mother Pearl doll, yeah. Yeah, let's see it full screen. 
No one, trust me, no one. It's a nice watch. But no one is breaking into your house to steal that one. And, you know, Zealous, this brand is actually quite serious. They do uh, uh, a lot of interesting materials at low price. You know, they do like that uh, Damascus. They have a uh, a Sapphire watch for under $10,000. Eh, it's a... They do sell out normally. Um, yeah, they're well respected uh, among the born every day. enthusiasts. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, look, um, this one is a rotary, and it's Ooh, uh, I it's like a, that. It's a re. Oops, where's it gone? I've lost my. Uh, oh, hang on. It's all back. It's, um, it's a reissue of a classic from the sixties. Mm. Rotary Avenger. Yeah, they should have That's never nice. reissued yes. it. Uh, I think it looks nice. Yeah. Okay. It's got a look to it. I like and, the, crown. Um, the, crown, the crown is like long. It makes it easy to grab. Do you remember the TV show Sherlock? Sherlock Holmes? Yes, Donald... I do. Right. Well, this is the watch he wore in it. No way. No way. You're lying. Yeah, I'm not lying. You, you, you you, you're saying uh, the... What, what's the name? Uh, fuck, he's a very complex last name. Uh, wait. Uh, Cumberbatch. 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 Yeah, he wore this in a show Sherlock. No way. Benedict Cumberbatch wore this this watch in the Sherlock Holmes. Well, we didn't wear this one. This one's mine. But Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> not exactly this one, but okay. Are, are there, you coming to Vegas, Terry? No, I'm not. I don't like traveling oh. abroad. Okay. Maybe when I retire. I've got two years to till I can officially retire, then I might consider it. But um yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What about what about the? There's gonna be some watch shows uh, at the BQ watches. Are you a fan oh, of yeah. BQ watches? Well, sorry, I just wanted to mention fragrances. Yeah, yeah. Um, you like Tom Ford? Yes, I do. Right. Um, what's the one I bought recently? Um, Oud Wood. I, I think it was um, a Mont Blanc, and it was mm. it was was it a Mont Blanc? There's no such a thing. What are you talking about? Yeah, Mont Blanc fragrance. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Well, there's, but, but he said Tom Ford, Mont Blanc. There's no Tom Ford. Well, well, Mont Blanc. I thought, I, no, hang on. Uh, well, you well, got well. the Explorer? I, uh, yes, I've got that one. That's a yeah. good one. Did you get yeah, You got the one. black bottle, right? Not the blue one. The black bottle, yeah. 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 And the... also, I've got um, Dunhill um, Racing Green. That's not a bad fragrance. You know, Dunhill is oh. very, uh, very cheap. Uh, That's the one I got, Tim. Yeah, I got two of them. Quality, I, got, yeah. I got their other Explorer one. I, I can't remember what it is. But, um, cool stuff. You need to get the watch. You need to get the Explorer, the the Rolex Explorer to uh, go with. That'd it. be a good. That'd be a good watch for Terry. Yeah, hmm. a thirty-six, Possibly. like an old. How can we get like, you into a Rolex? Five one, maybe. But um, oh, oh, I just wanted to mention. Oh, that's what I was thinking of. Sorry, um, the Dunhill. Um, oh, Dunhill. It's got a gold bowl. I bought that one recently, and um, that is uh, supposed to be have a similar um, fragrance to um, it's like Smell. leather and tobacco, you know. Oh, the tobacco, tobacco oud, or yeah, yeah. yeah. Dunhill does a lot of like well, clones of. I gotta go, Tim. Have fun, Terry. Good meeting you, man. Good to meet you, Diego. Um, Hi, Diego. I, I, I don't want to take over Tim's show. I, I thought I, I thought you wouldn't you wouldn't even let me on. I was only expecting to be around for a few minutes at most. Yeah. But, uh, Tim wants anybody on. That's that's what it's all about. So now, meeting the now, fans. Now, now Diego right. looks like he's um he's in the Matrix now. Why? He looks like he looks like Scott is trying to beam him up. Huh? I don't get it. British man. We'll invade you. soon. See you. I'm a bit of a Trek, actually. I do love Star Trek. Well, oh yeah, I love Star Trek. I need to rewatch it. Are you the the old generation or the new generation? Oh, a bit the original of series. Uh, original series mainly, yes. Yeah, nice. Ooh, wow, you got Captain Kirk. Yeah, Captain Kirk, right there. We have Captain Kirk in the chat somewhere. It's quite a good likeness, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty accurate. Yeah. When'd you get that? eBay. Uh, recent <laughs> is that a recent purchase or uh, a couple of years ago? It's that company that does these um oh these um what you call them collectible miniatures and things. Oh, gotcha, <clears> gotcha. Uh, let's take a look a... at some of these watches. Let's accept. Let's, let's let's get your opinion on some of these watches here on the okay. on the screen. I'll give you my opinion. Let me zoom in. Hang on. Yeah. That? Zoom in. That's the Vacheron Overseas. Vacheron yeah. Well... Overseas third gen. 
blue oh. dial um it, it's it's nice enough but it looks uh, it looks like it's a 500 pound watch to me I, you know I, what hold on a second it's twenty six thousand, twenty six thousand for this yeah I, I, I wouldn't give you um two thousand for it to be honest with you it, it's not my cup of tea tim Wow, I can't believe it. I mean, if I'm going to spend that kind of money on a watch, I want something that, that looks beautiful to look at, and I can look at it every day. And you know, well, this thing's got a lot of potential here. I mean, the di by the way, the the dial on this watch is stunning. Uh, you can like you can gaze at this dial every day and really? enjoy it. It's actually very very beautiful dial. I know the well, picture. Look doesn't give it uh well, look at the blue dial on my tisso it's better than that uh it's hard to tell you know the lighting the lighting in your you know yeah. it's late over there so the lighting Maybe. is absolute shit that's why you know we can't really look at your watches it's, it's just <laughs> not the right lighting what do you think i'm in a professional studio <laughs> no you're not in a professional studio that's why i'm saying like you know looking at it at, at your Okay. Your watch that you're showing is tough because. Hang on, Tim. Hang on. Yeah, you need better lighting. Let's see where. Oh, okay, okay, here, okay, okay. I'm gonna change the angle. Okay, hey, it's it. You know what? It's got some potential there, but trust me when I tell you, you well, it's beautiful. It's not gonna come anywhere near to to this Vacheron. Okay, that's the truth. Um, well, um, I do admire. Um, mm -hmm. what's the other brand? Um, I know it's one of the holy trinity of Vacheron, isn't it? Vacheron, um, yes, it is. Uh, maybe you're talking about the FB Joran, the blue one, yeah. But there's another brand I'm thinking of where the watches but they do some amazing watches. What it, it, it not necessarily Petit, what's the other top brand? Uh, AP oh. Automars oh, PK. Oh, I'm not a fan of um, uh, oh, what's not the, a um, fan of Automars PK? Wow, no. They, 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 they look big and ugly, Tim. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no. that's true. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, and then, like, they have weird sizing. They're either slightly too big or it's slightly too small. It's just yeah. real pain in the ass. And then the the good ones, the the right size is yeah. extremely expensive. You showed me. Um, I saw your Grossman um, mm. recently. That is a beautiful watch. You like my Grossman? And, um, yeah. Yes, and yes. um oh actually long jeans have, have got a similar thing to that tim but it's in reverse they do at a fraction of a fraction of the cost as well you know the one yeah now now you now you've got the numerals proud of the dial there mm -hmm. and on this long jeans one the, the 90 oh what is it the mm -hmm. 190th anniversary yes. with the silver dial they've actually the numerals engraved inwards yes have you seen that watch, Tim? Yeah, beautiful. yes, I did. Yes, I did. I can pull it out. One second. One second. Let me just fix the camera. And here. at the moment, that is my um, grail, actually. And oh. well, I might treat myself to it when I retire, actually. What, what's, uh, what's the name of that one again? Just give um, The Long Jeans um, 190th Anniversary. 190th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a silver dial. And um, oh, this it's one right here. Yeah, Boom. and if you read any any watch reviews on that, they, yes. they can't say a bad word about it. Tim. But the money, two thousand four hundred, whatever it is. Yeah, well, I, how can you say anything wrong about this watch? It's a fantastic, exactly. fantastic yeah. looking watch. This doesn't have a date, right? It's perfect. Uh, very it's symmetrical. The size, it, it, it's is simplicity. Right. It yeah. it does it does everything it says on the Tim Tim. Mm -hmm. It. it it's um it's beautiful it's it, it's it it looks like a ten thousand dollar watch mm -hmm. you know and uh, yeah look at that and you can't get it the, mo the most important part i think here is that you cannot get into crazy crazy debt with this watch you know no it's exactly i mean yeah. I, I've, I've got enough money in the bank to go out and buy that tomorrow but um you're not stupid enough to, to do it right away. You're gonna wait, see where it goes. It drops yeah. in price. You buy it used at half the at half retail. You know, it's not. That's right. You know, uh, you're uh, you're a smart if, buyer. You're not. You you're not start, an investor. You're not trying to buy these watches to make no. crazy profits on it. No, 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 no. But 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 I, I believe that's a real silver dial as well. I've tried to find the info on it, but uh -huh. you can't get the info on whether that's a real silver dial or not. I suspect it might be. It, 
uh, well, I th they might have, they would have put it somewhere, but but, but, but look at the, at the way they've been, it's the, the numerals are engraved into the dial, it's it, it, and it's got when you see it in real life. Now, I'm not sure whether it's hand engraved, I think it's like stamped into the dial, like they possibly, took, but yeah. Yeah, but it's well done. No, you can't take away from that. And the hands well are um, heat treated blue, aren't they? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Um, at that price, I think they're probably no, no Tim. Trust me, they are. Even are my, sure? even this one, they're heat treated. Yeah, even the one I own, mm. heat treated blue. That's pretty impressive. There you That's go. Impressive. I mean that value that for money. Price... I think. Value for money. Yeah, value. Seriously. Even um, enamel dials, you know, enamel dials, um, um, they can be expensive on luxury watches, but you can pick up um, a enamel dial, a Seiko enamel oh, dial. I have, a, I have a Seiko with an enamel dial. Yeah, you go. Right here. Hold on. I'll show you. Where is I have a Chinese watch with an enamel dial, funny enough. You'll probably turn your nose up at this one. Oh, wrong one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. One second. This, this is oh, an let's... enamel dial. I turn my nose to most stuff, Terry. So, oh wow, what a piece of shit! Thank you. You're turning into Archie slowly, but never mind. <laughs> no, no, I'm just being honest with you. Uh, look, I have a, I have the. No, no, it's it's okay. I mean, look, these are cheaper watches. Come on, come on, let's be realistic. I mean, we're not. Ah, I've got a Seiko similar to that. Yeah, you know Daniel Katz. He's got this one in white. This is blue, but. How it's, much did you pay for that one? Black. No. Huh? I, I paid. Well, I got to be honest. This was a gift from. Oh, okay. Very. I've, I've very... got the same. Um... Oh, hang on. Bear with me a second, Tim. Mm. Oh, I'll show you my Seiko. It's a presage. I think that's a oh. presage. Yeah. Pull it out. Let's see your presage. Here we go. Uh, I, Seiko. See, I'm not a huge fan of presage. Their dials get very funky. Uh, very. We see. We can't. We can't tell the dial. We can't. Okay. We can't see it. I've got the same um, hands as what's on your watch, though. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, kind of. No, very different. What are you talking about? They're totally different hands. Yeah, very similar. Yeah, no, <laughs> Terry, I don't I think that. Well, anyway. Uh, well, I think the second hand, you see the second hand. Uh, oh, speaking of legends, Mark, welcome to the show. What's happening? Hey, I've got a new contributor for you that's going to, you know, help help us out on the community channel. Terry, you know about the community channel, right? I think you'll fit right in. I don't have time for that malarkey, Tim. I've got a full time danger. We're I'm talking surprised. about. I'm surprised I'm up this late. I should be in bed. No, no, the, no, no, no. I'm mm. saying on oh, the community channel runs uh, during the day, not. Oh, does it? Oh, okay. You don't know about the community channel? No, I've heard of it. Yeah, you have to go <laughs> there. I mean, Mark runs shows there daily okay they had an incredible show today i think they're five hours and it's on your schedule you know i'm gonna drop the link to the community channel you have to subscribe man come on get with Tim, i'm not looking at the comments is anybody slagging me off in the comments look the comments are broken i can't oh. pull up jack oh. shit so guys don't don't blame me uh they're crushing what you what terry doing? they're absolutely like crushing you <laughs> sorry i said I'm they're crushing you me. they're absolutely crushing you <laughs> oh they hate I your guts man no. They love no, your hat, though. They love your hat. If there was more okay. love in the world, there'd be less hate. What can I say? No, that, that's, that's the key. More love, less right. hate. Look, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show other you some of the mean comments that they're saying. Other people's it. opinions of me are none of, none of my business. Yeah, there you uh, go. Double D says, "How high do you do you think I need to get to make Terry interesting?" Wow, I mean, this is hilarious wow. stuff here in the chat. Well, yeah, the only thing I can say to that is, um, yeah, why don't you come up and have a chat with Jim, uh, with Tim? Don't be, a, <laughs> don't be a keyboard warrior, full of hate. There you go. Come and face Link me for a the... private gentleman. Link for Marcelo. <laughs> See now, now, now they understand how entertaining yes. Marcelo actually is, right, Mark? Right. Okay. He's on the list. <laughs> I, 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 I don't have to stay here and and uh, have this abuse. I can go anywhere. They're teasing you, Terry. <laughs> They're teasing you, man. You gotta you gotta know how to take the heat. You know you gotta. They... Yeah. Well, there you go. Anyway, uh, um, I've got to go to bed, Tim, because it's getting yes. late. I've got to work tomorrow, my friend. But, so, but Terry, make sure to join. Uh, make sure to join for the community, okay, on the community channel. 
I, I will I will check it out definitely. because because Terry during the day the camera the camera is gonna have much more light okay so you can actually okay. go through the entire collection and show show all your watches okay exactly all right um, if you ever see me in the chat which is very rare I'm yes. I'm um Mr Crystal 1960 I believe anyway well okay okay we'll see I hey, listen I, I dropped the link to the community channel uh, yeah. I want you to go and subscribe to the community okay. Okay. Um, now, because I, I'm, I've really um, used this thing before, how do I get out of here, Tim? You Look, I'll, I'll just, I'll, 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 I'll throw you off. Okay. Thank so you very much. Wave goodbye to everybody, Terry. Thank you Lovely so much for talk. your first appearance. You, I can't believe I've actually come up and had a chat, and and yeah. you've had me. Up. Thank you, Tim. It's great fun. It's great fun. You it know, is. it's a couple of jokes. You know. All right. We'll see you later. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Peace and love. Yeah. Peace and love, baby. Take See care. ya, Terry. There you go. Hey, that was fun. Hey, Terry. Terry yeah, there you Terry, go. Cool guy. Look, it's fun. I, it's, this, I didn't this... bring any. I didn't bring any toys or dolls. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> so good. So good, guys. Let's. Uh, hey, Mark. Now that you're on, let's. Uh, let's go through the. I, I've got some ton of Moda uh, picks, so we can go through. Oh, there you go. Through Moda and uh, look at a little that? bit of the pricing, and then we're gonna wrap it up. Do you like this? Um, oh, well, you know, you know what this is actually, right? I think this was the first AP Torbion in house. Ah. That's that's why. And I mean, look, look at, the complications cool, but you like the dial. It's very Art Deco, <laughs> right? Uh, I, yeah. It's not my taste. I mean, if you're asking for my personal taste, I yes. think it's one of the ugliest things I've ever seen <laughs> on the planet. The personally, personally, but that's just my personal opinion. Yeah. Um, but it, it's kind of, uh, it's got a kind of a weird look. It's AP, right? It's not a Royal Oak. Right. Right. It's so other, like people complain. They say AP, they're fucking all they're known for making is Royal Oaks. It's a piece of shit brand. Do you want AP to go back to making this garbage? <laughs> okay. This is the alternative. This is the alternative, okay? So what do you want? What do you want? To tell me. Tell me what do you want? You want straight up trash? Or do you want ah, flex shit? You know? I'll yeah. take the flex you shit can, any day uh, of the week. Some flex shit. Yeah. You can wear this on Star Trek. It'd probably fit right in. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, this is kind of uh, it's got a I could see someone rocking this thing, you know, black tie. Pff, you bust this out. Torbion? A P. Mm -hmm. For it's his, historically important to AP brand, at least. You know, where yeah, they it's gotta be. Uh, they're asking. They're not even that much. Twenty six thousand. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do you think? Twenty six k. I mean, look. When you buy something like this, and you pay twenty six thousand, you bought it because you actually liked what this watch yes. is. You know, this is not a uh, investment. Okay. Yeah. Is this in the, although, although the investment, although I say it's not an investment, right? Although mm -hmm. Forest Torbion, right? For AP, mm -hmm. I think. And also it's a dress watch. Like, think about it this way. Would you get this or Calatrava? Uh, like my like my like my stepfather, uh, right? Calatrava five one nine six for twenty thousand. Okay, I would get the so Calatrava. You what? And and it's like a, it's a safe buy, right? It's a safe Calatrava. I is just, a safe I just buy. it's the dial. I I don't care for the, I don't care for the dial yeah. on this one. Yeah, this is very <clears throat> polarizing. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, you have to know how to rock this piece. But you know what? When you buy this, this watch says so much more about you than the Calatrava. Because Calatrava, it's kind of like, it's like telling someone, I enjoy McDonald's. That doesn't really say anything about you. Because everyone enjoys McDonald's. Everyone loves McDonald's. Everyone you can, does. Yeah. Yeah. So it literally, it doesn't tell anything about you. But you get this, I mean, it's like, oh, what the fuck? Wow! Oh, you, you start like that's a lot of money to put down. Do you think? Do you think the Boston yeah. collector has a secret watch box full of these? 
Hey, look, look, there's a fucking liar in the chat. David Carlin uh -oh. says says he doesn't like McDonald's. You fucking liar, David. What? Don't lie. What? Yeah, he's a liar. He's a liar. He's lying oh to God. What worst things, McDonald's. the worst part is that he's lying to himself. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, Mark, you were, you were asking a question. No, I said, I said, do you think the Boston Collector has a secret watch box full of these watches? I mean... He doesn't share. He doesn't unbox them. There's like his secret, uh, his little dirty secret. secret. Stash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> secret stuff. I yeah. Wonder... It could happen. Yeah. Uh... Oh, 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 wait. By the way, by the way, let's take a look mm -hmm. just real quickly. I was reminded that I, want... I needed to bring something up and then. Uh, wait, where is the. Where is it? Um, oh, here we go. So, you know, Eric Koo, Who? right? With Buckley. Not to be with, confused with Eric Wind. Right. Not to be confused <laughs> with Eric Wind. Exactly. Eric Koo. This is Eric Koo's website uh, ah. where he kind of, I guess, this is his like uh, his auction. Okay. Wow, look at this. <gasps> oh shit, he's got some his stuff here. Okay, there's it's an auction going on. Look at this. And I have no idea what I'm looking at. This is interesting, weird shit. Look at this. Bulgari Daniel Roth, 18k rose gold. It's bid right now 7,000. Look at this is the Bulgari. And I guess you can register to bid and you can bid. Look at that. That's interesting, right? It's got a little What's bit of the bid? Daniel... You said the bid seven grand on it right now. Yeah, yeah. What do you think for seven grand? Mm -hmm. No, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad for seven grand. It's better looking than that last one we looked at in the AP. Mm, it's better than the AP. Yeah, I mean, this is yeah Bulgari Daniel Roth. So it's Daniel Roth's case. Because you mm -hmm. can see that Daniel Roth, by the way, uh, uh, I think Louis Vuitton uh, purchased Daniel Roth, and they're, they're going to turn Daniel Roth brand around. This right. could be like a super collectible Daniel Roth because yeah. you know it's got. I mean, I, look, I it's agree. interesting. Yeah, I agree with America. It's kind of funky, but I don't hate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, like it's got. There's a lot. It's. It's kind of, it's got a lot going on and it's cut out, but it's not terrible, terrible. Mm -hmm. It's got the moon phase like in the center of the dial. It's kind of cool. It's got these running seconds with those three steps, right? Where, um, so one second's hand goes on this track, then the other one goes on this track, and then the third one goes on the most outer track. It's hard to see on here. Is that a second, a second time zone on the left or is that? I can't. No, 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 no. This is second. This is running seconds. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you probably don't understand. So if I you can't look, see, it's hard to see on my yeah, screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I'll I'll zoom it in. I'll zoom, zoom in. in. This is an interesting. Watch the the way yeah. the way they did this. Actually, Daniel Roth. I think now now because they just released a tourbillon for Daniel Roth, mm -hmm. and okay. it uses the same seconds, but it has a tourbillon. And I was always like, oh, where, where did he get this? And apparently it's it's a thing that he's known for. See, this is this is a running seconds hand with three with three hands on it. Okay. okay. So right now, if you look at this hand, the small seconds hand is not even engaged yet. So right now it's this middle seconds hand is pointing at 35 seconds. Mm -hmm. Or maybe this could be minute. No, no, this is seconds, okay? I thought it was minutes, but no, it's got regular minutes and, and hours. Okay, so this is seconds. This will go, this will rotate. Wait, let me get a pencil. Sorry. Fuck. This seconds hand is showing that it's 35 seconds right now. And it, as it goes out, this hand is, is actually approaching 40. So you 40, see, as right. when this leaves, when this, the, the, when this seconds hand goes, leaves and goes into yeah. infinity, see it in this nether space, yeah. this, sec, this hand is going to be showing you that it's 40 seconds. 50 seconds and then when it gets to 60 when this the small hand gets to 60 the long one is going to be at the zero right okay and it'll be sure so, 
Yeah, so it's like these three hands, they go around mm -hmm. and kind of telling you what time it is in this very interesting way. It's kind of interesting gimmick, you yeah. know, for fun. Um, I'm not sure about these chronograph uh, hand, uh, pushers. That could be, I mean, it's possible that it's either for a date or mm -hmm. the moon phase. Maybe the date or the moon phase. Yeah, but it looks like a chronograph at the moment. Yeah. Weird stuff. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. Interesting stuff. I mean, Eric Koo, guys, see, he's got interesting 7,000 at the moment. Uh, there's this what this day date here. This is a cool day date, actually. It's like an is this Onyx dial? I believe it could yeah, be. Yeah, it looks like an Onyx dial. Yeah. I don't, I'm not crazy about the diamonds in the in the six and the nine though. Uh-huh. It's polarizing, but you know, at least there's no loom, right? There's no yeah. loom in this watch. So you're getting a pure, pure dress watch. Uh the diamonds. I don't know. You know, I, I I've I've went from not liking diamonds to now kind of. You know, I like I'm thinking, diamonds. You can go day date. Yeah. You can go diamond, and it's not too much. These diamond. are not blingy. No, I just it's just the way they fill the circle on the nine and the six. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I mean, it's a perfect place to put them if you think about it, yeah. right? Like if you're gonna yeah. stick a diamond somewhere, stick it somewhere where it's barely gonna be noticed, and putting them yeah. into six and nine is kind of clever. They, obviously, they could have made just a regular marker and it yeah. was, would be holding a diamond, but they've done it for six and a nine. Mm. And now it, yeah. the dial looks symmetrical because it's got the crown at the 12, the date at the mm -hmm. three, then six and a nine is the only kind of right. without marker positions. And it, look at the onyx. Like, it's so clean. The dial is so clean. It doesn't have the, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock, four or five. You know, it doesn't have any of that nonsense. Oh yeah, so it is. It is. It says featuring a natural stone onyx, and this yeah. is thirty six size, <clears throat> uh, vetted and approved. Watch only between fifteen and twenty thousand. Look at the. I mean, pretty clean on it's the back. Pretty, yeah, it's very clean. Yeah, I mean, you have to. This, you have to like the dial. You have to. Yeah, if you don't like the dial, well, don't like. I mean, you could. Yeah. You can go out and get a generic dial any day of the week i think mm -hmm. as far as specialty dials go this is one of those that um you know they have an onyx dial without the six and the nine at all it's just black my old boss had one it was all black you like that one more it was beautiful that was gorgeous yeah it was gorgeous nice i wonder what the difference is like uh which one people like more put up a poll uh private gentleman private gentleman hop on the stream hop on the stream uh, because it will get private gentleman says afraid my <clears throat> days here on this stream are over when someone tells me to f off live and that's what i'll do i'll listen okay look uh, private gentleman Who told him to f off? look it was uh it was a like a high uh, situation i was think that was oc or? yeah it was oc yeah because oh, okay. oc was frustrated oc was trying to yeah. tell me to shut the fuck up uh, so <laughs> that i won't say anything i oc is so worried about me i don't know why yeah. you know it's like guys like are you seriously like why I, I don't understand why people are worried about me like 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 that i'm gonna do or say something like what what can i that you can't literally guys the people that tell you that i should be careful they're just fucking trolls like i know trolls. what i'm doing they're just fucking trolls they're concerned trolling you know they're concerned trolling they're they're trying to say and then but then the actual people like they listen to these trolls and they think that there actually is something that i could do to get yeah. to get me in trouble but there isn't just guys just be cool we're all we're all good here the chat yeah. is fucking busted let me reload yeah i can't yeah mine's busted too <clears throat> so while tim's reloading boom i'm back oh, there he is boom that was quick sorry let's uh let's look at what else he's got i'm love uh, honestly i'm liking this day date i'm i'm in love i'm in love with this mm -hmm. if this was a 40 it could boom. be my one and done let's see look at this vacheron constantin malt oh so this is a malt with 
look at the dial. It's like skeletonized to reveal. Oh, shh. This is the old version of the. Because, yeah. uh, you know, Vacheron right now has the same retrograde day date, but the in this one, the day, the day of the week uh, is in circle, whereas the new version has it like. Uh, retrograded as well so this is very sexy sexy watch look at that the dial holy mo and it's got uh multi's cross engraved on the snapback mechanism here mm -hmm. on the on this dial it's crazy stuff automatic fashion look at those hands the swords they're so sharp yeah, they're beautiful yeah beautiful stuff uh it's it's got number oh okay it's limited to 247 pieces that's i don't like when they engrave it on the the case yeah. side. but and you know the case is not very ugly a lot of vacheron has a lot mm. of these like very ugly cases yeah. but this is not it this this looks still very very good and the finish on the on the back is nice rotor is cool it's got a gold part very cool piece. I wonder what what he wants for this. Uh, oh, this could be an auction. Oh shit! Fifteen to twenty five thousand. Cool stuff. Negroni, welcome to the show. Oh, what is he doing over there? Uh, looking glass. Uh, it's always good to cry in private. I'm not sure what they're talking about. Oh, uh, they're going yeah, to Yeah, it's just a day just. Yeah. Yeah, so cool. Uh, I'm pretty check. sure Private General that Marcel and I told each other to F off live on air today. It's, uh, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. You get over it. <laughs> yeah, listen, man. People tell each other. You know, and part part of the, the fun of the show is kind of it is to have a bit of a, an honest disagreement. The shenanigans. You know? Like telling someone, telling someone truth to their face is pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, and you know, and then you apologize and you move on. It's yeah, and then you know, you, at least you got the truth, yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And then you could be truth to your, to, true to yourself because a lot of people, I think, they like to go through life. And yeah, it happened to me. I, I was one yeah. of those people. I was look at you know, look at John Buckley today. Said at the, at the end of the interview, he seemed really happy with you and and with everyone. Yeah, was, some you know, people they told me you guys weren't nice. Yeah, yeah. some way. Who, yeah. who told him? That, what the hell? What a messed up thing to say. But you know what? People go around and tell all kinds of nonsense. Yeah, so, yeah that we're not nice. What the what the hell? Yeah, but uh, you know, I think we I we think all know who, who it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he seemed uh, to have a good time. Yeah, Tudor Qatar. Whoa, look at that there. state of Qatar. Yeah. Wow. Oh, and look at the 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 date. The date is weird as well. Since yeah, the nineteen, it's, it's English, but it's in a weird weird font. Was brand yeah. new with stickers, everything. Wow, that's actually I actually kind of like that. It's cool looking. It's different. Yeah, uh, and you know, Middle East plays a big big role in mm -hmm. in the watch market because you know, they they buy a lot of watches over there. Uh, wow, this one. Fully stickered, four to six thousand. It's not even that that expensive. I mean, it's cool mm -hmm. to have like if you're gonna have a if you really want a tutor and you want something a little bit more oomph. It's a great great choice. Look at this Cartier. That's a cute cute Cartier. Wow. Oh, it's got like a crown protector. You see that? It, it, it's kind of like uh, Bellon Blue, where yeah. it has like in, in interior crown. Oh, pa Paris Some Japanese. No, no, it's Chinese. I think it's Chinese. Chinese? Uh, no, no, actually. Uh, who fucking knows? I think it's Japanese. Yeah, it could be anything. It kind of, these first two characters, they look, this looks Chinese, but the other one looks Japanese. I don't yeah. Know. But that look, look at the so case side. That's nice cool. shape. You know, it's I very, like yeah, symmetric. It's very classy looking. Yeah. This, this is one of those that they could re-release. Re mm-hmm. You know, it's only two thousand two hundred right now. Uh, auction ends on the twenty first. Uh, plenty of time. Cool stuff. And this, this is like, this is the kind of shit. You know, 
like Mark, like if you yeah. were were tasked to find watches and resell them, you know, like like yeah. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I would be trying to pick up, you know, and resell. Like these these are beautiful. Look at this Breitling. You know, if you yeah, found this Breitling somewhere, you like, that's a gem. Look at it. Oh, it look this like is you know, like it doesn't look like every other Breitling. You know. Yeah. Oh, this is the special one. You know, this is what the yeah. the new re release was based on. Okay. You see that that hand here? That's a chronograph. That's a uh -huh. slow chronograph. Did you hear about this bullshit? Slow chronograph. What the? F this thing. This is a chronograph. Yeah. And the minutes. It tells you how many minutes pass. You run the chronograph, and this this is a. There's no seconds. It'll just tell you how many minutes passed. Yeah. Get it? It's weird. It's weird. It's cool. Though. It's a good looking yeah. watch. It's different. Yeah, it's different. Exactly. It's pretty accurate too. Plus mm -hmm. two point four seconds a day. Mm. Still runs really well. Three thousand four hundred. Special cool shit is nice. That's that paddock is clean. Nice. No complaints here. Yeah, it's clean. JLC, that's a nice JLC. That's a nice yeah. Zenith. I like that the Zenith. I like the colors. Yeah. On it. It's different. Yeah. It's like a salmon dial almost. Mm -hmm. Right. This is a good website. Wow. Eric Koo, guys. Uh, Eric Koo, not to be confused with Eric Wind. Ooh, Both yeah, don't do that. <clears throat> I thought you were going to lose him there for a second. He's like, what do you mean, Eric Wind? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that. I was, like that was entertaining. You did you did a nice job with that interview too. Oh, thank you. Good yeah, stuff. It was, yeah, it was fun. It was different. I was trying to mm -hmm. give you a, a different interview. Why you you guys like this type of interview better than the in interview I did with the timepiece gentleman? Um, which one was more fun? So here's the thing: the timepiece gentleman one was really chaotic because you had all the different people. This one, you had more of a conversation with him. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like you guys were just kind of shooting the shit, so it was it, it came off really well. Mm, you know? Thank you. I mean, that's kind of yeah. what I was trying to do with the timepiece jump, but, but you know, we got a lot of. There was too many people for that. Yeah, it was too many. You know questions. What I mean? he, right, he's getting questions. You know, everyone's got their different questions, and it just, it, you know, so then everyone yeah. it, it skews it, melt, it waters it down. So I thought yeah. the fact that you did a long time by yourself with him. And then brought in OC and, and Diego, at, you know yeah. what I mean, to come in. I thought that worked out really good. Mm, yeah, People OC asked some, some hardcore questions. Yeah, that was. Yeah. <sighs> but it's good to leave for like that kind of stuff. It's good to leave for a little bit later because. Well, yeah, uh, you, you know, establish wanna... a relationship with them. I just you know, look. I like. Yeah. I, I don't mean like you know. Honestly, I don't even care about that stuff. I I just yeah. wanna. I, I want to have people on to talk. To talk. About what they're interested in, and they want to. They don't mm -hmm. want to touch that subject. They don't have to touch that subject. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you know, I want. Uh, and, you know, and this like Buckley's was very cool because he like answered it. Like he answered yeah. all the questions. Like, mm -hmm. and I, I wish more people were like that. A lot of people like they they think that you know answering you know you know saying stuff like this is oh it's you know it can get them in trouble or it could get the other guy in trouble. But it's like. No, no, it's not. It's yeah. you know, honesty is the most important thing, especially for dealers. Like telling the truth about each other, mm -hmm. it's important. Transparency, it's transparency, is paramount. And like Roman, you know, tr not talking to me. That's like, but th th that's not good for for him because he's like, you know, it, it right. doesn't seem like he wants to answer the question. I mean. What does Roman think? I'm going to ask him like some kind of impossible questions or try mm. to get him on a gotcha? No. But he's got this idea and whatever. It is what it is. We'll see. It. We'll see. It's everything finds a way to kind of work out at the end of the day, you know? And uh, I just want to give everybody a fair shake. Fair shake. Wow. Look at this thing. Uh, what the? F this is ugly. Yeah. Oh, it's a Torbjorn? What the hell? Ooh. Oh, my God. It's IWC, Da Vinci Perpetual Calendar. Yeah. That's insane. Da Vinci. You know, IWC, Da Vinci, they, they, this is like a, they don't do this model anymore. Kind of a dead model. 
But, you know, that's pretty cheap for... Is this gold? I can't believe it. Manual wind, uh, 39 mil, perpetual chronograph tourbillon. What the... Do you you understand how complicated this thing is? Perpetual calendar chronograph tourbillon. And right now it's for under seven thousand. Is this gold? It's got to be gold, right? Yeah, eighteen k yellow gold. Yeah, King bargains of the century. Uh, yeah, Andy, uh, very private gentleman. Come back, come on, man, come back. Be cool, everybody. Be cool. You know, everybody's so weird lately. Um, let's see. What else? What else? Did we go through? Oh, oh let's take a look at this P- Patek Philippe. Look at that TV. Grubel, Gubelin. Gubelin. What does that mean? It's pretty cool. I, I think that it's possible like a Tiffany stamp. Gubelin could have been mm-hmm. like a retailer or something. 1300 That's okay. It's going to go up in a bit, but for a Patek dress watch, 1300 Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Mm-hmm. Let's take a look at some more Moda. Moda shit. <gasps> Holy shit. Here we go. What's that? That's a 5711. Mm-hmm. That's for 90,000. 5711 yeah. for 90,000. That has calmed down a lot. You know, it's yeah. really a lot now. Now and now it's discontinued, right? You would think that after this continuation of this legendary, legendary reference, the prices would only go up. But look at this; it, it came back down a little bit. Okay. It's what one hundred fifty thousand mark. Yeah, one hundred fifty. I remember. I remember you guys. I remember you guys looking at them. Yeah, that's very cheap. Very cheap. Very disappointing to see. It's I so, think you freeze. so cheap. I'm going to refresh real quick, all right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the chat sp- is frozen. It's well, all my busted. screen. Yeah, you keep freezing on me, too. I don't yeah. think you're freezing. Oh, I'm freezing. So okay, look. Yeah. Hold uh, on. We'll, we'll, yeah. yeah. Refresh. We'll go for another 15 minutes, guys, uh, to four hours, and then I'm going to wrap it up because, yeah, the chat is busted. For some reason, the chat has broken, and, you know, I want to keep this to... Uh, the stream to the interview. So we're going to wrap it up, guys. If you got any final questions, uh, uh, you know, put them in the chat. Now we're going to, we're going to rapid fire answer everything. And I think that's a great, great show for, for the day. I have to, I'm I, fuck. Uh, I have to go somewhere. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing my stream tomorrow, probably from location. I'm gonna be on location somewhere else. I, I just need I need to go somewhere for two nights and then I'll be back. Uh, I'm gonna be streaming from from places, okay? From places. So, yeah, so I have to wake up like six o'clock tomorrow or something and uh, take a bus. Okay. I'm doing huh? Doing research. I'm doing research for, for some stuff. So I hopefully Very everybody's cool. gonna be okay. Yeah. You gonna do your studying up on uh, Eric Koo? Yeah, oh, of course. And I need to get him on the show. <laughs> I want to get him on yeah. the stream now. N- you know, now now that I completely embarrass myself, I'm telling you, like, I, there's very little <laughs> that I know about watches. Even though I've been talking about watches for so long, I still know very very little. Yeah. And you know, you gotta be on. I gotta be honest as well. You know, getting into the old school stuff. Like it's hard. It's very like I just don't know enough people. Like now, now that you know, we had a conversation with Buckley. I can start. Like I have, I know Buckley. You know, I know him a little bit more. You know, right. I I can start becoming more interested in you know what Eric Koo and what these guys did back in the day. But like, expand your network of people. Yeah. I have to expand my network, expand my Mm -hmm. interest. I was also not interested in that stuff. Now that I kind of know all the basics, all the Starbucks shit, Mm -hmm. you know, now I can start, uh, you know, you know, I I, I wasn't, I just gotta be honest. I wasn't interested in vintage stuff. Now I, now I, now that I am, I'm, I'm going to start bringing these people out. It's perfect segue as well. 
Uh, yeah, so this this one, let's uh, 57, 11. I, you know when people are going to start buying 57, 11s again? When's that? Uh, I think people are waiting until this becomes a 60K. You know, ah. I mean, Mark, I, I got to be honest with you. I I think... This is a this is a really cool watch to have in the in the collection. Like if mm -hmm. if these were sixty k, that's double retail. Yeah, you know I I wouldn't like I would feel comfortable having this and like a Daytona. You would go to a two watch collection. Yeah. Ooh, hot take. Yeah. Yeah, hot take. There you go. You guys. Yeah, I know that this watch is not worth. It's not worth one hundred fifty thousand. But at 60k, as a two P, like I just, you know, I got, uh, I got crap behind me, mountains of books <laughs> and shit, mountains fragrances, right? It, it's hard to keep track of everything, you know. It's, mm -hmm. and I'm getting older, and I know I'm telling you this, but it's, it, it's real. It weighs down on me. I don't want to, like, I, I don't want to have have to think about, you know about all these things what's gonna mm -hmm. happen to it i want to i want to ease my my mental burden Fair i don't want to become minimalist but no but i just don't want to be weighed down with so much crap problem is so, when you have too many like when do you wear them yeah yeah exactly it's so, right it's, it's better to have few that you wear all the time that you're right. known for wearing Rather than just switching watches every single day. Yeah, we were talking about this on the community. Like, you can end up with a box of twenty shitters. Yeah, like Terry. Not, like, look at Terry, you, right? You look at Terry. It's a perfect the, uh, example. He ended up with the. He said, I think forty watches, and it looks yeah. like a lot of his watches are like in that from three hundred to a thousand dollar range. Yeah, he could have had one, like, solid watch. Yeah, he could have one or one or two. Killer watches instead of you know. So how are you going to ever wear forty well, watches? He's, he's like a Canadian wristwatch <laughs> monk before intervention. Yeah. See, Canadian yeah. watch monk is making progress. He's cutting crap and he's consolidating into some serious brands, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just picked Except up the spaghetti bullshit that he pulled last yeah. time. Well, yeah, I was to say he's picked up three recently. He got the Tudor, the 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 Glamour Date, the, mm -hmm. uh, the spaghetti Scametti, and the Oris. And uh, look, he he had the Panerai that he turned over as Zenith, right? Mm -hmm. He went, he really like he went into serious watches finally. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I, I want I want to see Terry do something like this as well. Like at least one serious. You don't have to like forty watches, way too many. Like yeah, one serious watch and then twenty kind of, <laughs> you know, that's that's decent. But yeah. one serious watch is nice to have. Look right. at this thing. Uh, Buckley should should go for this. Actually, mm. look at that's a day date champagne with diamond. diamond dial. What? It's beautiful. It is incredible, guys. Upvote. Uh, let's upvote. And what do you think? Should Buckley get something like this? I think this is fucking minted. All right, so minted. Mm -hmm. The diamonds on the champagne—they're so subtle. Like you can't because. Background is it's like they blend in with the dial, so it just looks like a champagne clear dial that's sparkly. So cool. Uh, Yuri Nator says, "I'm I'm looking for a diamond on the dial, Timmy. I mean, that's it. That's it. That's right there. Yeah. Bam. I can't. I still can't read the. Uh, can't see the chats. Oh uh, yeah, it's Boston. I mean, they, well, guys, yeah. we can't read the chats, unfortunately. That's why." Uh, I'm not even gonna, you know. I could start trying to get a lot more people on, but I think we're gonna mm -hmm. like another eight minutes. Any guys? Any final requests? And upvote, guys! Please upvote the live stream. Let me make sure the redirect link is working. Um, and if anybody wants to send me some, because uh, I'm gonna be taking a bus most likely, mm. but. I mean, if I can rate, I mean, look, I can't do it. Two hundred dollars in in PayPal's or super chats, I'll take the train. That could really help yeah. me out. But hey, look, Save if somebody, time. hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop PayPal link. If somebody wants to help out, 
Uh, because I'm still going to be doing shows tomorrow. Um, this is the train. Uh, and by the way, I might meet up with OC on uh, Saturday. We might do like Saturday? a Gonzo stream or something. Oh, train. Nice. Help. I don't know. If somebody wants to. You don't have yeah. to, guys. It's on. It's optional. Because the bus. It's been a while bus, since you did a Gonzo stream. Yeah, I know. I know. It's. I think been, your fans are looking forward to it. <laughs> It's been hard, you know. It's been I really tough like the... with mm -hmm. with the whole Anthony thing breaking apart. Yeah, like I don't even like I I don't even want to go. Like I can't. It, it's so difficult. I mean, but I have to. I have to do this trip. Is actually, but mm -hmm. it's very tough. And then next week, I, I think I'm gonna go to Philly as well. We'll do a oh, Gonzo cool. from Philly. Yeah. It's, See that, guys? Tough. There's lots to look forward to. Yeah. Oh, this content coming up. Uh, look, uh, mm -hmm. this trip, um, it's kind of, I need to keep it low key, uh, but I'll still be doing streams uh, and I'm going to be collecting uh, kind of, uh, I'm going to be collecting a lot of stuff for the archives, mm -hmm. you know, pictures, video. Uh, I'm, it's basically for B-roll. I'm going to get a shit ton of B-roll, guys. Okay. Nice. Yeah. You're going to love it. It's a ton of B-roll and a thousandth episode is coming up, so we'll we'll have we'll have a lot of fun. Private gentleman is still in the chat. Private gentleman, please hop on the stream. Say good night to everyone, or at least. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. And guys, what do you think about this diamond dial uh, uh, day day? People are not digging this. I can't believe they're not digging this. I like it. Why they're not digging? Kind of classic this? look. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of beautiful. Hmm. Nobody likes it? Okay, let me pull up the next piece. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Got a lot of stuff. Uh, here we go. Oh, that's the... Oh, shit. Actually, this is something special. It's AP. Yeah? Okay. Diver, but this looks like one of those older models because... It's before the Color. the hour markers yeah. became ugly. Like this is with still yeah. cool hour. Like these are nice hour markers. Uh, look at that. And then there's a ship on the back. Wow, the engraving. I actually kind of like that engraving. Yeah. Looking serious. Looking, look at that. Beautiful stuff. Tapisserie dial. It's AP seven eighteen thousand. Have collapsed, you know, like that's a nice yeah. AP. You know, yeah. this at the peak of the of the crazy market, uh, Mark, these were going for fucking 60 grand. Jesus. Yeah. And because it like that's a really nice looking one. There's so many ugly, ugly crap. Um 18,000. Wow. Let's see this one. Oh, this is the kind of ugly stuff. That I'm talking about. Uh, actually, yeah. not too bad. Is this ceramic? Mm -hmm. Las Vegas strip edition, one of 400 in the world. Box, papers, accessory comes with tag. Oh, no papers. Sorry, no, no papers. Paper. Oh, we got private gentlemen. Private gentlemen, welcome back. Oh, oh hi. Hey. Yeah, I hope you're all right. Yes. Everything okay? Yeah. Uh, just. Uh... Yeah, I, I didn't want to uh, offend anybody. Uh, no, uh, private gentleman, you were offended last time, but you shouldn't be offended. You know, sometimes, you know, people get all, you know, get a little bit riled up on these shows. It's okay. Yes. People lose patience. They lose, you know. Um, I've got to be honest. Um, the yeah. um, I have tried quite hard quite a few times, and uh, uh -huh. I've been sort of uh, in a couple of, conflagrations uh, on yeah. two or three occasions now and um, I've got to be true to myself and uh, to what, what I'm trying to achieve and I really do think that I, I need to bug out now permanently but I'd like to leave with but you. But why? Please. Why do you say that? Why do you say you need to bug out? Like why? It's, why? It's, it's, it's this, this particular stream Timmy, although my wife and I are very fond of you and my sons are um, the and I, I say that with a reiteration. 
Um, mm -hmm. But that's that's one thing. But um, it's important. This particular stream is just not my gig, Tim. You know, and uh, yeah, the, uh, I, I'd like to be able to leave with uh, your blessing and approval, and uh, sort of just go elsewhere if that's okay. Oh. Oh, private gentleman, if you want that, of course, it's it's not a problem. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't want you to come here, you know, against your own will. I don't want to throw yeah. you out. I don't look, you know, I, I, you and me actually never had any problems. I mean, I don't think, yeah, it's, you know, you just, had some, yeah. It's doing, uh -huh. it's doing my head. And it's it's not doing my health any good, and uh, mm, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, achieving, I'm not achieving anything. And as I said at the end of the day, yes. Um, you need you need trolls, but you don't mm -hmm. need the type of trolls that you you are having, All right? It's a bit like eating, you know, cheese. You know, you want mm -hmm. a nice you want to eat a nice Stilton cheese, but you don't want one with too many bugs inside it. So, mm. um, well, I mean, I I, I, I think I, cheese cheese reference is good. Like cheese, actually, cheese is not good for health. Right, but like it tastes good, and like a l sometimes cheese is a yeah, a little bit of cheese is okay. So a little bit of trolling yeah. is okay. Yeah, yeah tro trolling. I, is I good. can't cut. I can't cut out troll. Like even if I tried, right? Like I wouldn't be able to because yeah. sometimes it's very tough. By the way, there's some really nefarious trolls like that are on the next level where they're like they're pretending to be super concerned about me. You know, so it's like there's other mm. things that I that we have to also take into account, private gentleman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just that, uh, you know, uh, the I, I'm not going to make any, as I said, my, our feelings and our relationship with you is one thing, but yeah. um, I'm not going to make any headway on on this stream uh, of, of what I want to achieve or what yeah. I want to contribute. So basically, oh. I'm just, I want to bow out and I'm, I'm asking for your approval and blessings to, to go elsewhere, you know. Where do you want to go, private gentleman? Well, there's no. I don't want to say because mm. the trolls are just going to follow me, you mm. know. And Bro. they. Uh, oh, I mean, sure. I mean, you can you can tell you can tell me in private where are you going, and I can help you. You know, maybe in some way make the transition easier. You know, if you're looking to, you know, go to somewhere else, or if you're looking to work on some content, because you know you you do have it your own YouTube channel. By the way, guys. A very private gentleman has his own YouTube channel. It's very, you know, it's very interesting content over there. I highly recommend you go and subscribe. Don't go to just yeah. troll, but you know, go to watch. And maybe, maybe private gentleman is looking to just focus on videos because you know what? I tell you what, I, a lot of people like attack me for not making videos, but you know, stuff that happens on the streams it does affect you know my 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 psyche. You know, it's. For me to make videos, you know, I have to be in certain mood, you know, it's and listen, like if you if you come on these streams and then they put you in a certain state of mind that, that you know, it affects your other stuff that you want to do. I totally understand it, private gentleman. You're not a hostage here. Like if if you come on these streams and it helps you out, that's great. If it doesn't help you out, that it's OK to change and do other stuff, you know? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it. it all good things come to an end and uh, yeah. I had ideas and plans and stuff that I, I wanted to contribute mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to many on, on the stream, but um, yeah. it just, it just isn't going to work when there are too many barriers. And I really, at the end of the day, my dad what did used you to call do? it. I, tell us what you wanted to do. What kind of well, things? The, the, my father used to call it being a stick in the wheel. And uh, uh -huh. I feel like I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm a lollipop stick in a bicycle wheel. So um, I really need to break that stick and just get out. Really, yeah. Uh, they, I'm not 100 percent sure about the metaphor. Yeah, well, my dad was quite strange with his metaphors, anyway. But um, mm -hmm. the uh, being in the industry that he was in, but yeah, I mean, uh, the, I, I've explained how. My contribution to you, how I, I wanted you to go forward in in the letter I sent you, you know that's basically yeah what my you know um, that was a very long letter and I, I actually I haven't read it yet uh because I, I yeah. want to give it proper respect and you know read it yeah. 
when I have time, everything, I can concentrate. I think uh, the way it's going is good. You know, I mean, you, did you like today's great. show? Did you like today's uh, interview and the, for the past couple of days? I, I, yeah? I watched the gentleman uh, last night on another stream, and um, the um, uh, it's a very very nice chap. In fact, um, my, my wife bought a watch from an associate of his a couple of blocks away in um, uh, the other big street in, is it Fifth Street in New York? Fifth Avenue. Uh, uh, Fifth Avenue, yeah. Yes. And um, a guy that, that they know each other quite well. And that guy is amazing as well. So, yeah, I mean, that that he's he's straight talking and um, – the, uh, he's got some kind of, he calls himself Tuscany Rose or, or something. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. He's got uh, some kind of, John Buckley. Italian. Yeah, Tuscany. Yeah. He's got some kind of link with Italy, like myself, yeah? Is he? Uh, I believe or, so, um, yeah. I've... Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, That's he's a straight That's actually a great talk. question, why why he chose that kind of username. Well, we should we should ask him that next time he's, uh, he's on the yeah. stream. Yeah. Because yeah. the... Um, yeah, I mean, Mark runs a L Luca. M Mark there runs mm -hmm. a great uh, community channel during the day, and uh, yeah, he's done you. some. You've done some amazing uh, hours. I've been watching some of that, and it's I absolutely. That. Yeah, you really done Why well. Why don't you um, ever join Mark on the shows? That's I, all, I, you know. I have I have been oh. on a couple of times. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, right. when Mark's jumped off, and Brian and I have been sort of um keeping it going um yeah it, it's right. pretty good that um that feeder i call it a feeder channel and mm -hmm. uh, i don't yeah. know if that's the correct terminology to to use or not but um no, yeah. What, yeah what's oh, say, sorry say it again a feeder channel what was it a channel yeah it's a bit like, like a feeder school a feeder channel to your to the bigger oh, channel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like additional where people can go yeah. and kind of digest what happened here and kind of talk mm -hmm. about and plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a bit like uh, you have the five course meal a la carte table dot in the night time, and then that yeah. is your sort of daytime restaurant, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in my father's speak, and. Uh, the um you'd have to know catering to know um mm. those terminology uh, words yeah. but yeah I mean, the uh, I think it's going well I mean you know seventeen thousand views on the Anthony stream uh, a couple of nights in a row the thumbs ups were three four hundred a yeah. pop you know you're doing really well keep going you know thank you keep thank going. you I mean. Great. Yeah, but I want you to be part of this, of course. You know, because you you help you help me out. You help me out a lot, private gem. You help me. Yeah, I know. I had plans. It isn't going to work, and there are other forces involved, and um, I I can't. There's I can't make any headway. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm going to end up being a whipping stick. A bit like mm -hmm. um, what, what happens to Marcello on occasions. And, oh, uh, that's, that's, not my cup, that's, not, that's not my cup of tea, you know. And, no, uh, this, look, eh, look, look, everybody's, I've be, yeah. I've got to be fair, you know. Sure. He's a lovely, he's a lovely guy, a lovely, lovely bloke, and yeah. uh, he's got a heart of gold underneath all that. And uh, oh. you know, some of the stick he gets really is not n not really justified, but the um. The, I, I think the only way forward now uh, with the watch yeah. industry is especially with this um, suspected tragedy. Well, Marcelo, but, but you know, uh, just weeks. private gentleman, you know, I, I got to be honest, Marcelo also, he knows how to dish out as well. You know, he knows how to get under people's skin as well. You know, he's not innocent uh, too. But, yeah, he, he, you know, at the end of the day, Marcelo knows kind of he has accepted like whatever the the bargain or uh yeah i mean you got to remember he was very badly treated yeah. on another channel oh yeah oh um, he was terribly treated terribly eight, in eight, oh. 18 months ago there was a terrible uh altercation I mean, he, he, he got death threat you phone know? call so I mean, yeah ter yeah terribly treated that was a very sad moment in the uh 
the the you know the history of uh, horology horological streaming that mm-hmm. that 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 was, that was terribly unjust yeah. but um the uh that, that had an effect on me i was quite quite uh, irritated by that but um the uh, the recent events in the industry um with the allegations online whether uh, which are not which are not proven um or or, or unproven or unproven um has sort of put another mark on watch collecting you yeah. know and and watch watch uh, watch involvement horological involvement we've got to be a bit careful now yeah you know, could have uh, been a laughing stock you know uh, but by the way private gentleman i am i am actually working in the background very much like paul thorpe uh, on the on another project i mean i'm com- yeah, not that i'm the head guy but I'm a side contributor. I'm kind of trying to help. Actually, uh, you know, there's going to be something that, that that's going to be announced very soon that I yeah. think you 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 know maybe you would want to be a part of. I I, I don't want you to kind of le- you know you, I understand you want to leave the watch community. You want to leave on the good terms on your own on your own terms, and I I, I respect that. But I, you know, I want to leave the door open, and you know, if you ever want to come back, yeah, it's uh, all. I mean, I'm here. I'm here to help. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to um, try in a few months' time, try another stream, you know, and uh, yeah. obviously the trolls are going to follow me there, you know, and uh, well, we're I don't get know. Uh, they, but, some some of these know. guys, you know, when they find out, they'll yeah, they'll follow you, of course, but. You know, but I mean, you know, they want to they want to do this kind of thing in life. Then you know, let them carry on. That's their gig at the end of the day. You know. Yeah, but you uh, you'll, you'll be able to block them there, and they'll get bored. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I I won't make the same mistakes uh, second time round as I did uh, unfortunately when I was in your company. So um, right. Yeah, the uh, that, that's it really. But I don't think I could contribute anymore. They, I mean, as it says in one of my videos, I can lead a horse to water. I can't force you to drink. So um, yeah, you can't you know. make the water drink the horse. It's impossible. Yeah, you so, can't make yeah. water drink the horse. Yeah, it's yeah. impossible. Physically impossible. But I understand. <laughs> I understand. Listen, Mister Private Gentleman, give it a try. Give it a try, and uh, yeah. you know you've got my email. You're always yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. You know you've been great. Yeah. You know, lovely, lovely guy. You're a nice fella. I really, uh, uh, you know, I'll, you know, you're really a nice bloke. And um, I'm just, uh, you know, that, that's my lot, really. So, right, right I'll, I'll leave you and uh, take care. All right. Have a All the best. have a good Bye-bye. night. Have a good night. We'll we'll right. be in in contact. And uh, if if it doesn't work out, you're always welcome to come back yeah. work it out hey diego welcome back i was just i was just wrapping up the show okay that's fine okay. We'll, we'll start up a, a community stream without you oh <laughs> uh, i just had a i just went and had a burger a hot dog smoked a pack of marble reds drank a coca-cola and shot off some fireworks wow Cafe. there's two i don't know america Land of what? free. Oh, land. <laughs> <laughs> Home of the rational. Really, yes. really, really sad to see uh, a private gentleman's resignation. USA. Mm. USA. I. Uh, yeah. It, it's really sad. It's a sad day. It's a sad yeah. day. When I think about all of his contributions, I mean, just think about yeah. of all, all the incredible moments that he's provided mm. to the show over the years. Think about, I, I mean, a lot of what, 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 what are the top, what are the top three that come to mind for you, Tim, of his his most significant contributions? Um, yeah, just you know the, it, the biggest one right off the top. I, of I don't even know where to start. I mean, there's too many. Yeah, there, there's just so many of them. There's so many that there's so many powerful images of of so many incredible moments of him on the show that I can't even think of any right now because they're just bombarding me. It's just so it's sad. Lot. Yeah. Is this uh, a look, lot? Yeah, it's just maybe like I'll do my top ten. Maybe I'll do my top ten, uh, <laughs> like video. If if we're not gonna, no, if, I'm serious. I'm serious. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, we need to take it seriously. I mean, it's a very solemn occasion. 
Hey, Marcelo hey, time. Boys. Hey, boys. Hey, hello, boys. <laughs> Diego, I just got the gun exactly like you. Oh, I'm so in love with it. <laughs> what is I'm going just, on? What it's just going? making so happy. Um, you know, I have collections of dolls. I have like thousands of them. Thousands of them. Yeah, I love dolls. Uh, how are you guys? <laughs> hey, Marcelo. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> hey, how about, hey, Mar Mark, I know there was a bit of a... Thing. Oh, we're fine. You guys worked we're it fine. out? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're okay. Uh, sorry, Mark. I'm just, you know, was drunk. You know, when we are drunk, we are fucked up in the head. You probably I know, know that. that. <laughs> you know, you know me, Marcel. I just disappear for an hour, go eat lunch, and come back. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but... uh, <sighs> uh, so, hey, I, you guys want to talk? You guys, okay, listen. Now that everybody's back, I don't know. You guys want to keep going through these motor picks, uh, see what what's going on with the watch market, or motor picks? Let's do it. Let's let's do, do the motor. I got like forty of them. Maybe if there's what is, a super can I can, too, I, can yeah. I get the panel's reaction to the John Buckley interview? Yes. Oh, sure. Uh, Mark, yeah. Yeah. I I actually I really liked it. I thought Tim did a nice job. I, and then when you guys came in at the end, it you know added you know to to what was going on. But I, I thought it was I thought it was good. I thought he had a good time. I thought he uh, he enjoyed himself. So he did, despite what others had told him, what it would be like. Oh yeah, let me use the retro. I'll be right back. You guys, you guys. Now, now that I'm away, you can tell the how you, what you really thought about the interview. Ah, there you go. Yeah. All right. Goodbye. Yeah, look, I put I promise that Diego, I have to do the doll thing. <laughs> I thought it was a good interview. It was good. Tim was great. Tim was great one on one. Yeah. I knew he would be. I knew he would be. I think it's a good uh, first appearance, and yeah. then maybe. He can jump on the panel next time there's a big watch news or something like that, and we can get his feedback or his we, we didn't even we didn't even talk about the watch market at all like yeah. the the prices of watches, what's hot, what's not, what's selling, what isn't so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of ground to cover the next time he comes on hey, well see you got you guys got the o g the guy that actually started the whole uh, even concept of gray market, even before they used to call it yeah. gray market. He, he, he was responsible for naming the meteorite dial. Yeah, because he oh, came wow. from outer space. Yeah. Ooh, I should talk to him. <laughs> no, it was good. It was good. I liked how uh, open he was with his language and mm -hmm. his sense of humor. He wasn't he wasn't like sheltered or anything, so it was it was really no. he didn't entertaining. Worry about what, what, he didn't worry about what other people uh, thought or were right. going to, how they were going to react exactly. to what he was saying. So it was refreshing. Yeah, you guys asked him some questions where I was like, "Ooh, he's not going to answer that based on what he's said previously," and he did. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Okay, all right, he's a straight shooter." What would you have asked him if you had the chance? What burning question did you have ready at the at the at the go that you didn't have an opportunity to, to I really, ask? I really I really didn't have a lot of questions. Um I reached out to or I was showing a watch I was interested in to somebody else. They referred me to him, so that was kind of like my intro to him. I don't have TikTok. I don't believe do in I. I don't believe in, in the app itself, so I tried to find him on, like, I tried to see if he has a store online. He doesn't have anything, no eBay store. So um, that was really my first time being exposed to him. There so, you go. It's a good guy, though. Uh, uh, so he's doing only TikTok. He doesn't do uh, YouTube at all? No, not really. It's TikTok and Instagram mostly, right? Yeah, I think I, I, I've seen him before on Instagram where it gives you like suggested feeds, but um, that's it. Yeah, he runs he runs he runs a dealer chat group called Vukum. That's a twenty dollar a month dealer pro, uh, private paid dealer group. Mm -hmm. um, it's a WhatsApp group, basically, right? Okay. So you pay twenty dollars a month and you get access to this special dealer group, a, yeah. a lot like Moda, but Moda is free. But different le levels of Moda, but there's a free one and then there, there's a paid ones. But he runs the uh, twenty dollar a month private group. 
called yeah. Vukum. So where did the name Vukum come from? I know, yeah. is that Tyler's last name or something? I, I don't know. I, I've been too scared to ask. Maybe I should know. <laughs> because Tyler goes by Vukum, right? Is is he Vukum? I think yeah. I think it's it's the other guy that goes by Vukum. The the friend. He's the camera he's the camera guy, Tyler. Uh, and it's the other guy. I, th I think I Tyler Vukum. is Vukum. Is that true? I don't know if he ever said his son's last uh, his son's name. Gave you. Either way, it doesn't matter. Vukum.com. Let's see if that domain is taken. If we can trade. Well, hmm. yeah. what did you think of the interview? How would you rate yourself? Myself? Yeah. <laughs> I, I asked the questions I wanted to ask. I asked questions that were, I think, that the audience wanted me to ask about uh, about dealer to dealer stuff and about vouching and about consignment <laughs> and stuff like that. My so, one, yeah. my one burning question for OC. Did you believe him when he said he had never heard of the wizard until two months ago? Uh, yeah. I mean, he seemed like he was He's being possible. straightforward. Yeah. I mean, uh, wizard wouldn't be dealing with someone like Buckley. Yeah, a anyway. legitimate no. dealer, a vintage, yeah. vintage dealer. He's, he would read his soul instantly and know. Yeah, imagine, this guy imagine scam. wizard calling him. Hey, uh, send me the platoon. Hey, I'll big heffy. <laughs> I'm on Mandani trusted dealers. I'll send you the wire tomorrow. Buckley be like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> no. Yeah, it was Absolutely. it was it was refreshing and transparent of him to say like, hey, buying buying a trusted dealer sponsorship is bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. But we knew that. That's why we. That's why it was easy to get him thrown off because he wasn't a trusted dealer. He did. There was no right. vetting. There was no. Um, the part that we didn't cover though is that when Giorgio Mondani reached out to. Uh, to Stefano and said, Hey, I'm getting bombarded on social media and I'm getting bombarded with phone calls saying, let's to throw you off. What do you say? He goes, Oh, talk to Roman. And so she yeah. called Roman. Roman said, Oh yeah, he's a good guy. Keep him on. Roman. The, and, but you see Ooh. advice for, uh, the, that Buckley said, don't <laughs> tell like either you're vouching for someone or you just say, you know, no opinion. Yeah. Like don't give someone, if you're not willing to vouch for someone, you shouldn't be giving any opinion. Because mm. it, it sways people. It's like giving a vouch without giving a vouch. It gives people yeah. fa false sense of right. security, like as if this guy, as if this if, some kind the, of evidence of look. Right. If I ask, OC, or let's just say OC has screwed me and nobody knows, and Mark says, "Hey Diego, is OC a good guy?" Mm -hmm. Or no, no, no. Let's say I know of OC <laughs> screwing somebody, but not me, mm -hmm. and OC says, "Hey." Or Mark says, hey, OC just had got the Explorer 40. Is he safe to send? Like, is he a good guy? He's never screwed me. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, yeah, yeah. Th this is Mark exactly what Roman said. This is exactly what Roman said. They said made me deal with them and he didn't screw me. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He's never screwed me, but he, he fucked over this guy. Right. I mean, if he's not gonna say that it's he fucked someone else, it's it's, like, lie, like Roman could be Roman could be like, okay, maybe, maybe Roman is thinking, well. He fucked that guy, but he's paying him back. Like he's exactly. slow rolling this guy. But like, okay, you don't want to say that he's screwing someone else. Don't say like if they say it, it's best to just say I don't know. I don't like just say just lie. Just say I don't know the guy instead of just saying anything. Yeah, but the the point I was trying to make with John Buckley is that if if Stefano owes ten people money and one of them is Roman, so he owes Roman twenty thousand. Who is he going to pay back first? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not good. I mean, he's gonna pay, he's also, gonna pay Roman because Roman's gonna then say, "Oh well, I've done plenty of deals, and he always pays me. He always pays me." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's possible that that he did uh, do a lot of business with the wizard, and that he and the wizard that has never screwed him over personally. Maybe, maybe the wizard, because uh, you know what, wizard is also very, very sleek. He knows how to like. He sent that painting to Roman. He know like he used these tactics to keep Roman quiet and kind of on the good side. So, like that stuff it, it is effective. You know, giving Roman the painting is effective. 
at keeping Roman's mouth shut and and manipulating him to be better to him than he actually should be. So yeah, Roman a clever, yeah. clever manipulator. Yeah. So maybe Roman doesn't realize how badly he was screwed yet himself. So we'll see. I mean, this is all gonna play out. We'll see how it plays mm-hmm. out. Is that camera pointed at at Marcelo's penis right now? That would be um, his smurf, dude. Yes, smurf oh, cam. I didn't. I don't see anything though. No, yeah, no, we true. really need that stream art that that feature where we turn the we have the ability to turn the camera off <laughs> while ke- and just turn turn it to his avatar. No, you muted um, Marcelo. You're muted. No, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't fall oh, off the white. I, I actually request this this thing, so you guys actually can close the camera. Nice. I yeah. actually request this. No, we oh, can't. Yeah. Do, it do it now. Do it now. I actually you request it. You do it. You do it. You do it first. You do it first. Do it. Ah, oh, come on. I actually request this for All right, Tim. Yeah, Tim. Know, but... Do it to me, Tim. One, two, three. Oh, oh my God. Ah. Also, no, he's joking. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he's messing with me. Right? Diego, you do it to me. Ready? Right, one, one, two, two three. three. Oh, yeah. See, Marcel, it works. Ah, uh, no, bear miss. This is, uh, it's, it's coming. It's coming. I request it's coming. It. It's, it's coming. Gonna come, yeah. Mark, how do, you feel about, how do you feel about your on air behavior? Because listen, there are times, listen, I've been doing the show with Tim. I've been on the panel a yeah. lot. Sometimes I lose my cool, right? I lose my cool. Oh, yeah. and I, I, have to apo- I have to apologize afterwards, right? Yeah. And then, uh, but like, you're, you're, you're part of management now. Like you're, you're, ah. you, host, <laughs> you host a show for hours a day. Like if, if let's, say, let's, let's take Marcel out of the equation. Let's say like yeah. I come on the show and I rub you the wrong way, which is probably what yeah. happens every time I come on, right? Very annoying. You, got, you can't lose your cool, right? You're, right. You know, you're, you're not only the star of the show, but you're the moderator in a way. You have to, That's what Marcel is for. He's like, he, right? he trains you to be as he like, tra- yeah, if he, you can, he's, if you can be yeah. cool with Marcelo on, then, no, then nothing yeah. can break Nothing you. will phase you. Nothing yeah. will phase you. Marcel, look at Tim. Look, look, when look you at have Tim. to go he's under, the under barbed wire with the live fire over your head. Exactly. <laughs> it's training. Look at the characters Tim has dealt with on his panel over the years. And how he, he never loses his cool. Look at this. Calm, collected. Calm, cool, I, I, lo- I only lose cool on demand. You know when uh, <laughs> when when I feel like I need to lose cool. Like, eh, is what because like people love it when I lose lose my shit. Uh, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. It's so sometimes I'll just I'll just lose gold. my shit I, I, for fun. For fun. I saw I was I saw the clip the other day of you uh, losing it all over on uh, Holden Caulfield. Remember that. <laughs> And that's where that original phrase where you said, I'm not writing dicks here. And the, and the <laughs> other people cut, cut it up, chopped it up, and uh, they turned it into, I'm writing dicks here. Writing. That's uh, where that, that came from, that argument against that uh, yes. Holden Caulfield. That's There's my so many, tone, by the way. It's fucking hilarious. No, Tim, you have already a ringtone on here. that phrase. That's fucking I'm amazing, man. <laughs> Holden Did Caulfield. You guys, uh, yeah. That dude is he he's a fucking he's a mental case, you know. He needs some serious psychiatric <laughs> help, man. He's like dude, like the guy, the righteousness, the righteousness the guy is oozing is just so pathetic. So, Shout out to Terry, by the way. Terry hopped on the stream for the first how time. Cool it was Terry. Yeah. Fucking great. It's great when you when you when you can you believe he doesn't he never typed anything in the chat. He's been watching. He's yeah. never never bothered to make a comment. What the hell? That's ha- that's half the show is it's probably better show in the comment section. Way better. Uh, way better. Sometimes yeah. I turn off the volume. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the chat is what it's all about. Um, <laughs> oh man. I know. Uh, Dr. Bob's Nightmare says he spent 20 minutes on the stream with just Marcella once. Wow. It gave him a PTSD, though. <laughs> <laughs> who, who? Who actually? Dr. Bob's Nightmare. Really? I don't remember that guy. Yeah. Oh, no. This guy this smokes a lot of weed. Is this ah. the, uh, the Brian? Yeah. yeah. I th- oh, no, but I think this is more complicated because this has the chronograph. I think Brian, uh, Brian had no. the non-chronograph version. No, he has this watch now. He has this one? <sighs> he traded a bunch of watches for it, but I wonder what value he traded. Oh, yeah, right. Big drop. A 50K for this thing. That's nothing. For that's this a, complication, annual that's a panda. That's a Panda and a Pepsi. Yeah. 
yeah. hand and the Pepsi. Yeah. That's it. And you get wow. the top one of the top range paddocks. Top of mm. the top. Like this is the top of the pyramid. Annual calendar. It, and it's a bulletproof annual calendar. So, meaning, like actual, meaning that you, you won't break it if you touch it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You won't break it. It's very tough to break, actually. Chronograph and with this, 12-hour chronograph, too. It's not that bullshit 45-minute chronograph. It's not actual. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, 50K. What do you think, guys? Is this is this fair? Fair price? 50K from retail, 95,000 at retail. Platinum. Wow. Platinum. Platinum. Yeah. What color dial is this? Is this a black dial? Gray. Gray? Yeah. It's pretty it's pretty damn good looking, I gotta say. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <sighs> what a piece. And it's got power reserve as well. No, don't know why you would need it, but still. And I think there's also a day and night indicator here at the bottom. The, the, little, the little dot it shows you whether it's a day or night. What else do you need, man? Yeah. It's so my crazy. only my only problem, which I've voiced before, is that the the date the date is on a different plane. It's on a lower plane because you have those two other sub dials on the higher plane. In the it's the only way right? to do it. Yeah, I know. I know. It doesn't look that bad in real life. I know. I know. You can barely I always rag on it because 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 it kind of it's sunken down and you have that. Mm. Yeah. When you look at it from the front, it looks great. When you look at it yeah. from the side, it's a little bit. But that's okay. Exactly. It looks like you know, I have a, a Seamaster. The the date is pretty far down. Mm -hmm. In it's, the Seamaster? Oh, yeah. Sea, yeah. Seamaster Diver 300M, right? <clears throat> it's not, yeah. it's not mm -hmm. like flush. No, uh, same with the Aquaterra. That was what, what was so impressive fun. about the 15202 that was unboxed uh, or oh. on, you know, that uh, Human Construct showed. It's just everything is so thin. thin. The tolerances are like ha like are amazing. a hundredth yeah. of a millimeter. Got a crystal and then a, a rehot and then a hands and then a dial. It's all within and then two the date, millimeters. And the date is so close to to the yeah. to the to the dial. It's crazy stuff. That's a good watch, man. A human construct. He he really picked up some amazing. He's built up like a serious collection. Mm -hmm. Very knowledgeable. Got the 980 guy. in the paddock. He's got the AP. He gets a Vacheron two 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 and two tone. <laughs> Could be a great addition. He's got a day date. Got everything. He's got a GMT, right? The 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 Superman. Let's take a look yeah. at this thing. Uh, AP. Oh, look at this. This is a Chronograph second gen for eighteen points. This bolt. This is like seriously dirt cheap. I mean. <sighs> What the? This is second generation. It's not the first generation with ceramic round pushers, with the date with the cyclops on the dial, with beautiful tapestry, with these amazing applied hour in. What? How is this so cheap? How is it so yeah. cheap? That's Dude. one of the good looking ones. That yeah. looks incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's fucking rocks, man. It looks better than so look, the new ones have the, the quick quick change, but that's dude, whatever. By it's, the way, one of my favorite favorite moments from the John Buckley interview was watching like a roommate was carrying like a plant or something. What was she carrying? Oh. What, was she, what was she carrying behind you? Was it a, yeah, she was watering the plant. She's watering the plant. She was carrying a flowering pot or something. Or yeah. carrying the, the plant. And then she's walked back. She's walked back. Oh. Funny. You know, she was yet, like uh, she burst through the door, started yelling at me at like five <laughs> fifteen. I had to mute. You'll see. There's a part where I mute the microphone and just go shut the fuck up. I'm doing the interview right now. <laughs> there was also a part where you had to refer to her as your wife because you yeah. didn't have a roommate and have. Because he's not gonna right get now. the joke. He's not gonna understand yeah. what I'm talking. What is this? Oh, I was gonna say, this guy's good way moments. Too weird. Those are those those are the kind of moments that make the interview like for for fans of the show. Hey, I'm on the mm -hmm. panel, but I'm also a fan, right? Why? Well, well, that's why I'm here. That's what makes the the show uh, the interview fun, like seeing those little yeah. moments. Right? You you it's made a comment, OC, about his uh, the room he was in. What was it? Oh, I said I said it looked like he was inside a TV dinner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told Tim to ask him if there was a. Uh, 
corn kernels and butter on the floor. <laughs> Uh, I, I, like couldn't, I couldn't put it in. I mean, I was like, uh, I can't hey, say those words. Cor- turn to the left and show us the brownie. I understand what I'm saying. <laughs> the the Salisbury cor- steak. Kernels and butter on the floor. I mean, we wouldn't get it. Uh, it's a good, it's good. It's, you should have put it in the chat as a super chat. I would have oh, pulled dude. it out. Disable my $10 minimum super chat and I'll super chat you more. I don't mm. have this. No, I didn't disable it. Uh, uh, but yeah, hey, yeah, you should have just my, put it regular chat. You know, the chat was work working. Phone? My work phone, I can super chat. It, it's my phone. Mm. But sometimes I'll be on my work phone and I forget. Mm. And I'll super chat and then I have to go back the next day and be like, there's like a $20 charge. Oh, by the way, <laughs> you know what? Those super chats that you sent for $20, they uh-huh. actually went through. And I could read, yeah. but they didn't show up in the chat at all. Yeah, I remember what that. Those were the fuck? ones. I was on my work phone. What's up with that? Like, I don't, I don't understand know. that. You sent 40, 20, and 20. Probably, he has like six accounts, so it probably got messed up. So, yeah. No, no, no. It's just, it didn't, like, they went through. I even checked them on my end, and I got oh. I, I got them. And, uh, but they didn't show up. Sometimes, it's so weird. Sometimes chat will. Oh not show up in the in the youtube like it's been withheld or something but it will show up in Streamyard. like Streamyard will pull mm-hmm. it up so it's yeah. weird some weird stuff happens by the way one of the things that's interesting about this uh about the royal oak is that it has an octagonal bezel right but the screws are hexagonal oh yeah right? so like sometimes mm-hmm. the people will say octagonal screws by mistake but they're really hexagonal mm-hmm. and uh, some smart viewer in the chat noticed that one of the screws wasn't put in correctly yeah. Yeah. oh you have, to, shit. you have to put them there's only one way to put it in to make sure that it, it's uniform yeah. oh it's not a big big problem you know it's it so be, easy it's to uh, easy to fix but to fix but, it yeah but that's weird yeah like how did they how did he screw it because he put he put in all the maybe he did it on purpose just for fun <laughs> Dude, I gotta say, I love this watch. It's I nice, it, right? I think it looks incredible. I think that would it would look cool to have a white dial one with like a white strap. It would oh, look yeah. This is the gray, gray. Like it's not black, it's gray, and then the, the loom is like black. It, it's date, the, it, date eight. at three. Come on. Yeah. And mm. look at the it it's got this incredible. polished ring around it, right? Yeah. That that picks up light like that looks so cool. And you can see the sub dials also have those shiny rings, so mm-hmm. you can imagine how dynamic it's gonna be in uh, in light Tetris dial. Yeah. Uh, the only question the question is though, if you have a, a screw that was put in wrong, what kind of service did this really get? Right. Oh, I mean, look. Yeah. And why did it get a service? Yeah. Well, clearly, look, it's got a little scratch here on the on the bezel. See, well, it's yeah. not a big no deal, big uh, but I don't know. Maybe maybe they took it out. Who? I don't know. know. For eighteen six. Yeah, it seems like a. I mean, these. Oh, the crown needs device. repair. It doesn't go all the way in. Oh shit! Oh, so this no, this no, needs no, service. Yeah. It needs a service. Shit, that's why it's so cheap. The guy just doesn't want to service it. Uh, Maybe he can't afford to service it. Who knows? Is this called the elephant? He, he, up in the description, he calls I it think the, so. The, the, the AP elephant. Yeah, let's. let's That's elephant. a cool name. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's cool. really cool. Elephant in the room. Elephantis. That's elephant in Latin. So, yeah. Damn. Okay. They're, they're not going for much more here. Oh, look at the rose gold one, too. There's blue one. These blue ones are nice as well. There's, yeah. There you go. There's one that's in perfect. Con- oh, this is with the red highlights. And it's the terrible. white. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not the same. With the white, it's not the same. The blue, blue all day. With the orange. It's blue and yes. orange. Fuck. Checking the screws. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Twenty one five. That's nice. There's the there's the ghost. This one that we were looking at. This is nice. What's oh. up with these people? Like on Moda and on Chrono, they list a watch that's like tens of thousands of dollars, and they give you two photos. And it's what the, I know, right? And you're just supposed to be like sold. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> are, are, like instead Show of giving the you case, a, 
Show me the case back. Show me the bracelet stretch. Show me the fucking everything. It's like you remember Negroni when he got his first C dwell. Yeah. What they didn't show him was a card. Remember that yeah. card he got? And then they sent it, and then when it arrived, it was all messed up. I mean, that, I think I think actually that's why they don't do it. If like there's stuff. nothing to hide, the guy will show every single. And look, sometimes, look, okay, this one, it does look like this. Look at this. This is a oh. screwed up screw. It's different one, though. There was a watch on Moda that I liked, and I was ready to buy. It mm -hmm. was listed as mint, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I said, are there any, can I have a photo of the case back? And the guy's like, why? And I said, I, I want to see if there's like a bunch of marks from changing the strap. Yeah. The back oh. was mangled. Oh. Um, see, okay? look at this. These but it was listed screws, as mint. These screws yeah. look mangled. Like somebody tried to unscrew them or something. They see used that? the wrong yeah. screw. Yeah, they're fucked. And then they're not in the proper position. These are going to have to be replaced during service. These screws. You have to. You have to use a screw that doesn't come to a point. It just. It's, mm -hmm. it's a slot. No, no they, you're not even supposed to unscrew them from this end. They unscrew from the other end. Looks like the guy well, he, put the screw screwdriver inside and started whack like. You know. Twist it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you. It's not. It's not. Uh, it, let me. Logic tells you that it doesn't screw. It's in a fixed. <laughs> yeah. It's in a what fixed hole. Like There's the idiots piece. out there, you know. Do you think he tried one and he's like, "All right, that one's a little tight. Let me go to the next one." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a little tight too. <laughs> we keep going. Exactly. That's exactly what uh, he did. Look at that white dial with the brown. That one's this nice. One? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like a safari look. I, uh, I was gonna say, yeah, safari. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is a good condition. Look at the photo. The pictures are clean. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Look and look at the spread. This is how you know you got a good specimen. It's when there's a good spread of photographs, every angle, every conceivable angle. See, Mark, you're always talking about how you hate seeing watches that are too small because you want them, but they're too small. This yeah. is an example for me of a watch that you want, but it's too big. Exactly, like yeah. something like this. I I love. Yeah. Such a cool color too. Brown. You don't get that often. Yeah. With that cream dial looks chef's kiss. Chef's kiss, boys. Wow. It's cool stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. I've got another one for you here. Motor. Oh, there you go. This is our fan favorite. Looks like it came from eBay. Uh like been sold through eBay. So it comes with a with an eBay card. Mm. Uh, ten thousand two hundred. My Dude, label. I saw one of these pirate ship. Nine. Pirate I ship. Saw one of these for nine. Oh, damn. These, yeah, these are these drop significantly, and there was a moment during the spike where these were taken off on their own, kind of like the root beer did. You remember mm -hmm. that? There was were a moment like twelve or thirteen. Yeah, they were getting up there. No, they these went were, up to like seventeen. Like no, these oh, were like really? nineteen yeah. or twenty. Wow. Just for a brief, like a month period, and then I don't know what happened. I think it was during when, when, when there was like that leaked picture of a, of a new version of this one. Yeah. Yes, I love this watch. Yeah, this is clean. This yeah. could be like a one and done. Like I, I, Terry should get this thing. Yeah. Keep right. Like think about it. He can sell sell the Zelos bullshit. He can <laughs> skip on the Longines 190th anniversary. He can sell a few more, like a few of his shit. It's, get this, one Rolex. This is a non. This is non snobbery Rolex. This is just a Rolex for non Rolex people. Just I'm put the too. best function they got. I would like to find one of these in used condition. Mm -hmm. I don't. These watches are so old that when I see it polished like this and looking perfect, I'm a little skeptical. Yeah. Mm. I All want right. to find one that's already been worn in so that I don't feel guilty. I can just wear the watch. Oh, just, for like 6K. I mean, even eight that or would nine. That would be awesome. Yeah. You know, I remember these used to be like below six, around 6K. Explorer, Explorer Polars, they were going for three and a half. These were like six, you know, five, five and a half, six. And I remember seeing a guy on Instagram who... Uh, was just documenting his journey through life with this watch. And I thought, ah, I should have picked something better. But it's actually a nice watch to, to do this kind of thing. You know, you can take it with you anywhere. 
You can take this mm-hmm. to fucking uh, you know Africa. You can you can take this one to South America, El Salvador. No, you can take this watch almost anywhere you want. It's very nice. You can't do that with a lot of other, you know, watches. This chair will not get you imprisoned in Malaysia. JDMLT Tutor is king. People believe that. Thank you, JDMLT, for your <laughs> chat. He's been spamming it, but uh, yeah. Let's see what else. Got another one. Oh. <sighs> Twenty five seven fifty. Huh. Hmm. I saw a guy wearing this thing at the at the Indian restaurant. Oh, sorry, not the Indian, uh, the the Taiwanese restaurant. No, wait, it wasn't Taiwanese. It's uh, Eddie just got. No, no, no. There's three Eddie sizes. Yeah, there, well, and also there's three sizes. There's thirty seven, forty, okay. and forty two. So, rose gold only comes in forty for now. They might they might actually discontinue this and make it in forty two. It really makes no sense. I mean that. Yachtmaster line in Rolex is busted. They need to scrap and start <laughs> from the beginning, honestly. <laughs> yeah. The whole kind idea of, of like they introduced the yellow gold and that runs for a couple of years, then they yeah. then they introduce the white gold and it's like so confusing. I don't I can't keep track of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I would I would welcome a 40 mil white gold <clears throat> on Oyster Flex. 40 mil white gold. 40 mil white gold. Yeah, that would have been nice. That'd be 40 perfect. mil white gold. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Tim. I'd buy that $18,000 watch. 18000 <laughs> I'm, I'm learning from Buckley. Yeah, how, how much for this $23,000 watch? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> what is Marcelo Good doing? Stuff. Burying a body? Marcelo, you okay? Yeah, he's good. Just this chump shopping. You guys don't know basically what I do. I just with the mama and bicycle, just bought some water. <laughs> I was thirsty. Yeah, no, hey, you guys doing you guys shit. I'm doing my life, you know. I mean, uh, what are you guys yeah. thinking? I mean, it's cool. Yeah, it's I'm, cool. We like. I, I like it. I like it in the because you know. Yeah, no, continue. Yeah, water. Come back from tennis. I'm going to take a yeah. shower. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Yeah, I was yeah. just gonna keep putting you back on mute. Keep keep going about your life. It's cool. Like some people are watching what Marcel is up to, so they don't care about the show. No, they're not. They're not. They're not here to listen to us. That's for sure. Yeah. Right. You know, some people they're just huge fans of Marcelo time. Uh, look at it. Richard Mio, RM05 Rose Gold one oh one hundred and ten thousand. How about that? Yeah, that's scary low, right? That is scary. You can get a RM soon below a hundred k. Is this the one that you're going for, but yours has diamonds, OC? Mm. No, no, mine doesn't have diamonds. It's titanium, though. Uh, okay. 6701. Okay. But even the six, I saw a 6701 for 139. And Boston uh, Collector and I were talking about it. It's like, listen, 139 is dang, is basically retail. Because retail is okay. 125 plus tax. You're at 135, maybe. 139. Uh-oh. It's like, Uh-oh. Psh- it's like it's over. It's over. Even over for RM. And, and did, did you hear my theory on Richard Mia? How can how I, it can completely implode in on itself? Well, here's the thing, Tim. But you know, how you I'm guys always over asking... at nine eleven. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. On, on the sorry, not uh, on the RM eleven. You guys talking RM eleven? Uh, no, 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 no. 30. Wait, hold on. Just let let Diego finish his point. You know how I'm always saying like, what's going to make the gray market go back up like there's got to be something but everybody's so disillusioned because they saw just how burnt everybody got like it's the same with these rms like was this a two hundred fifty thousand dollar watch a year ago yeah uh, we might be that we could pull up watch charts or something like that or uh watch recon or uh, uh-huh. whatever those services mm-hmm. because you got to think like for this watch to get back above retail if it's at retail and still falling from all we can see what makes it go back above maybe it was a fad okay so it looks like these were going for around 142,000 that's it that's not that much that's not that much it's on corner 24 okay actually these seem to be it's one for 140 okay so maybe this is a one these are 150 but 
let's see what are 109 so 110 they're down for 150 but i mean these are nice actually like th these are like base models i was gonna say are these the base models they yeah yeah, yeah they, they are, are. Okay. but th but these are like that's what makes them the most kind of flippable because they're the cheapest rms so there's a like these turn around a lot i i would i would think there's there's a number of them here on the gray market but still I mean, look, uh, there's actually not that many of them, to be honest. It's a good-looking watch. Look at this fucking thing. 645000 What the f... Mm. Yeah, it looks like a, this... like a $100,000 one. There's no difference. Who's going to fucking service this thing? It's a turbio. Like... Jesus. Looks like a mine, to be honest. No, Tim. Tim, what do you yeah. see? 650000 This is not the retail. This is just the green market. You have to talk into the microphone, Marcel. You have to talk into talk into the microphone. You're talking somewhere else. We can't hear you. Now it's better. Ah, uh, no, it's kind of bad. It's really bad. Okay. Yeah, let's just. You'll tell us later. Just keep go go to the better internet. Go to the better internet. Oh my God! The way this looks, the orange strap, the rose gold, the black dial. Take me away! I'm done. I well, it looks, like, it looks like it looks like it looks like the uh, the Mars. Yeah. What's it? What's it called? The guy's name? Uh, Pharrell Williams. For, yeah, yeah. It looks like the Pharrell Williams. Wow. It's good photography too, right? It makes it look. It is. I love it. I oh shit! I almost accidentally called someone. Um. Mm. What is happening? I got like a hundred messages. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but this looks good with the orange strap, the kind of the rose gold case. Yeah. It's like a, the cheap, a cheap uh, Pharrell Williams. Cheap, yeah, yeah, it's like a budget Pharrell Williams, right? <laughs> it's got the same cheap buckle. Like the... the <laughs> The weakness of our RAM, are they, their buckles, and they have they haven't changed them. I mean, I think they're pretty cool though. Have you seen how they actually work? They're yeah, like they're spring loaded. Not. Yeah, they spring open. Yeah, they're pretty. Yeah, they're, they're not proprietary. Like they just buy these on. Yeah, they from a supplier. This is not custom. The the only custom part is this part here. See that that's why this whole part is steel. I think, and I then this part that. is gold. Because that's the only part that they themselves manufacture. Isn't the, that this... like uh, Lange and IWC? They share the same butterfly. Diploma? Yeah, Glashuda original. Glashuda, yeah. Do you know yeah. what the A in, in Along Zuna stands for, by the way? A Lange and no. Alfred no. or something? What? Alfred Lange? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Diego. Adolf uh, Lange? <laughs> what? What does it stand for? Pharrell Williams. Williams. Budget Pharrell Williams. Budget yeah, that's Pharrell. just cheap. It's cheap that they use a steel a steel uh, deployant. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Dan. Especially on, on a gold listen, watch. Uh, John, John Buckley said, this is a fad. I said, is it a fad? He goes, yeah, it's a fad. I, just, I, was, I was baiting him. I wanted to see what he would say. That was one of the yeah. things that he said that I didn't think he would say, and I was glad he said it. <laughs> Uh, it's funny stuff, guys. People sent me funny shit. I gotta be honest. I, you know, someone. Oh my god! Hold on, Tim, I have a, do uh, you know, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. All right. Do, do you guys know that Richard Mir make a titanium bracelet? That the bracelet alone is 150k. Oh wow, that's a rip. -off. Only the bracelet. Yeah. Just for the bracelet. <laughs> it's the bracelet for the for the RM11. You can check it out. Go check it out now. Only the bracelet. Check the titanium mm. bracelet. How much is it? You're going Are to you see. home now? Almost. Oh, can we have a tour? No. <laughs> All right. All right. right. Marcelo is dressed like the Pharrell Williams. Yeah. Richard Mill. He's wearing orange too. I like this. What other questions did you want to ask, Mosi? No, I was, I was, I, no, I was done. I was done. I covered the. Uh, Everything I wanted to cover. I mean, I we, we didn't talk. I mean, Tim Tim covered uh, timepiece gentleman. 
uh, I, a little. I was. A bit. I, I wanted to ask, like, uh, what are some of the worst? Like, we keep hearing this happens all the time, right? I would have loved to have heard some examples. Yeah, some horror stories. You know, because people say, "Oh, wizard four hundred, that's nothing." Yeah. Tell me what something is that I'd be interested to hear, but um, yeah, I didn't have the time. Well, see, so you asked him about that, right? About wasn't that your question that we hear about this all the time? That uh, uh, you said that the Fed said, and yeah, I brought that up. But it would have been good to hear a couple of his examples over the yeah. years, some of the craziest stories. Yeah, like what does it look like when a dealer, an established dealer, fucks another established dealer? What are they doing? What happened? Yeah. Where are they now? Yeah. Which ocean are they in now? What like, rooftop yeah. did they get thrown off of? Sorry, I'm back. Yeah, but he basically, you know, he said, like, listen, the courts aren't very helpful. Even when you get a yeah. judgment, uh, he, I think he said he was getting paid back like, I don't know, 30 bucks, every, bucks, 30, yeah. 30 bucks every quarter. 30. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's ridiculous. Hmm. Whoop. Oh, he's refreshing. Trying to fix the chat. Bam. Back. No, he can't fix the chat. He would have to, he would have to, like the stream would have to close. If you refresh your stream yard, it updates, but then it just doesn't, it, it doesn't stops. continue. It doesn't add the new chat to it. It just, uh, it just shows you the upgrade. So that's why I, I reboot it so that oh. I can. So you can at least pull up in a, something. Yeah. Uh, Buckley says, you don't understand a RAM until it's on your wrist, but it's still not worth the price. Exactly, exactly. It's yeah. a good, it's a, you it's know, a very good summation. I, the first time I've ever seen a RAM in my life, it was from a uh, um, wrist, wrist finder. What's, the, what's that name? Mm -hmm. Wrist finder and co. What? Is that what it's called? Wrist Watch finder? finder and co. Watch finder. That's right. The guys Watch that finder. love Rolex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had, I think it was in one of their videos. Actually, if we go here, watch, find their RM. First time I've ever seen RM, it was probably, oh, it wasn't this video. I think, they, I think they have like a really old video. I think, let's see, watch, find their co videos. If we go, oh, no, by the way, watch, find and co, shit's officially dead, right? This is a dead channel. Like they don't get any more views. Look at look at these, these videos. Twenty four thousand. I don't watch them anymore. It's a dead channel. Look, twenty two thousand on, on the video. Twenty five. I mean, that's. A, I don't. I don't want to see how the sausage is made. Oh, yeah. It's the channel turned really low quality. It's just. Yeah. They, they go back to the old formula of don't show the guy's face. Turn yes. the music real that hypnotic music up. Who really is this loud. fuck face? Sorry, sorry. I shouldn't swear. Another British guy. Look, I mean, it's just it it, it they used to be. Let's go to oldest. It used to be really high high quality videos. Like I remember watching some of this stuff. Let's see. You, oh, this. You, you know what killed it for me was when you would click the video and then it's like a picture of a microphone talking and then another guy talks and it's a oh, different microphone. God. I'm like, fuck you, dweebs. I'm done. Unsubscribe. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. I mean, Jesus, he unsubscribed Fuck. faster than he walked out of the AP boutique. Okay, I but uh, okay, I, I remember these videos. Okay, I I remember this video. This was a good Hasselite or Sapphire. Yeah. The, 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 these beginner vi beginning videos were amazing. This video, this Royal Oak video, I watched that. I don't know for some reason it doesn't show show that I watched. It. I guess it deletes over time. But let's see. Oh, this video is fucking incredible. That Two point right there. Seventy twenty seven Brigay. I watched that one. Uh, let me see. this yep. one Brigay. Yeah, yeah. This is and then the one you're looking good. at, the Patek versus the Speedy. That was a great video. Oh yeah, legendary video. This is why I think I love the five one seven zero so much. It's because of this video. And this is the one with a diamond dial. <sighs> I think. Wait, is it? Yeah, the one with a blue diamond dial. They they picked the. Let's see. Oh, yeah, oh, you can't see it in this video though, right? It looks like a black dial watch. Is it kind of green? Huh? No, it's blue. Oh, fume blue. Okay, wait. Let me let me go back. So here somewhere, I think 
they have they had an RM video, like because I was watching like every video that they would re- put out. Oh yeah, there we go. I think this is the first time I've seen RM here. Five years. By the way, D- DC and LV, um, can he hop on the stream? Like it's like I know he's in he's in the there's a special Vegas group where he's mm-hmm. always commenting about stuff's going, but but he hasn't hopped on the stream and like forever. he's not a stream kind of a guy. It doesn't even if the on. camera's off. I mean, come on, man. It's like he doesn't do that. That's not his kind. Of... I think he might also be working. So. He's not a stream kind of guy. I love that we still use that <laughs> it's, word. It's seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock. The stream. Where did that come from? What was the? It was you don't know where it came mental. From? Mental Jock used to scream, jump on the stream, and for whatever reason, I think uh, it was OC coined the term "jump on the stream." <laughs> yeah, but it's also it's also it's also Tim's accent when he says "stream." Sometimes he says "strema." You know, uh, Russia stream. It's Russia stream. Open the stream. Stream. Jump on the stream. I don't know. It's just. But I, then people, people in the chat are the ones that we have to give credit to for the spelling. Stream. Yeah, just stream. Or maybe you texted it to me one day. Jump on the stream. I think you did. <laughs> I'm gonna search my text messages for stream. Oh. <laughs> see where yeah. this was coined. That looks pretty good, right, Tim? Look at that. Yeah. That's yeah, look, see this, this, this. I think this is when I first saw RM, and I was like, "Oh shit!" No, no, no. I think this is when I got the RM. Like I understood it because I saw the close-ups. Because until this point, I think I've seen them like you know, like in videos, but n- at no point did I get like a, a close-up. And here you got you got to see the up up close, and you're like, "Oh, oh shit! This is actually like." Here you look at it and it's kind of look look at this how this shit is done, the date. That's insane. This like reminds me of a souvenir store. You get overwhelmed. Yeah. So maybe everything is actually not that good, but you can't but, tell because there's so much. But like, okay, so look, you see it's this stuff is happening here, right? But look at the when it comes together, right? It's chaos until it comes together and then it's pretty cool. That's pretty right. Cool. There is some there's charm to it, like I mean, and this is high resolution video that they did here. It's so cool, and the guy's voice is incredible. It really is, and yeah, he sounds uh, like and that hip, that hypnotic Brit. tune where it's do 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 non-copyright version of it and we should start using it uh, since actually this channel, this channel is pretty much fucking defunct the Wi-Fi by the way i think channel. i think uh, steal uh, oh, sheen has it, it. Oh, sheen made made the oh that's right he did he did copyright version yeah we can just ask him yeah Tim, why is it the uh why isn't the daniel cat's duck video in our arsenal over here i don't know can you add that to the community one also uh i need to find it. oh actually wait isn't it here yeah <laughs> Oh, I think no, it, it is. isn't. What, what is are they this? calling it right now? The the Pikachu? That's that's. The oh one. yeah, the Pikachu. Did you show that? Yeah, I think I think you showed it right now. Yeah, yeah, we did, we did. Well, okay, I we need to get more videos. Yeah, we need to more. We need more graphics and stuff. I'm gonna try and get some stuff with that. We need a graphics guy. We need a. De- we definitely need. We need the graphics guy. What happened to the uh, shorts guy? Is he on vacation? I'm not gonna renew the shorts guy. Yeah. Or is he working right now? <laughs> no. Nah, or look, I I have he sent me more shorts, but I didn't even check them. I'm scared to check. You want me to download these new shorts? No. No. Is it a Sheen's guy? Yeah, but for some reason it's not the same quality. He sent me. <laughs> You think she told him, "Hey, listen, listen, uh, don't do Tim's shorts very well. Just make them really bad." (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Happen and says, Uh, "What kind of graphics? What are you thinking?" Just stuff, you know, just stuff. Different graphics, different fun shit. It's very, very specific. No, no, no specific. Just you know, for graph side graphics, you know, animations, little videos. I like the black background. I have to say, I, actually, I mean, Perfection. black background just works. It, it's yeah. like you know what? 
it, it's just at least it not fucks you like with your brain. No, yeah, it's, it's, like, yeah, it's, cool. it's cool for five mm. seconds, but but like I don't want to have I, I don't know just something. But you know what? We Ooh. if you got a cool background or cool overlay. Actually, I'm gonna. I, I actually I need to add some overlays because and, and a thousand man for thousands of thousands episode. If I created something very special, it would be very cool. But <sighs> I need to hire a graphics guy. Like just go on like Fiverr or something and find pay to redo my all social media shit. By the way, we got Dr. Bob's Nightmare, who's been a member for that for two months. He says he loves the community. Guys, five hours, what do you think? We're gonna wrap it up. Sure. It's a cool show. Good show. Yeah. Perfect show. Good show. It's just chat is not working. It pisses me off. And I have to go to sleep. Uh, I need, I'm going to start packing for, for my little trip. Bring you guys some content. Who are you going to see in, in D.C., by the way? I missed that whole thing. Oh, no, no. It's not even D.C. I'm going. It's near D.C. It's not even D.C. Philly? It's, just, it's in the area there. It's between... I don't even know what it, I didn't even buy the ticket. I have to go buy the 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 bus ticket. Oh shit! Yeah. Um, so, but we'll, we'll try. Oh, oh, see, you're gonna come down. Yeah, we need to talk about it off air. We'll talk oh, about okay. logistics. Okay. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. I really, really appreciate it. Make sure to hit that upvote button. Let's get the stream to 200 upvotes. You know, for the night. I I like nice to. You know, John Buckley, guys, if you like the John Buckley appearance, make sure to leave a super thank you. You, you, know, you guys know how to do a super thank you? It's it's very simple. If you go to, Chokes. like, you watch Chokes. a video. Chokes. Oh, no, actually, you have to have already watched it. Okay, so you go live. So if you like this episode, you can leave a super thanks. Right here, it's you click thank you. It's like $2.00. It's pretty cool. Oh, wait, look at this shit. What the hell? Whoa, JMB left a super thank you, 10 pounds. I didn't even see this. It didn't let me know. Wow. What? Reply. Reply right now, Tim. Reply live on stream. Man. Dude, see, somehow it doesn't show up. But it did show up. So, JMB, thank you so nice. much. All right, guys. Love you all. See you tomorrow. What happened to you? What did you ask?